the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 28th, 2021, years after zero. This show begins now. Yeah. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Shout out to you for listening on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, or watching along at youtube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. You're the greatest humans on earth. We have no idea why you watch and listen, but we appreciate the hell out of you doing so. Today's guests are big, obviously. Austin Eckler Whoa. will be joining us in a one o'clock hour Eastern Daylight Time, so about an hour from now. And then obviously, the man with 37 seconds on Sunday night to drive his team with no timeouts to get into field goal position in Santa Clara against the San Francisco 49ers in his home area with people from his community in an entire section uh, to get a 51-yard field goal to beat the San Francisco 49ers. Aaron Rodgers will join us at 2.05 Eastern yes. Daylight Time. Uh, be a friend, tell a friend. Should be a great conversation with both of those fine gentlemen. A.J. Hawk will be joining us as well. Uh, can't wait to talk with him because he and I both had the Cowboys minus three and a half last night. And there was only a few moments where that was ever in question, and that was very early because it seemed apparent that the Dallas Cowboys were a better team than the Philadelphia Eagles very, very early. It seemed apparent that Dak Prescott is very comfortable and confident in the player that he is and the leg that he has right now and the team that he is surrounded around. Now, Mike McCarthy's making some decision. Yeah, oh, miscommunication on time, he said last <laughs> week. And then it happened again. And there's a couple decisions made by Kellen Moore with the offense that I didn't know until I listened to Peyton Manning talk about it, that Mike McCarthy actually learned Kellen Moore's offense and Dak Prescott. <laughs> Scott's offense whenever he came there because instead of putting his offense in and having everybody to have to learn it, he said, you know what, I'll just learn this and I'll adjust and we'll make some moves. That was something I learned from the Manning cast that I did not know, but it feels like that offense is getting better. The defense is obviously much better than it was last year. Is Dan Quinn the greatest defensive coordinator of all time? Maybe. They stunk last year. Mm. I mean, so, 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 so so bad last year letting everybody score they were getting just run by and dragged out of buildings by everybody on the defensive side of the ball and then one of their players came out and said i i, I don't know I don't know how you expect us to run like 100% on every play. <laughs> and although that is probably a thought that a lot of DBs have, and that was supposed to be an inside voice as opposed to an outside voice, especially with the awareness of how the defense was playing at the time, but I'm just saying the culture of the defense was a terrible one. They were bad. They knew it. There was things leaking that they didn't like coaches. I mean, it was a – Dan Quinn has come in there, and that defense seems to be together. I mean, Trayvon Diggs is an absolute game changer. The guy – I, I mean, freak show athlete, obviously. Incredible dad. We saw yeah. his kid Aiden mm -hmm. in Hard Knocks. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Seems like he comes from a family that is very athletic and successful, and he's been battling for a long time, especially at Alabama and everything like that, and leaving Seattle. He's a stud, but that entire team just looked absolutely great last night. We covered three and a half, obviously. Got a chance to watch the Manning cast. It was a beautiful thing, but it was a bad night if you're an Eagles fan. It was a bad night for everybody else in the NFC East, I believe, whenever they saw how dominant the Cowboys actually were in all three phases. It, it just seems like it was a bad night also made for Coach Sirianni. Now, oh, there are some things oh being no. said about the Philadelphia Eagles offense. They're saying, hey, there's no motion. You only ran the ball like three times. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys defense might have been incredible because they're incredible. They might have been incredible because what the fuck was your offense? Now, Jalen threw for over 300 yards. Still very impressive, but you're going to do that whenever you throw the ball 155 times on a team. Uh, Coach Sirianni, your thoughts after getting basically dog walked in a game that you built up to be like a college rivalry with a beat Dallas shirt. Now, Dallas Cowboys social media is putting out this shirt that says beat by Dallas. Ooh. It's a tough day to be Coach Sirianni, but I assume you're ready to go. What happened last night and how do we move forward, Coach? Well, listen, Pat, when we were talking about these NFC East battles, yes, I built it up pretty big in my own head and I said bulletin board material doesn't really matter. 
Turns out it may matter a little <laughs> bit. You know, Dak, you saw him, he's crying pregame, his first game back in Dallas, full stadiums. At that moment, I knew we were going to get our fucking ass to beat. <laughs> I really did. In postgame, you know, Jalen said, you know, you, when you take a deuce, you just flush it. You don't look at it. I do look at the shits after I take them. So we'll see next week. <laughs> I might have to look towards, I don't know, footsteps Joe Flacco. No. Maybe Gardner Minshew. I mean, we no. know his competitive edge and, you know, the intricacies he brings with his game. I mean, it wasn't a good night. It just wasn't a good night. I saw the highlighter. Was there anything to highlight or is there a lot of lowlights, you think, in this particular? Is there- a lot of lowlights. I mean, Jalen, you know, a couple of those balls, he, he looked pretty good. You know, we scored a couple <laughs> points. I mean, we yes, we punted several times. We didn't really run the football. I, <laughs> That, but pump the brakes on me being coach a year, okay? Back at the drawing board, I guarantee we win next week. Though. Okay, so Coach Sirianni, I actually uh, I watched you pregame, and you did an interview with uh, Lisa, I believe. I believe it was Here? Lisa Salter. Yeah. I believe I believe it was. I'm not. I don't. Maybe not. Though. I, I, I don't. Didn't, I don't know. I didn't get the question. I only heard. I turned on the TV and he was staring at me. Literally, mm-hmm. Coach Sirianni, and he was standing. <laughs> they had him in a microphone, just socially distant away. And he went, I mean, they asked him a couple questions about the rivalry, the shirt, uh, what he said to Jalen, and he gave Sirianni answer. He's always that guy. I love this man. And you have ruined him for me because (laughs) as he is speaking, I'm listening to, because I do believe he is a deep thinker. I think he does try to go about things differently, but I'm excited to see this guy who's very upbeat. He's positive. He's been around the NFL. He's had success in the NFL. Obviously, he understands the game, but what do you do? This is like the MCDC thing. We didn't know what was going to happen with MCDC because in the offseason, every conversation was a good one. Every conversation was upbeat. There was every, you know, the fans were almost buying it. Lions fans were buying in. Eagles fans buying all Mm -hmm. the way in. I'm not saying they should be out, but I'm just saying they're comes a time before every season where everybody on earth who's an NFL fan of a team somehow believes that their team does have a chance this year. Yeah. Right? So that always, that that, that is a real thing that happens. Oh, yes. Foxy, Joe Thomas told us, it's not just fans, by the way, <laughs> players have to do this as well. And I never really, I had one year where I was on a team that was 2-14, and 14, but I don't think we really knew, you know, until that that was going to happen until like game one. I don't think any of us knew what was going to happen because the Peyton Manning was going to be out that season. Didn't happen until training camp. I think publicly nobody really knew. I didn't even know. I just kind of, I went down, I was called, down, summoned down to the training room by the sheriff, you know, and it was like maybe what day one or day two of training camp. And I was summoned down there. Like, hey, come see me or whatever. So I go down and he's in a back room and I walk in and he has wires coming out of him. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I go, Ooh. What the fuck is going on here? And that's where I'm kind of told about what's potentially going on because I have a great relationship with the training staff. I have a great relationship with Peyton. This was happening because I, I, I hadn't talked to him for, I guess, a, a few months at that point or whatever. Like, hey, pal, come on down, have a little chat. And that's where I learned about it. And I don't think I was really able to grasp, like, okay, the only thing I really knew was I'm going to punt a lot more this year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, I should probably have been in better shape coming into this season. That was my immediate thought, you know what I mean? Because, okay, we're probably going to punt a little bit more. This guy very rarely failed. But I never got to the point where I had to convince myself that the team was going to be good, if that makes sense. Joe Thomas came on our show, and I think it was Ty who asked him or somebody. I, I, somebody asked him, like, hey, did you know you guys were going to stink? And Joe Thomas said every single year at the end of training camp, he fully believed that they were going to win a Super Bowl. And in the locker room, I think that has to happen when you're going to go out there. You can't go into a game thinking you're going to lose or anything like that. You have to have that confidence. But I don't think it's just, you know, the players that do it, now that I'm getting a chance to realize and see and interact with people outside of it, players at one point, or fans at one point before every season, I think, believe that their team has a chance to make the playoffs and go on a run. Oh, yeah. We're we're not going to win. Not everybody's thinking we're going to win a Super Bowl, but every team thinks like, hey, we have a chance to make the playoffs and run. Now we're three weeks into this thing. Okay. The Lions are 0-3. Yeah. <laughs> is that MCDC press conference, if it goes off right now, anywhere near as accepted in Detroit or anywhere else? I mean, nationally, it wasn't accepted at all. But in Detroit, they're probably like, okay, we don't just fucking go coach. Yeah. Right? It's like a different time. <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's a different time now after you start losing. In those moments when you're building up to a season and the motivation is there and the inspiration is there and the, the buy-in-ness, basically, of a city and a fanhood is there, like, hey, that's when things are going good. That's when the Sirianni is good. After you lose a big divisional blowout on national television against the Dallas Cowboys mm-hmm. with Dak Prescott back, like I'm excited to see how Sirianni handles this. I'm excited to see 
how these young head coaches handle the adversity that comes with an NFL season. Because when you're going into a season, Eagles fans were on Sirianni's back. You were getting a lot of heat for doing what you were yeah. doing, but we were listening <laughs> to the words. Lions fans were on MCDC's back, like, hey, here we go. Hey, you're the you're the Kindler, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, all, right. And it's like now how, we get a chance now to watch how these young head coaches are going to handle these situations. Some people do it good. Some people do it bad. Because you're not just talking to the media. You're also talking to the team as well. So I'm excited to see what Sirianni does. We're very early in the season. That's what all coaches are saying. That's what mm -hmm. all players are saying. There's a lot that can happen. Everything is still in front of us. But these little adversity obstacles, watching these coaches handle for the first time will be a lot of fun. Uh, and I can't wait to just think of you impersonating him every time he fucking <laughs> sees yes. uh, at Boston Connor last night's game. Uh, your thoughts? Are you happy for big Mike McCarthy having success down there in the Dallas Cowboys? Or are you so focused on this weekend that although you were mm. listening and watching last night, you saw Eli Manning go, hey, fuck you, huh? Incredible. That's what Philadelphia Eagles fans do whenever you roll into their stadium. Shout out to Eli Manning. If you don't like the Manning cast, by the way, fuck you, <laughs> said Eli yeah. Manning. And I think that's kind of how everybody feels in there. But while you're watching that last night, you're listening to LeBron talk about how Jerry Jones and Pete Carroll made him an offer. Mm -hmm. And you're listening to Saban talk about defense and how he keeps up with all his players in the NFL, 73 of them in the NFL mm -hmm. right now on rosters. Were you even able to pay? And Stafford was chit-chatting. Mm -hmm. Never oh, seen yeah. Stafford talk. Were you even focusing on any of that, or is right now very difficult because you have a different energy about you the last couple of days mm -hmm. here? Yeah. There's a different energy around old Boston Connor. This weekend, hello, <laughs> it's Tom. Tom. Yeah. That video by Sunday Night Football with Adele's hello is amazing. Uh -huh. so I mean, in, in the more and more this gets built up for Sunday Night Football, which is NBC doing an incredible job mm -hmm. of promoting their game, but I don't think this game needs any promotion. But the fact that it's getting promotion is making me realize, I think, more and more, which is good promotion, that's why they're promoting it. Yeah. Right. Hey, this is fucking massive. Huge. And both teams are coming off a loss, obviously. One team potentially has looked much, 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 much better than the other team. Yeah. One team is loaded with vets ready to go and maybe even adding Richard Sherman to the roster. He's currently visiting Tampa Bay after Josh Gordon signs with the Kansas City Chiefs. So the tops of the NFC and the AFC yep. are continuing to accrue talent, which is what I think everybody should start to think about doing because injuries are going to happen <laughs> and it's nice to have a veteran around. But <laughs> these two teams are just two men, basically, in everybody's uh -huh. eyes. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. I think Tom Brady's team, the dudes out in Tampa, are like, we got you, Tom. Hey, we understand. Absolutely. We know exactly what this is. We all won a Super Bowl together last year. And all, if we had this opportunity to do what you have right now, we would want to go to fucking, we would, we would hope you would go to fucking war with us. So I think that is a real motivator for mm -hmm. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, yeah. That is a tight team. Remember, Tom was putting together practices. They were coming over to Tom's house. Yeah. They were doing, Tom is the consummate team guy. That's what everybody says. Clyde's like, when he comes in here, he's friends with everybody, his energy, his whole thing. So I think Tampa is like, hey, we know what this is, right? And the mass holes are going to say terrible things. I mean, the New England Patriot fans are going to say terrible things to Tom during the game. When he jogs on the field, they will be yeah. nice. I saw this with Adam Vinatieri. When we jogged on the field for warm-ups, there it's nowhere near as full, obviously. It's just kind of scattered. A lot of people are like, Vinny, thank you. Mm -hmm. Adam Vinatieri, mm -hmm. thank you. Love you, Vinny. Love you, Vinny. Yeah. Even while we're warming up, there's even like a clap. I think there was even a clap for Vinny hitting like a 55-yarder in warm-ups or something like that. We go back in after warm-ups, and we come out. Vinatieri, you fucking coward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was the same people that were just doing that because the mass holes understand that, hey, when it's competition, hey, this is... This is not Go just time, no. this is not just game. Yeah. Okay, we are a part of this. That crowd never gets enough credit for how much they do affect people. Everybody talks about Foxborough being this place that is very difficult to win and mythical, and it's Bill Belichick effect is definitely real. The fact they probably control the weather also something. Mm, might, might Tom be Brady true. being up there for real. That that fan base does not get talked about enough. They are rude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are loud. What? They are passionate. <laughs> what? They are very confident. And for the last 20 years, they've been able to say whatever they want, whenever they want, to whoever they want. They're like the modern-day Alabama fan for like the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. Alabama can just talk shit because they're like, oh, we'll be in the fucking final. Yeah. Are you going to be there? You're not. That's how the Patriots fans have been. That is a 
tough place to play. And they're going to make it that way for Tom. But if Tom silences that shit early, I don't know what's going to happen. How do you feel? Are you conflicted at all? How does all of New England feel if you've been able to get catch like oh, yeah. a pulse of up there? This is massive. And Bill is obviously going to protect this house, and he has all his grudges as well. Uh, it's, it's definitely split. I think for yesterday, for the first time, I actually found myself liking Brady again for a little bit after that promo because of how incredible it was. Uh, Tom came out and he said, you know, he knows exactly what Bill's going to be doing, exactly what their entire week's going to look like, what their game plan is. I think he said how the wind is like. I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah, you guys have an open, yeah, you guys have an open end. Yeah, very open. So, yeah. I, I mean, he, he knows everything about us, which is a worry, but also on the other side, Bill knows everything mm-hmm. about Tom. Uh, I said yesterday on Overreaction Monday, it feels as though the Pats are going to get beat by 50. Uh, I don't <laughs> that know. That was Overreaction that Monday. That was Overreaction Monday. Monday. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. now I think maybe I'm down to three scores. I, I still don't feel confident at all in the Patriots after what happened last week. Is this self-handicapping? No, this is not self-handicapping. This we is all us. do it. This is us. We all do it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> we do. We all do it. Yeah. So. Is this point. self-handicapping? No, I mean, I think we've all seen what the Patriots have looked like this year, and they've only looked good against the Jets, and the Jets are by far the worst team Is JPP in the NFL. back, you think? Is I don't know if JPP is back. I, don't I think, think that he changes is. some things there on defensive Dean, line. Dean is out in the secondary. Our O-line has been very underwhelming so far this year, so I don't I don't even know if it does because the rookie that they have has been a stud, apparently. Joe Tyron or whatever the hell his name is. Their front seven's very worrisome. The only chance we have is that they don't sign Richard Sherman, and they have that weak secondary who's missing a few players already and, and Max can... able to come alive exactly hey this is a big game for Mac now too Massive. right this is a big game for Mac and obviously Mac seems to be very like hey chill oh like yeah he's, and by chill I mean passionate but he's not getting too high mm-hmm. too low it feels like Mac is like a 55 year old man at this point yeah. who is a confident person it's he's been in the biggest moments he's played in the biggest games he understands the footsteps he was trying to fill I mean it's an absurd thing for what the Mac has to deal with as well but Max a competitor. Sure. Right? I think everybody's very competitive, mm-hmm. uh, just like everybody is in the NFL, which is what Tom Brady has, you know, been so dominant for so long is because of his competitive edge that he has over everybody, so much so that he's willing to eat absolutely dog shit food. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. To and to go through terrible stretching routines and workouts every single day of his life, put his body through pain when his resume says he could have retired ten years ago and it all would have been good. So I think that's also added into the competitive edge. Everybody says he's smart and he's futuristic and everything. Well, it's because he's so competitive that he's like, how do I continue to do this? And he looks into it with Guerrero and the mm-hmm. entire T B twelve team. So I think that adds to it. But I think Mac has that competitive juice as well. Now Obviously, you have to be to be in the NFL, but he knows that this is a moment. He knows this is a moment. Oh, yeah. Andrew Luck, whenever we played Peyton, he knew. Andrew mm-hmm. Luck knew yeah. this was a moment. Now, we won, but he knew that that was a big moment. And now everybody knew that the War of 1812, is uh, mm-hmm. the game of 1812, it was Sunday night football. He came back to Indianapolis. The coaching staff knew, like, hey, this is basically the guy that we cut, and this is the old regime. Uh, this is the old quarterback. This is the old face of this city. This guy will always be up. It was a different aura, almost. I wonder if that's how Mac and old Matty Patricia and Josh McDaniels yeah. and Bill Belichick, the people that, you know, are getting caught up in this whole, it was Tom, it was Bill, it was Tom, it was Bill. Like, they also have a... A little bit of a, hey, fuck you, too. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, there is so much into this thing. The deeper you peel and the more layers you peel off the onion, it's like, oh, that person could be fucking pissed off. And let's not even think about John Bon Jovi. I mean, no, he'll be there right. for sure, John, John Bon. Bon I'm sure Kenny Chesney will probably show yeah. up. Ooh, All the Patriots brass will be there. Wahlberg, I'm sure, too. <laughs> but what you just said makes me think even deeper in this thing. Brady knows what the offense is going to do, which makes me think they'll even have more of a disadvantage because he's just going to be able to tell Tampa's defense, like, hey, when you come out in this, this is what they're looking for. This is what they're going to be able to do. This is what they're going to try to do. And then he also obviously knows what the defense looks like because he practiced against it for 20 fucking years. So I, I don't know. Now all of a sudden when I just said I my overreaction of 50 points has come down, honestly, as we speak about it, it's going back up to 50 because the, it, our team just isn't where they should be. The only thing is if you really think about the grudges that we just chatted about, there's only one person that's on the field. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That can you now Mac has to prove whatever. Mac can have that whole thing. Sure. But in the whole 
you know, we just talked about Josh McDaniels and Matt Patricia mm -hmm. and even Kraft and Bill. They're all on the sideline, okay? Yeah. So they can scheme, they can divide, they can do everything that they've done for so long and be so successful. But will that extra, you know, I see Tom already celebrating on the field, right? I mean, you already see him looking at oh, that. Yeah. You already see. Oh him. yeah, you already see that happening, right? Absolutely. Oh my I mean, god! This whole week, it's like a funeral week. It's like I'm just waiting to get. <laughs> no, it's homecoming. To get it's a homecoming. It's supposed to be happy. A homecoming will be for 15 I'm minutes. I'm coming no. home. I'm coming, coming home. home. Tell the assholes I'm coming home. It'll be a tribute video. It'll be glorious, I'm sure, similar to the one we saw last night by Sunday Night Football. But at the end of the day. He's going to come out and beat us by 50. And I don't think many people are going to be <laughs> too pumped about the tribute video or thinking about that when they're leaving. Hey, you know, Tom hasn't had to experience that traffic on the way out of that stadium. You know, as an away team, he'll get to experience the entire Foxborough oh, yeah. experience, I assume. There it's, you go. Because uh, that's down in the neighborhood as well. Uh huh. <laughs> Everybody talks about Lambeau being in the middle of a neighborhood. Foxborough is also a neighbor. I mean, you drive through town. Oh, yeah. Foxborough. You, you, you make a right at a stop sign. Like mm -hmm. It's not as opposed to a red light. It's a stop sign, and then there's houses, and then you go down in it, and as soon as you pull in, it's just like this massive thing. And Patriots fans are there always early. Oh, yeah. Always early. 8 o'clock, 8.15, start, whatever it is for Sunday Night Football. They'll be there at 10. Yeah, and a lot of the... Um, a lot of the parking lots already filled that we pull into. Mm -hmm. every, every, and I was always on the first bus. So I was on over on the first bus because, I don't know, I just wanted to, like, get out of my hotel room that I just slept in for probably 15 straight hours because I just took an Ambien <laughs> and another one and then just did that until the game day or whatever. But I that place was always an electric in, in yeah. environment. I couldn't even imagine. I think you should go, right? Don't you think you uh, should? I don't know. I've thought about that as well last night because yep. obviously I was up till like 1 o'clock just watching that promo video you a have thousand to go times. Game, I you have to go. I don't know. Yeah, I, I really don't already, know how I feel. I think we already looked at tickets. I don't know how I feel about it because I, I would like to just lock myself in a room and watch it on my uh, own and figure out uh, you know exactly what we're going to do. And Plus, there's so many good games on Sunday. I don't want to miss any of them just to go watch the Patriots lose by 80 points. I mean, there's no oh, fun in that. the Patriots win, man. <laughs> what if they do? Absolutely. Absolutely. I still have hope. That it's a seven-point spread. I think it could definitely be 13 and a half, but it's a seven-point <laughs> spread. There's a chance that they come out and they do well, but if we're not able to run the ball and we look like we did last week, which is by far our worst game, and I haven't, I actually purposely didn't look this up, but I know Brady off a loss is like probably 150 and 10, so I don't <laughs> even want to see what that stat How's is. How's Belichick after a loss? Belichick's then? pretty good. I don't know what he is after a loss with the rookie QB because this is the first goddamn uh, time we've ever had to deal with it. Uh, so. yeah. you're saying it's a whole new car out here. Uh, yeah, it's a much different car. And right now we're a minivan with three wheels looking for a spare <laughs> because we legitimately had nothing going last week. I just we'll found some good saying So tickets, you're, saying, you're saying, yeah, we looked up some last night. They're pretty pricey, but it would be cool to get you yeah, out it's there. more expensive maybe. than the Super Bowl. Yeah, but you're saying right now, you live in the same building, but you got different views, huh? Oh, yeah. A Much different views. I actually don't have a view. I'm in the basement. I'm hanging out with everybody else that actually shouldn't be in the building. All the homeless people that want to live in the building, that live below the building, that's where I am right now. Oh, what is this? This is the, um, the uh, what's that hotel in L.A.? Oh. The, uh, my the one where people were getting tossed out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, uh, it was the homeless. Uh -huh. Cecil? Cecil. Yeah. Cecil. Cecil. Cecil Hotel. Cecil Hotel. Yeah, it's the Cecil Hotel. Yeah, I'm living in the Cecil Hotel, and it's not good because, you know, one and two staring down one and three, it doesn't feel too great. Okay, right fun fact. This is the first time since forever that Patriots, Seahawks, Chiefs, and Steelers all have a losing record. Let's go to our Steeler expert, a man <laughs> who lives and breathes the Pittsburgh Steelers, host of Hammer Don. He did have Philadelphia plus three and a half last night, but he said he was forced to bet on that game. It wasn't an actual pick. He kind of got bullied, which comes with the business of hosting a gambling show that uh, a lot of people win money off of. Uh, your thoughts on the Steelers being a part of this crew? Steelers, Patriots, Chiefs, Seahawks, right? Mm -hmm. Hasn't been since 2000, week 12 of 2000, that those four teams have a losing record, all one and two, basically. Uh, Tony, your thoughts on, on the Pittsburgh Steelers? You're going to turn this thing around? He feels like the Patriots are dead. Uh, how do you feel about the Pittsburgh Steelers? Super proud to be on that list. It's a hell of a list to be on. A lot of teams would strive to be on that list. That's Not true. have a losing record alongside mm -hmm. the other greats since 21, 22 years ago. Steelers are going to be fine. They always figure it out. There's never been a time that they haven't figured it out. So why would I think that this year is the year that they're not going to figure it out? 
I saw you campaigning for the next quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers on, on the internet yesterday. Didn't think I'd do that in week three, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. Still have all the hope in the Still world. Still have all the hope in the world, but you know, also be prepared for disaster. Yeah, because well, and also you, you got that GM mentality. You you like to think things from a global view. You zoom Correct. out on the picture, not zoomed in. You're not thinking about just winning right now, which is going to happen in your eyes. You're talking about, hey, there's this guy at Ole Miss who. Uh, who I learned about is an incredibly blue collar guy. We should think about oh, for yeah. the future. Look at you. You're not even not only talking about like Tomlin, the fans and the players. You're like, hey, Colbert, I'll do your job for you too. That's awesome. Look at you with the. No, hook. I was never good at the micro. I was always better at the macro. So that that's way. how I tend to look at things. This Matt right. Carroll kid, by the way, at Ole Miss, I guess he left the high school mm -hmm. himself, dropped out of the high school because the kids were too rich, and he thought they never really would uh, have to work for anything. Correct. Wow. That's allegedly what and happened. He punched yeah. Gretzky's. Uh, this is even better. Son. He punched Gretzky's son in the face for uh, that here we go guy's daughter. Defend Brett Michaels? Yeah, Brett defending Michaels. his daughter's wow. honor. Here She's supposed to be a Steeler, guy. this guy. Correct. This guy's yeah. supposed to be a Steeler. Yeah. Yes. Sounds like this guy is a Pittsburgh Steeler. It has here. to be. Tatted up, got the one sleeve too, a of couple course. white trash tats. Pittsburgh people will lose their the, minds the, for this there guy. There is a lot. All those tattoos are faith-based tattoos. Does give me some concern. Oh no! Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got him early. But the big deep. difference is he's always been a man of faith. He didn't find. Yeah. Okay. After success. Correct. <laughs> he has always had it. Thank you. With his success. Correct. Because you're saying yesterday, I believe your statement of fact. I was an overreaction Monday. No. 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 What do you mean? No. Laced with truth. Sound like that was a kind of a casual Wednesday thought too that you had been <laughs> thinking about the. Uh, that is fascinating because if. I've had a couple of friends in the league, bottom half of the roster, who decided to start doing like yoga out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And they want to change their entire routine. Five, six years, seven years, six years, maybe five years in there. I don't think anybody too much later. And then they all, literally four of them blew their hamstrings. Jeez. And I'm not saying it was because of the yoga. Could have been. Okay, I'm not saying it's because of the yoga, but I do believe it's because they changed their routine that they had done for so long to get them to the highest level. Now you have to evolve, you have to completely change, but I think some people change their entire, now I've seen that work for people mm -hmm. in the positive too, like Mike Adams pops, he played for a long, long time in the secondary, which is the most athletic area of the field for a long time. He said that yoga helped him last longer, but I saw a lot of guys change their entire life almost to go into this yogi lifestyle almost, and then boom, it was like, no, gone, gone. And I'm not saying yoga caused this. I'm just saying sometimes if you mess up the feng shui and change some things, maybe there might be a little bit different. You're saying that that happened when Roethlisberger Potentially. found his Lord and Savior, you Jesus and I are, mm. You and I are both big. Be who you are. Let's not fuck with what got us here. Yeah, yeah, big, big, big. Be who people. you are. Let's not fuck with what got us here, people. Yeah, I mean, change, change, is, not, change is never good. If you be who you are, if you're a scumbag, always be a scumbag. Totally. This guy, oh, yeah. totally. this, guy <laughs> this guy just said, Jesus ruined Ben, yeah. and don't ever change. Be, be a scumbag. Just, yeah. You're a bad guy. <laughs> you are a terrible guy. I think you can change, by the way. I think people can change. I think things can sure. change. But whenever you're talking about your mode of work, the thing that pays the bills, I think whenever you do change it can be a little bit scary i know a lot of people that are scared to death to stop doing something while they're in the nfl that they maybe want to do that isn't necessarily great for them mm -hmm. and they're like ah, i can't change it though because it's mm -hmm. gotten me here and then as soon as they retire you see massive changes from a lot of people right you see a lot of changes because that is something that and maybe it's superstition maybe we're too mentally weak or whatever but there's a lot of things i was scared to death to stop doing. for instance i was scared to get on a good diet because i thought i literally always said have you ever seen a designated hitter or a home run bomber that is small, and you don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm shorter than all these other guys out here, but I feel like if I have some, if I have 240, 250 pounds going into this thing with a little bit of burst, I think it's going to help out. Now, I did towards the end of my run get in like great shape, and it only helped me, and I probably should have done it <laughs> earlier, but for a long time, I was like, I'm going to eat wings. Okay, I'm going to eat, I'm going to continue to do exactly whatever I'm doing. I've never pulled a muscle. I am just going to continue to do this thing because I was scared to death to change it, even though when I inevitably did change i got much better much quicker and the body felt better but those are some things you just got to worry about and maybe if you buy into an entire biblical lifestyle that could take away some savageness that you potentially need at the quarterback position or it might save you and calm you down and make you a better player as well dig just thinks in the roethlisberger situation it's like probably made him worse football player well in your case you know it's not 
as drastic. I mean, you're still eating wings and stuff like that. Like Ben would have, he was watching porn for like seven hours a day. So he would have, like, that's a drastic lifestyle change you yeah. know, that he maybe, I don't know, maybe it was, it was for the better. We, we don't know if, if it was for seven hours a day, but we were told that mm-hmm. via a, a news break from a testimony. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Which should have never got out. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have got out. But it got out. Thanks, Chef. So what do you want us to do? What do you, what do you want us to do about it? It got out. But not just like a, I don't think he was just bopping for a vacation. <laughs> you know, like the other people also think like, think about the muscles and the yeah, you're right. cardio. No, you're right. You know, and missing. The, no, he would yeah. walk into his bopping room and fucking punch the time clock and fucking <laughs> clock in and clock out. This was not a vacation. This was a job. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Twist it. <laughs> Pull Bop. it. Bop, Bop it. it. <laughs> Uh, He does not deserve that. (laughs) He would never come on this show, but we do appreciate everybody from the Steelers that has come on. Uh, Let's talk about some things that were said on the Manning cast last night. Manning cast. I'm fascinated by it. They're taking a three-week break. Yeah, Yeah, yikes. They're not coming back until week seven. So what that means is next Monday night, I think uh, Steve, Lewis, Greasy, uh, and... um, Michelle. Michelle. Of course. Of course. uh, They're going to get... (laughs) <laughs> Michelle is it's, on Sunday. It's Lisa. Ah, Sunday. Michelle right. Tafoya. Yeah. yeah. Is just, on she Sunday. Just you. Roger, Roger's on the brain. Oh, and he my just God. Her, you yeah. are a terrible person. No, 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 no. But anyways, they're getting a bunch of brand new. They are all very nice people, by the way, and great at what they do. But they are all getting a probably a pretty new crowd on Monday night. Oh, yeah. And it, that's a vastly, way to, vastly different way to watch the game. Last mm-hmm. night I was watching Manning Cast, and I was watching the game. I didn't even know it was fourth down turnover on downs. Oh, yeah. I, th- I, I thought they scored a touchdown, which clearly they he did. got in. And they blew it dead, I guess, early. And I didn't hear the whistle because I was listening to a great conversation <laughs> that was happening. But then I saw that the, t- the ball was batted out of the hands. And then they showed the replay. There's still another conversation happening. So I'm just looking over there. And I'm like, that's not a fumble. Like, what are we even doing? Like, maybe they blew him dead. So he should be on the one inch line. And then I got like, I don't know, 50 people that tweeted me immediately upon me putting out. It wasn't a fumble. It was a turnover on downs, you fucking idiot. I'm like, okay. I went. I I I I'm so sorry. I had, hands up. That's on me. I did not know it was fourth down there. And there's a couple of those moments throughout the game for sure. But the little nuggets that we learn about things and says and who's doing what and how they're acting and just the, the Manning privy conversations. He said he was talking to um, he was talking to Big Mike literally the day before the game. On yeah. Sunday, he was talking to Big Mike about some decisions that are being made and things like that. The access that Peyton Manning and Eli Manning are going to get to the coaches, to the players, to the training staff, to whoever, I assume is going to be better than what Levy, Riddick, Greasy, and Lisa. Lisa. Lisa Salters, of course. I wanted you to potentially you know, make up for what you did there. No, I know. I just... I thought we already put that to rest. Now, we all know it's Lisa. Yeah, okay, perfect. So I just want to let every like, whenever you're listening to Levy, Greasy, Riddick, and, like, there's no way they're able to get the information or ask the questions that Peyton Manning's asking. And also, everybody that comes on there, LeBron came on last yeah. night. I think LeBron was a little starstruck by Peyton Manning, okay? And, and I'm not saying starstruck, but I'm just saying I feel like LeBron views Peyton as a peer, and Peyton's older than him, so he probably looks up to him a little bit in that whole thing. Watching LeBron talk to Peyton last night, and Eli, obviously, who is increasing everything every single week, he's doing his thing. LeBron was talking like a pretty regular human almost. It was like he was so excited to talk football. Now, he obviously called a couple plays, and yeah. Sure. Yeah, he said he was going to run the ball here. Peyton saying, no, throw the ball, but that's what Peyton literally... That's what Peyton does. Like yeah. throwing Peyton the ball. did throw the ball. That's why whenever he's saying, like, with these two high safeties, you just got to run, keep running it or whatever. I'm like, did nobody ever run two high safety against <laughs> – you know what I mean? Did nobody ever run it against Peyton? Because it felt like we were able to throw the ball every single game. And before I – much longer before I got there, they were able to throw the ball every single game. But whenever, like, LeBron comes on there and just starts chit-chatting, it is distracting to the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. The game's there. But you were doing a watch along with LeBron James and Peyton Manning. And there were some things that were being Eli Manning, and there were some things that were being said in there that were just great. And I did lose track of some of the situations over here. Yeah. So I feel I'm probably going to have to watch that game back. I think next Monday, whenever we watch it with Lewis, Steve, and Greasy, and Lisa. And Lisa, we will obviously probably 
follow the game much yeah. closer. But I think people are going to miss the Manning cast the next three weeks. And I think Steve potentially in them are going to take. Oh, they're going to take on the shit. I man. think so. Time. It's a much different viewing experience. I've enjoyed the hell out of the Manning cast. If I you're don't. a fan and your team is playing, like if you're a Cowboys fan watching last night, you probably want to watch the regular broadcast. Yes. Because yeah. if you watch the Manning cast, you're just going to get sucked into the conversation. And like what happened to you with that fumble turnover and down situation. It's so hard to pay attention to the little details. Like Saban talking about, you know, and he. His audio was coming and going, you know. It was a yeah. little give and take here. I didn't yeah. know what that was all about. Was that him, you think? Well, you mentioned this, like, the first week. Like, these people who, like, we've been doing this type of production for, like, three, four years now. So, like, you understand when, the, like, if people who aren't used to being on, like, these types of, like, phone calls and, like, FaceTime, like, they just can't ever really get into a groove. And, like, I feel like they do just, it just, like, eventually it's like, all right, this, ought, I just don't know where my place is because I'm getting stepped on. It's cutting out. Like, yeah, you just got to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that was my decision. We got a, we got some tape actually in the next vlog that Foxy puts out. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife started filming me, set this whole thing up. And she's become a pretty good producer, by the way. She'll like ask me a question and stuff like that while filming. It's pretty good. Not it's very old oh, oh, Sam. Yeah. And I appreciate it. She, she enjoys doing it too. But I've told her a couple times, like, do not. You do not have to film me, okay? You're my wife, mm-hmm. all right? You, this is not something. She, like, I think she kind of enjoys it. She actually talks shit on Foxy. She wow. says, really? I can get much better clips than Foxy. Yeah. Wow. And she gets mad when I don't credit her, Yeah, which yeah. is totally on me. Bingo, yeah. Last, there was a there was a vlog or whatever that happened where he gave credit to every other person that was in the thing except for Sam. Jeez, guys, Foxy. Like, and Sam's, oh. Yeah, Sam's literally, he's, as soon as that video is debuting, I think Sam's, like, excited, like, okay, here we go. Which one of my shots is going to get in there? It does, and then at the end, everybody else gets credit, and Sam's like, Ain't that fascinating? Huh. Like, hey, I'll fucking tell him. That's yeah, why I said, hey, I'll, I will tell him. But she had, she has some clips of me setting up for that Manning cast, mm-hmm. and literally, I'm like, I'm breaking down like kind of what we just said right there and how this goes. And I say, I'm just gonna go. Yeah. Like I'm literally just gonna go, and people are gonna either hate it or they're not. But you can't. Re- there's a chance that that can go terribly, especially with yeah. the tech. There's a chance yeah. that it can. And there's always good clips, but there is does always seem to be a little bit of a technical thing with the delay and everything like that. I think LeBron handled it very well. Yeah. I think Stafford was pretty good as well. Yeah. He was kind of just more quiet. We never hear him talk. Mm, no. Saban though, it felt like there was a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Where there was maybe excitement from all parties yeah. there, and that'll kind of get and you then going with there. Chris Long, like the delay, you could tell, like he came in at the start and kind of like the delay messed him up, and it just like it's tough. And and I think that's a thing too that like that's gonna be. Like, Chris, there, did well. but Chris did well. No, yeah, he yeah, did, yeah, he yeah, did. yeah. But there was a couple tech things, right. Yeah. But and I don't think that's something that's gonna get fixed. Like that's the like it, just with where they're at, like proximity wise like that's something you're always they're gonna have to deal with on a week to week basis yeah just if you're going on the show you either gotta go or no you either gotta and literally lean back like I lean back a couple times like, yeah. yeah let me you gotta remember too paying Eli's delay is even more than yours yeah cause they got 10 screens going, in front of them they're going to uh, New York from their like control room uh, probably up to Connecticut probably yeah they're probably going to maybe even Connecticut so like there's like whenever they talk over somebody it's even worse because it's going from them and yeah yeah because you'll tell a good like i said something and then peyton yeah laugh yeah Yeah. you know what i mean so it was that was getting sent to somewhere and then back to them you actually have a better connection than him yeah because i'm going directly to that place yeah yeah they're they're rtm beat in so it's like a lot harder for them to understand and it's like in their ears so this is super tech talk but the reason why we know about this is because when I did Thursday Night Football, because Matt Hasselbeck asked me to come join him and Adam Amin, I was very lucky to do it and excited to do it on ESPN. The games, they were what they were, but I got a chance to do this whole thing. It was a remote broadcast, a Remy operation. I guess it saves money or whatever. So when that happens, they send the beam of the program that you're talking over, the live one, to Connecticut. That's going up on air, and then it's coming back to us in our monitors. So everything on our monitors was six seconds behind what was actually happening. So that means there's no replays that you can look at. You kind of just have to call from the thing. There's no uh, telestrator. Right. And there's actually no way to make up for unless you wait seven seconds and then it's already passed or whatever on the screen. That is the tech that happens whenever a, a signal has to get sent to somewhere and then sent to somewhere else. Although you can move at the speed of light or whatever the hell it is, that is still a speed and a travel destination that has to happen. And even if it's just a couple seconds or whatever it is, that can change vastly in the middle of a conversation that 
is happening. So you're right. The internet, we're lucky that we've had to deal with this yeah. kind of for a long time. And now in the new Zoom world and the FaceTime world, which has made everything and everybody a lot more accessible, there are some things that people are gonna have to work through. I assume a generation of people will be able to get through it and there'll be some classes probably taught at journalism uh -huh. school and everything like that of this whole thing. And mm -hmm. it is a different game though. You also it. very cool what Peyton said about you. Yeah, very nice yeah. to him. Yeah. That was very yeah. cool. Yeah, that was, uh, well, that was his friends and his family that were saying that. That wasn't him. He read. <laughs> he didn't have to read it, though. Yeah, he didn't. He, he didn't have to. And by the way, Archie made an appearance. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Hey, Archie's the fucking man, dude. Oh, yeah. I would assume that was potentially from Archie, by the way. the the Archie and I have had great times together. Ooh. Yeah, Archie and I. Archie's a great man. I think Archie has enjoyed, you know, the... Uh, the thing that is me. Your experience. Literally, yeah, the experience <laughs> yeah. since yeah. the first day. He's always been very, very nice to me. Uh, he's always been a good guy. Him and Tim, my dad, obviously, was a big fan. Whenever he met Tim and Sally, he was obviously so gracious at this time. I, have, he's, I think he booked PFT next week. I think or, oh. that they're not on next week, though. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I think Archie tried to book PFT on third there. Third quarter, he said. Yeah, third quarter next week. But I think at that point, none of us knew it wasn't for three more weeks. So I think PFT is going to get on there. PFT will get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, that'll be he will uh, completely right. crush it on there, which will be good. So, Archie on there though was fucking fantastic. Yeah. He needs more airtime. By the way, Archie needs more airtime. Absolutely. And like we said to start this thing off, good luck to Levy, Greasy, and Riddick and Lisa next week because I mean they will get slaughtered. There's right? like a cult following happening now. Yeah. I understand that the number we got to get to a break here, and then we'll answer some phone calls on the five hour energy phone line one eight three three four McAfee. The cult like following for the Manning cast is already starting to kind of happen here. Oh yeah. What everybody. He's looking for in this world i feel like the manning cast was able to create over just a few weeks now first week everybody was kind of against it publicly it felt like on twitter from the big media names and everything like that then they were all told it was okay to watch and it was cool to watch and then they all kind of bought in and then you saw the ratings go and then last night it was getting even more critically yeah. acclaimed and heralded on the internet because a lot more people are getting introduced to it i think maybe people that thought they were going to be a little turned off by it early or they didn't want to whatever this is how you watch football and they're kind of getting into the game I just think, I think there's a chance that old Levy and them are going to get some some things said about him, and it's not fair because it's two very no, different right. shows. Sure, as two different shows. Should be a good game though. So Raiders Chargers. Yep. Justin Herbert fresh off of victory. Ooh. The undefeated Raiders yeah. playing against the Chargers. Vision. The NFC West or the uh, the AFC West is an absolute nightmare. Who's going to come out of Monday Night Football with no Manning cast as the new top dog Ooh. in the AFC West? <laughs> Writes itself. It does. it does. Not as much as Sunday night, though. All right, we're back in four <laughs> minutes. Uh, we'll answer some of your phone calls. AJ Hawk will join us in the second hour, as will Austin Eckler. And then Aaron Rodgers Tuesday shall commence at 2.05 Eastern Daylight Time. So wherever you are, do the math mm -hmm. on that. Yep. We'll see you in four minutes. Cheers. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and. No hard feelings, and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. So, boys, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's house. <laughs> uh, 
so besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sher you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Oh, yeah! I'm Roman, a men's health brand that can dance very well and make you the best you possible. Are you suffering from male pattern baldness? John, we got something for that. Herpes. See ya. Premature ejaculation, gone. No more coming too quick. Allergies as well. And that's not all. We have clinically tested supplements for everything, including Erectile dysfunction. Come on! Bye bye! GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. Be the best you possible. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat. Welcome back to that show. And the first three weeks of Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays are under our belt. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but we've been sleeping thus far, boys. Really? What? Yeah, we've been eating greasy pizza. No, uh, what? what? Terrible burgers. Why? Mall Chinese food. Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Foxy still owes us a buffet, by the That's way. Nice. And we've been feeling like crap, haven't we, on Mondays and Tuesdays? Yeah, yeah. we have. Big time. That ends today because Arby's is back. Yeah! yeah. All of their delicious sandwiches are ready to make our lives better again this fall. Like we announced last week, Arby's has launched a sponsorship program where Arby's will pay as many D1 college running backs as they can Ooh. just for saying, tonight, I'm getting Arby's. Hell yeah. It's that easy. Here's a bit more on how it works. All you have to do is be a D1 running back. Post tonight, I'm getting Arby's with hashtag sponsored and hashtag Arby's Arby's. That's hashtag AR. Nobody's going to do this. Nobody's going to do this. <laughs> Just eat at Arby's, dude. Arby's is delicious. <laughs> Love it. Really good. I mean, nobody's going to do that. All right. If you're, if you're a D1, D1 running back, back, go to Arby's.com forward slash Arby's and you can get all the details. Here we go. Or we have a QR code that Zeno created right now. We're super Whoa. professional. Oh, Scan wow. me, please. Yeah, we saw that. Shout out to Dan Zeus. Yeah, shout yeah. out. Yeah. Matt Dan Money Zeus. Smith and Dan Zeus. <laughs> we saw that QR code, and we wondered if we could also Thank you, get a QR Zeus. code, and we got one. And this seemed to be the perfect situation. Go to If you're a Division One running back, go to arbys.com forward slash RBS Here we go. for all the details. Do it, Mitt. Mitt's not, Mitt, hey, Mitt's a run back. Yeah. All right. He's not D1 yet. I'm D1 he, run back. He keeps working. He oh, might I didn't be able hear to get the D1. Yeah, it's D1 running back. You also got to tweet hashtag sponsored, hashtag Arby's, Arby's. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I think they're giving you 500 bucks, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In yeah. Arby's gift cards. No, 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 no. No, no. It's, no? No, no. It's $500. 500 cash dollars. Yes, actual dollars, I believe. Good Wait, is it actually Arby's gift cards? Those are good I don't dollars. know. It has to be if dollars. you get five hundred dollars in Arby's gift cards, you congrats to you. You're congrats person. to you. You're eating Thanksgiving every single yeah. fucking night. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of five for fives, bro. Oh yeah, Arby's. Eh. 
everybody just thinks it's just the roast beef. It's not. No, no, no. no. no, no, no. And I'm happy that we have we are able to have this conversation again because there for a bit I thought we weren't going to be able to. I know. Mm -hmm. You know, because I get busted in the shins about liking Arby's on the internet all the time. Why? And it, I don't. You know why? I don't get it. Because it's from the people that aren't from an Arby's like town. Yeah. That's right. That judge it. You know what I mean? I actually, yeah, yeah. I learn more Most about well. you whenever you tweet that you don't like Arby's than you could ever fathom. I want to let people know mm -hmm. that. Like, Arby's, I feel like, I mean, I've, I've been, CFO Phil's grandma mm -hmm. worked at our Arby's. Oh, yeah. For like 50 years. Thank wow. You. Thank you, Gam Gam. Thank you. Thank you, Gam Gam. Thank, Thank you, you Gam, CFO Gam. Phil Gam Gam. Thank you, Gam Gam. I don't know if that's what they call her, but yeah, that's what Arby's is to us. We love Arby's. We're happy they're back in the game. Don't think anybody's going to tweet that, though. No. no I just But not. if you are. But if you do. A D1 RB. You should tweet. Get it. Hashtag, hashtag sponsored. Hashtag Arby's Arby's. And tonight, I'm getting Arby's. Because as soon as you say tonight, I'm getting Arby's, and you do the hashtag sponsor, everybody know you're not getting Arby's. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. You're not getting Arby's. Feels like an Arby's night. Oh, they have the meats, dude. They mm -hmm. do have Still. the meats. You think those Bishop High School kids uh, could do this? Bishop Sycamore kids? Yeah. That was a high school. It's not D1. But they basically are D1. No, no, they're JUCO. No. Yeah, well, they're, close. They're, yeah. <laughs> and no offense to JUCO, by the way. We got a lot of respect for the JUCO oh, world. Juco. But, yeah. We yeah. love JUCO. But Bishop Sycamore were graduates of JUCO is playing high school football. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is. <laughs> and still losing somehow. Let's go to the phones, the five energy phone line. Let's go to James in Cincinnati. James, what's going on over there? You got a good football team in the mm. Bengals, huh? Yo, Pat, what's up, man? Appreciate you taking my call. Hey, no problem, dude. Um, no first problem. off, I'm going to come at Tone, Tone Diggs real quick for being an absolute slap dick. Oh. Talking shit about the Bengals oh. and Joe Burrow. Oh. Your second that. slap dick, too, is the, the King slap dick, Coach Jason Brown, talking shit about my Cincinnati Bearcats and our boy Luke Fickle. You went up to higher ground last year. Yeah. Pat, you know what they're all about. Oh, yeah. We're going to go into ND this weekend, and we're going to slap dick Brian Kelly. Our fucking former head coach. I want to know what you think about the Cats. If we beat Brian Kelly and them, our shots are getting in the playoffs. All right, let's go, James. Slap dick ain't a verb. No, yeah, he used yeah. it wrong. It's a noun. That's right. Right. He's a fuck stick. <laughs> Chipper. Mm -hmm. Chipper. Yeah, really? <laughs> I don't think so. I like James' passion. You know, he likes the Bengals. Who day? Who day? Who day? Say, they gonna beat them Bengals. They haven't had a lot to cheer for lately. That team looks very good. They just went into. Our city, your your team stadium, their Super Bowl, and beat the hell out of you guys though. They were celebrating mm -hmm. like they won the Super Bowl. So that's hey, that's a big time win. Cleveland did as well. Remember, Cleveland did that, and then they did oh, yeah. it in the playoffs yeah. as well. What is going on? The AFC North is Ohio taking a swing at the top of the mountain of the AFC North. Well, when you stink for twenty years, you yeah. can draft quarterbacks first overall, and you're eventually supposed to be pretty you're good. Hit on so. one out of ten. <laughs> uh, all right, last phone call of the hour here before AJ Hawk joins us. I like the Bengals and I like the Bearcats. Yeah, both of them. And they ranked them high early in the season. And I, I, mm -hmm. I forget who I heard talking about this. Maybe Herbie on the Herbies. Yep. Mm -hmm. Might have been on the Herbies Award. He was talking about how, you know, how do we change the playoff system? And now Cincinnati's going to uh, Big 12. I believe they're going yep. to the Big 12 this year. But he was literally chatting about how these Power 5 schools will be able to make it. Now, they're expanding it, obviously, and everything like that. But also, Herbie went into this entire thing about how Cincinnati was ranked high at the beginning of the season. So as opposed to a lot of the smaller schools – going from maybe a lower ranking and making their way up and having to prove that they're a high rank school. Cincinnati was high rank going in, and he thought that that was a much better opportunity for them to continue to impress the people that are judging in this committee that does all the decisions. Give yourself some credit. That was on this show. Was it really? Yes. Herbie said that to us? When we were talking about Ritter and Cincinnati. And yeah, so he, yeah, because the question was about UCF. And I, by the way, I was on a West Virginia team back in the day that I think did very similar things. We kind of rose into the prominence and kind of fucked up the entire, hey, this is how everybody's supposed to be. UCF did it for a while. This Cincinnati team's a bunch of dogs, especially with Desmond Ritter. But yeah, them being ranked high early in the season, Herbie said is a vast difference then. Even if they're ranked like 10th or 11th early in the season, I think they were top five, maybe top six. I forget what it was. They were, they were very they're in top, the top eight. Ten. Yeah, they were in the top yeah. 10 or whatever. So Herbie thought that that potentially led for them. But beating Notre Dame in Notre Dame is obviously a massive way to prove even more so. Yeah, for sure. If they beat Notre Dame this weekend, I mean, I don't know who they have nothing. remaining on their schedule. Yeah, nothing. So, UCF, I mean, maybe. Uh, really, at this point, all you can do is win out. So, and, and we would like to let, a shot. We would like to let everybody know, we don't think this is the right way to do this. No. This whole playoff thing. 
Like, we have no idea what it is, but we also know that the humans in charge of that shit have, make bad decisions all the time. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of got to assume that this is the life we have to live. So we, we always talk about this. We don't like that it's this way. Like, if Cincinnati had the opportunity to prove that they're... We think every team should have the ability to prove that they're a top team in the country. But anytime you get humans involved and decisions are made and, you know, losses are had or wins aren't as big as they're supposed to be, like... That's how it is in actuality. We don't like it. We're just telling you what we think. Yeah. yeah. Just don't give them the four seeds so they have to play Bama in the first round of the college football yeah. playoff because that won't be fun. Yeah, it's a banger here. But, yeah, anybody that has to play Bama is going to be in trouble, except for maybe Ole Miss this weekend with Matt Carroll, future Pittsburgh Steeler. Hawkeyes can give him a go, allegedly. Hour yeah. two, we'll have Ohio State legend A.J. Hawk joining us. We'll see you in six minutes. Do you still have the same routine that you had whenever you were younger now, or is it much different? And how often do you just go down there and just hit Phil Mickelson flop shots all day? <laughs> but anytime you turn one sideways and you flatten it, you're like, oh, watch this. I'm going to do like Phil Mickelson does. And then you just go out there. Normally, you either blade it, yep. hit it straight up in the air <laughs> to the right, or you somehow get lucky and it goes and everybody's like, oh my God. Incredible shot. Phil Mickelson. Wow. That's what I, that is, that has kind of become, and I remember you hit the one over your head that one time. That was a mind blow from me is is the short game something you've always just been good at or are you good at it because that's all you work like so much on it at all times when i was a kid my dad had a little chipping area in our backyard and putting green and so i would just go out there and hit balls because i couldn't really go to the golf course and all i did was shots inside 30 yards and it got very monotonous to hit the same shot over and over so i'd go behind the avocado tree. I'd go uh, back around the, the, the other trees and, and bushes and rough and so forth. And so I, I would get creative as a kid hitting those shots. And you kind of learn, um, you kind of learn a couple of things. But what I would say, Pat, is that there's really only way, one way to chip effectively because you're coming in with no coverage on the ball. You're coming in with so much loft that the leading edge is coming in first. So you have to have your weight forward that's it. You have to have your weight for it and drive the club down into the ground. And most people, when they when they do that, their hands either come back or their weight comes back and the leading edge comes up and blades it. Now, you can kind of flip your hands a little bit if you have a good lie, like if the ball sitting in the first cut or it's sitting up. But that technique will not work all the time. And so uh, that's why I, I prefer and believe that the technique where you have your weight forward, your hands forward, and you drive the club down to the ground will be consistent every time. So lay that club flat, move that ball off your left toe, get that ball off your front left toe, there you go, and open that face flat and just drive the club down into the ground, the ball will pop up like a gem. I think I'm a scratch golfer. Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> I think, I, I think I, it makes sense, by the way, that your childhood was spent within 30 yards of a green. Um, my childhood was spent kicking a soccer ball off the side of a house. Worked out for me, it's worked out for you much better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Coach Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Oh, man, Pat, it's an honor to be on with you, man. Thanks for having me. You're a legend. Thank you for putting me through my workout and having the scouts actually come watch me kick at West Virginia. I don't think I've ever fully thanked you for that moment, Coach. No, man, I, I, I've drank the, the McAfee Kool-Aid for a long time. Uh, <laughs> Let's get right into it. The locker room culture changed completely when I was in the league, from when I was a rookie to when I was done, and I retired after the 2016 season. Now it's even more different, I would assume, from when you came into Pittsburgh and everything like that. The dancing on the logo, the TikTok, everything like that that you guys have had to experience. What is your messaging in there? How do you adapt and let players be themselves without you know, doing too much? Because that is a fine balance that you've been able to do, I think, in an incredible job with throughout your entire time in Pittsburgh. I think for me, more than anything, I try to stay connected, you know, um, just getting a sense of where these guys are coming from, what's in vogue for their generation, what captures their attention, how do they learn, how do they communicate, how do they interact with each other formally and informally. And I think being a parent kind of helps me, you know, my boys are 19 and 20, so it's not much difference between them and some of the younger guys that I deal with here. And so for me, it's just about gaining an understanding and working to stay connected. You know, that's my general attitude, man. It's adapt or die for me. 
and, and I want to I don't want to be one of them old crusty guys man just that just refuses to adapt although I am one of those old crusty guys now yeah you are old as shit now you know what I mean I mean you've been around a long time I remember back in the day whenever you showed up there's a lot more you know to the camera there's a lot more yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that now you're just old ass man now huh you know how it is years in this business will scar you man it'll settle you down <laughs> that is classic <laughs> one of my favorite moments uh with you is uh, when you would tell me every um, warm up, uh, I'm gonna get you back to Pittsburgh when you're old and cheap. Uh, what what does yes. that mean? <laughs> what, what did that mean? And uh, should that have been taken as a smack in the mouth, like I, uh, whenever you said that to me? No, man, it was a tip of the cap, man. There's okay. certain guys Good. around this league that I'm really interested in, but I know I cannot afford. And, <laughs> And, and you were one of them. So I was going to wait for you to physically deteriorate a little bit until <laughs> you came back into my wheelhouse. Yenzers are going to go bananas in Heinz Field this weekend. First time it could be filled up in a long time. I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to... Oh, mama, I'm in here my life. I'm the oh, 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 oh. Is that your alarm clock? Yeah, just say yes, by the way. Yeah. It's my ringtone. It's my alarm <laughs> yeah. clock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you, Coach T. Last question before we let you go. Uh, why'd you let Troy Paul Mala do what he fucking did to me? Why'd you let... I know you've heard of this. Why, why, <laughs> well, that's a short side of the field. That's bad football. You guys coaching unsound football over there in Pittsburgh? How did that happen? We know you and love you as a man. But on Sundays in the fall, man, you're the nameless great faces that we die. Die, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, never had a losing season. Absolute legend, two-time Super Bowl champion, Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Thank you, coach. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. Hour two on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 28th, with AJ Hawk will join us right now. Yeah. Hour one, you got a chance to chat about all things happening last night in the Manning cast and the Dallas Cowboys beating the dog shit out of the Philadelphia Eagles and Dak's pre uh, Dak Prescott's return to Jerry World since the injury happened. I can't wait to hear what this man has to think who won 12-3 and three on the weekend against Damn. the spread. I guess he didn't pick one of the games. That sounds like Thursday, he Thursday night. Missed work. Oh, yeah, and he probably would have picked Carolina if we had to guess. So uh -huh. let's say he won 13-3. and I three. did pick Carolina. No, you did This guy won 13-3 and three against the spread this past weekend. One of the best problems. You know I picked Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> A.J. Hawk. Yeah! Oh! What's up, A.J.? Hey, guys, I don't know why Dallas had a lead, and you texted me. You were worried that they weren't going to cover. No, there was just a couple moments there early where it was like, are they going to put this away or not? A couple turnovers in their own end zone. It's like, wait a minute. Is this going to be one of those ugly games that the Eagles are going to be able to win because Dallas is going to shoot themselves in the foot? And instead, no, it turned around the complete opposite. The Philadelphia Eagles did a couple of that. Uh, Trayvon Diggs, Dan Quinn, and that defense are humming. It seems like the offense that Coach Mike McCarthy learned from Kellen Moore and Dak Prescott is rolling. Uh, good night to be a Cowboy fan. Bad night to be anybody in the NFC East, in my opinion, AJ. Yeah, I would say it was a pretty uh, balanced attack as far as the offense for Dallas. And, I mean, it's hard to not be a Dak fan. Like, I don't know if there's many people out there that don't root for Dak Prescott. Even if you didn't know all that's happened all, like outside of his football life with his brother, just terrible situations that he's – dealt with and coming back from the injury but now like I'm all in on his play on the field I don't know I guess earlier years previous I I thought he was awesome I was like this dude's great I don't know if he is like the the dude like he's that good like he is more than that guy he's awesome the uh, mental makeup of Dak Prescott is something that I think 
you know, more people are talking about because we got a chance to learn a little bit about him at Hard Knocks and Hard Knocks and when he's mic'd up and him coming back and this whole story and obviously the family stuff, but also the, the incredibly devastating break of that ink. I mean, that was disgusting. Yeah. And then him coming back earlier than anybody expected, getting a long-term deal, fighting through the conversation about his contract for the last two, three years or whatever, outperforming everybody at his position and where he was drafted at was insane. So he's just, I love him as a human. Hard Knocks sold me. As soon as I heard him say fuck two times, I was like, all right, mm-hmm. like this guy. Mm-hmm. This is a guy I do enjoy. And then everybody that's ever been around him was like, hey, everybody loves him. His team loves him. That's why it was so easy to almost move on from Tony Romo because of what Dak is uh, I'm incredibly happy for him, and you got to feel good about Big Mike, huh? Couple clock management things uh, going on here in the first couple weeks, but it's a work in progress, man. Hey, we're, we're getting better every single week. That's what they're doing. But also, I see Dan Quinn, D coordinator, getting a lot of love too with that defense. Micah Parsons rushing the passer. Like they have some team speed on defense. If they if they find a way to continue to build on this, man, they're, they're going to be scary. Jalen Smith, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, number nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. His dreads, he's got great dreads. I mean, those things are middle of his back right yeah, now. He, flies around. he was the one that was talking to the team in the huddle before the game started, and I was like, is that? Yeah, he's from Notre Dame, right? Yeah. He, he had the broken leg and had to rehab and yep. came back. Yep. He flies around. Trayvon Diggs has been an absolute game changer for them as well as we've started here. His kid, obviously on Hard Knocks, is awesome. But, yeah, I led off with – I led off the show with, is Dan Quinn the greatest – Defensive coordinator of all time. He's back in his roots almost where he was finding his coaching success before becoming a head coach and having to deal with all the other bullshit. And everybody knows what type of defense they're going to run. That's the same Seattle Legion of Boom defense. And a couple people run it. Dan Quinn says we're going to do it. He's got some dogs, but it's not just the dogs and the plays they're making. It feels like that culture is different, AJ. Last year, that defensive culture for the Dallas Cowboys was not a good one. And I, I referenced this. You had a safety come out and say, we're not going to be able to run 100% every fucking play. And then there was there was rumors that the coaches weren't coaching and they were bad coaches, and then they were getting bombed on every single week. It feels like Dan Quinn was able to bring that entire squad together now, bring in some more weapons, get Micah Parsons on defensive end instead of linebacker. It feels like that entire team's culture is different, man. It's just, it feels different for Dallas this year, although people have been saying this for like 20 years now, you know? Yeah, it feels different. Hopefully they, you know, if you go and you lose the next game and you look terrible, then it's like, okay, they're terrible again. Fire everybody. So it's just a week-to-week thing, I feel like, when you talk about, like, people that are invested in diehard NFL fans and love a certain team. But Dak and Zeke are a huge part of it. Like, they really are. When you have Dak back, like, it it breeds confidence for the defense, the the offensive play caller, defensive coordinator. Yeah, it's, it's fun to watch, man. I think it's fun when Zeke gets going like he was too. How do you feel about Mike McCarthy learning Dak and Kellen's offense whenever he got there because I was told that he had been coaching like he was a head coach uh, in the basement even when he was fired. So does that mean he was coaching his coaches that were in his basement, the offense that he had been doing for a long time, and then once he got his job because of how much he was coaching in his basement and how ready he was, he said, fuck, I'm not even going to coach what I was coaching in my basement. I'll coach what you guys are coaching. Did you expect that? That was kind of a little – that was a piece of information that Peyton dropped last night. I was like, damn, that's very smart. I think this is the right move, by the way, especially with the success that Kellen and Dak had had, especially that one year. But you would assume that a coach would come in and be like, no, this is what we're running because I'm going to be here longer than everybody. Yeah, you would assume. I think it's it, it, that's what great head coaches do. They put their ego aside if they feel like it's going to help the team win. And why it should make sense, though. Why would – Kellen Moore is calling the plays. He's calling the offensive plays during the game. So why wouldn't you want to be running what that guy is versed in, what he runs best? Yeah, I'm sure they have plenty of, of uh, plays mixed in that are, are big Mike's playbook, but – I think whoever's calling the plays, it should be like what they're the most comfortable doing. I agree completely, but a lot of people could be, uh, potentially say on the other side of that Kellen Moore's offense hasn't really won a fucking thing, right? Yeah. So he says, "Hey, hire me, to, hire me to be a head coach. I'll run this offense. Whatever I'm doing here, whatever I'm successful with, I'll run a hybrid of both of them." Yeah. I mean, that's probably how you sell it. That that is what he decided to do, which is a good. By the way. Good idea. I want to let you. I think this is a good idea because Kellen Moore, Dak, they already know. They don't have to think about anything because Tom Brady told, uh, I think, Peyton or Peyton or maybe Matthew Stafford said this to Peyton last night. He said, look, 
unlearning the old offense has been difficult. He said learning the new one, adding information into the brain hasn't been an issue. Getting rid of some of the information, probably in some pivotal times, he'll be standing there, he'll see something, and he's like, oh, we should run a boom. And he's thinking, oh, no, that's the Detroit offense. Hold on, let me, we should do a boom. It's like those types of second instinct types moves change whenever you have to learn new verbiage. That's why the Tom Brady, Tampa Bay Buccaneers experience, we knew it was going to take a little bit of time until it kind of molded together. And it did immediately after the bye week, after the Atlanta Falcons second half blowout that they had of, of Atlanta. And then it hit the bye week and do the whole thing that happened. It's fascinating to know that here that Mike was like, oh, just tell me what you guys are fucking running. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's fascinating. It's very fascinating to me. That I did not expect that at all. I like it. I appreciate it because Dak can just fly around, knows what he knows. He doesn't have to forget a whole system and learn a new one. But I just, if it doesn't work out, people will be like, so Jerry hired a guy to tell a guy to run what he's already doing. You know what I mean? Like that, that's, that could be the other side of that whole thing, you know? Yeah, it could, but it also could be like, yeah, but Mike is there to be the CEO, to run the team, to set the schedule, to set the culture, and then he empowers his assistants to do their job. It doesn't micromanage. Like, that's what great leaders do. That's awesome. If it works. Yeah, and it worked this last game. So, hey, we're all good. Let's see what happens six days from now. We might want to fire everybody again. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is the life in the NFL. But, I mean, I, that team looked fucking good last year. Real time. good. Yeah. I mean, they How looked... hard does Zeke run? You want to tackle Zeke? Are you kidding me? Well, and people are dogging Zeke. They're saying Tony Pollard last season and this season, he provides a spark, which he does, by the way. Hell of a yeah. player. But I think Zeke has heard all that. He looks lighter. He looks... He's flying around. He had 90... Well, how many? 90 yards? 95. 95 yards and a tud? I mean... Hey, do they give Zeke enough pub for how good of a pass blocker he is and how he's not scared to throw his head in there and take anybody on? No, they do not. They never talk about that. It's a big part. That's a huge deal. Like, it really is. I've been watching running backs around the league early this season. Like, a lot of running backs are very good blockers already. Like, it's been impressive to me, the kind of blitzers that they've been able to pick up. Isn't it? Wouldn't you think it would go the other way, too, with the way football is changing, right? It's kind of, I don't want to say physicality is leaving the game, but there's a lot of hits and things that are happening that are no longer a part of the game or that have been happening that are no longer a part of the game. And you would think with the way RPOs are and how everything's spread out, maybe the younger running backs aren't as ready to kind of, you know, throw your face in front of an, a grown-ass fucking man who is trying to run through you. They're might... used to quick game. Think about it. They're used to, like, only quick game. A lot of these spread them out offenses in college. It's like, bam, we're getting rid of the ball right away. You're not, you don't have to step up and really take on, like, blitzers that often. So I assume you were very surprised whenever some of these running backs, were they younger running backs, older running backs, or were you just, or were you just surprised? Yeah. Both. Both. It's usually when a younger running back gets in there, and I see it like he's in on third down, first off, which is a great sign. If you're a young running back and they trust you enough to have you in on third down, you know the protections well enough and they trust you. But then when they'll go up there and they're, they're sifting, and all of a sudden they dive back and they, they take out like a guy blitzing in the A gap from the backside that gives the quarterback that extra split second that he can get rid of the ball. Like that's stuff that doesn't get noticed a lot, but I always, for some reason, notice it because if I was like. Running backs, your job is to score touchdowns. Yeah, that's a secondary thing. They, they have to, you have to be able to, to you know, pass block. But that usually comes later in your career. I feel like when they become better and they, they are, they're trusted enough to be in there in those pivotal moments. Yeah, they always talk about it. You know, well, oh, the young guys haven't been able to get into pass block, and it's always like a throwaway comment. You know, it's always like, ah, he's learning how to pass block. It's always like a throwaway comment. But then whenever you hear a lot of quarterbacks speak. You know, one of their things they are most worried about is like, can this guy fucking block or not? Does this guy know how to do any of this thing? And then for you, that's probably who you ran into huh? every single time you went in there, you know, yes. before you're flipping off your coaches and refs and fans and everything like that. You're running into those guys. How many sacks do you ever think about the amount of sacks if some running back didn't get a chip on you or how yeah. a game could completely change because if a running back didn't chip? It's a massive ordeal, I think, to you because you know how many games you probably could have changed if it wasn't for some asshole great running back that could block. Is that fact? Yeah, or like you, you, you're coming downhill, you're rapping, like you, you're – your three techniques wrapping in the A-gap, and you're like, okay, I'm going to wrap right off this dude. I'm scot-free. They're not even going to see me, and I'm coming. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'm on my head because the, the back <laughs> comes back from across the center and chops me down. And I'm a half an inch away from the quarterback, and he throws a touchdown. I'm like, cool. Great play. Yeah, okay, so that was supposed <laughs> to be a sack, loss of six. Instead, it was a touchdown. And those plays don't ever get talked about, ever, unless you're the person that got fucked in out the of the sack. They, they will get talked about in the, the team room. The head coach will show that most likely to the whole team. Like, hey, guys, look at this. Is You talk about sacrificing your body right here. Hey, has Zeke always been good at blocking? Is that something he's always been? I think been? so. He's always been willing, I feel like, since he got in the league. It, looks, it seemed like he's always been willing to stick his head in there and try to slow guys down. 
Dak and him get along very well. So I assume that's a big part of it as well. Is that yeah. what you're going to say, Cole? Well, I was going to say it's even more impressive now because they can't, like, cut block inside the tight ends. There's no more cut yeah. blocking. So they actually have to stand there and just eat one if they want to, you know, be effective in the past. Just blocking. die slowly. Yeah. <laughs> just hold on and die. That's an actual. Hold on and be a speed bump. Yeah. Hold on and make sure you try to trip him up as he runs you over. Just die slowly. <laughs> that I've never in my life felt worse for somebody when they were being coached and told to die slowly i was like that is a tough <laughs> yeah. that you will be judged on this particular play on whether or not you get killed in a slow fashion mm -hmm. and i want to thank you for your sacrifice for this field goal that might go yeah. in and might not i mean i hope i am so thankful all right so just stand there open your arms completely all right go from a three point you plant your left foot in the ground then you plant your right foot in the ground and then you just stand there like this, <laughs> and you fall slowly. Whenever you are going to fall, they are going to blow you the fuck up. Uh -huh. You just need to fall slower than everybody else, so they don't get over the top. Because it's going to get off in 1.25 seconds. So just as long as you, you got what? What do you got? You got two guys, maybe three guys. Eyes to the two. Look out to the two. And if not him, you get to three, and you just eat it. And every single field, and they never put a starter in there. That's always yeah. That is somebody that is a swing guard, second swing guard, maybe that can't play center. That is somebody down there they put in there. And just every play almost, you're like, hey, bub, I'm, that's what you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Vinny made it, if it means anything. I don't know if you hey, saw Did they it. have the wedge? Could they do wedge returns when you got in the league? Beginning of the league, yeah. And then they changed everything. That, changed. You talk about craziness. Like when you talk, okay, who's going to be our wedge buster? All right, well, they got four O linemen linking arms. They have a 20 yard running start at you. I need you to split. One and two, right between their heads. Okay, you, cool. You need to eat two of them. All right, if yeah. you eat two of them, then we'll have somebody else eat another one, and then we got a singles everywhere else. All right, so we're in a good spot. We need you to eat two of them, though, yeah. Well, what do you mean eat two? Well, what we need, you see, is we need you to run fast enough that they are worried about you, so you can't, can't half-ass this, and we need to just kind of sell out into two people. Oh. <laughs> you are going to lose. Yeah, this is what's going to happen. Put gonna your happen. arm, sailor die. You got a sailor die. Put your arms down to your side, boom, and just launch your head. Make, but you make sure you get two, though, because if you get one, the coach is going to kill you. Hey, you know who was an incredible wedge member? Who? A.Q. Shipley. Oh, oh yeah. I would oh. never want to go. Oh, that'd be – I would I'd try to run around that, dude. I might fake a hamstring. Bro, watching him get to the spot, because he's very athletic. A.Q. is very athletic. He's a Hall of Famer in Western Pennsylvania for his basketball abilities in high school, let alone – he just happens to be a, a round man who has incredible leverage, watching him run to the spot of where the kick on, because you're supposed to be about 10 yards in front of the returner, 15 yards in front of the returner is where the wedge is being set. So you have to run and find, you have to track the ball and then find the returner and run to 15. Then you wait for somebody else to join you and then you lock hands and then him fucking waddling. I mean, just straight ahead. And the way he tells it is everybody gives credit to the wedge buster or whatever. The way he talks about it, because it's the first time I ever talked, he's like, think about me, I'm just running. And there's a guy who literally has a 60-yard head start <laughs> yeah. running at me, and I'm much bigger than he is. I'm an offensive lineman, so he is selling out, and he is getting judged on whether or not he sells out into me or not. So AQ was the king of the wedge there. For I used to, I used to try to hype him up before games because I knew how fucking miserable he was. I was like, yo, you're the king of this, though. Maybe the greatest of all time, dude. <laughs> and then every single kickoff, if it was a touchback, he'd come off. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> and then if it was another one, I think he was ready. Like every single time he was on there ready to go. But there was just guys flying. Those kickoff rules used to be insane, dude. That, 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 was, that was the welcome to the NFL moment for me. So I'm kicking off. I didn't kick off like the first maybe preseason game or second preseason game because Bill Pauling told me he only wanted me to focus on punting because I didn't know how to punt. He only wanted me to focus on punting. Don't even kick off, they said. Uh, we all kind of knew I was going to kick off, though. Everybody knew it was going to end up happening, but Bill, Tullin, Bill Pullian was trying to tell me. They even had a guy on the team just kicking off. So there was a guy, he was a good guy, I forget what he was. He was kicking off, then Vinatieri was kicking field goals, and I was only punting or whatever. And the guy was a pretty good kickoff guy. Pretty good. He was a pretty good kickoff guy. Okay, He was a pretty good kickoff guy. Uh, he, he was a great guy as a human. But like in practice, I would hit a kickoff, and it's like, you know, so they finally made it in stays a roster spot. So I started like kicking off or whatever, you know. That was my welcome to the NFL moment when I just saw six car crashes right in front <laughs> with the fastest. And you heard it. I'm oh. sure you heard it. It probably like made you jump. Oh my! And then also the ha. Ah, there's some people that ha ah, like they have to and they're doing. Like these, great part. Yeah. Oh, these guys are going 22 miles an hour, 23 miles an hour, and then there's people circling back, and I just saw boom, boom, boom. I was like, holy fuck! And I just like jogged off, and I was like, all right, Vinatieri, tell me if I'm wrong here. 
I need to just stay way back, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because there is a <laughs> buffer there where people are, there's just bodies flying around. It's nice to know, though, that, you know, in your eyes, there's young running backs that are like, yeah, I'll step in there still. And now in kickoff, you're still seeing people mm -hmm. fly down the field. Oh, yeah. I think the game's in good shape, even though it is evolving into a softer one in some people's eyes. Oh, yeah, there's still plenty of contact. Like, they go watch a game on the sideline someday if you think that it's, uh, it's, it's soft. It, it will scare you, I think. We had a, I had a couple teammates that I don't even think they knew that the game was changing. And uh, <laughs> they, I think they would kill a human like, if they had to, you know. But yeah. I was thankful they were on my team. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. You need that on your team. We had a couple guys that was like, hey, yeah. that guy's better than you, they say. That guy right there. He will not be around the ball <laughs> at all in this particular play, but he knows you're coming and you know he's coming. And it was just a little side battle that was happening between two guys. And it was almost like a, you know, a kill or be killed type situation. It was like, golly, happy you're on my team. We had this guy, I don't want to say his name because I loved him and I don't want to say anything that could potentially be construed as disparaging because I don't mean it this way. Maybe the greatest teammate of all time, this guy. He made some mistakes off the field, but maybe the greatest teammate of all time. He had a gold grill on the bottom, then he had his mouthpiece on the top, and he came up to me uh, before a kickoff and said, uh, kick that thing to yourself again, I'll fucking kill that guy. <laughs> and I believed it. And I believed it. He wanted me to call this onside kick because he had to run in front of me and kill a human. And uh, he wanted me to call it on every single one. And I had to let him know, like, I can't just call that, like, every time. Like, that is not something I can do. So if a human's there, I can't do that. He goes, if you call it, he dead. And then he pointed at the guy. And the guy, like, looked over at him. And he, like, uh, he said, you're dead. And I was like, this guy will kill a guy. <laughs> and I am so thankful that this guy's on my team. That was absolutely awesome. And uh, I hope he's okay right now. I don't know what he's up to. <laughs> I don't know how that carries into real life, but... There are those guys on the on the field at all times in the NFL, and I think that does get forgotten about. Like, hey, there's a lot of people out here willing to do whatever, however, whenever, so they can make a living, and also that's how they play football, and that does get forgotten about when everybody starts bashing football, I think, for not being tough enough anymore, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I understand people complaining about it. The things I think people probably get most frustrated are the dumb, like uh, – Okay, what is considered roughing the pass or yeah. what isn't? Yeah, all the those players. little things. It's players. It's the refs. People. The like, give it a bad name. What is, what, these refs, how do we fix it? How do we do you fix it? Can't right hit quarterbacks. Not this year. You have a Navy SEALs like training camp for referees and you weed out the weak. So you call it refs instead of bugs. They're going to have to start paying them a ton then because yes, you're not going to get enough too. candidates. No, you got to pay double. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe put them through refs. Yep. You know? Like put them in it, situations. Does it help if it's a full time job? Yeah, it, yeah. it has to be. That's why the payment has to be double. It has to be a full time job. Quit being what a do lawyer off season. There are a lot of our lawyers. Oh, you're talking about what would they do? Have them go like ref like high school games down in Florida in the spring, like spring ball. Yeah, Texas. do whatever. Go to a camp. I don't care. Fucking Get do better. something. Watch film. Take a vacation. Hey. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> do whatever you got to do, man. Just, just don't. You know. Don't ruin the games on Come Sunday. Come on. It's the I mean, NFL, they don't, dude. They don't want to ruin the games, obviously. Uh, they want to make the do that. I think their lack of preparation and their lack of confidence is they know that lack they're going to ruin confidence. I think you hit it right there. Like you, it, That would be tough. Imagine if you're the guy and it's late in the game and it's up to you to call the, the pass interference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Fuck. It's <laughs> gotta act, but he's got to act confident then. When the guys start yelling, he's got to act really confident. Personal foul. Boo! You fucking stink! Roughing the passer. 15-yard penalty. What would have been a turnover on downs in this game over is now first down for the other team and probably a win. I mean, that nobody wants, nobody's no. cheering for the ref unless you fuck up a call that helps our team. Okay, and I understand that. Which even more so, let them have the tech. Let them have the person in their uh -huh. ear telling them you messed up. Pick it up. This isn't a good call. You made a mistake here. Maybe you blinked. And guess what? We have a camera that never blinks that can see better than your eyes can see. And you were wrong. Like, I think that will help. Full-time job will help. I think a lot of these things will hopefully, hopefully be able to change it. We can't continue to have this refereeing epidemic, though, across all sports, it seems like. Because nobody wants to be a ref. Uh, because... Nobody really likes them at the end of the day. Nope. That's right. So I can understand why that's the case. We should try to give them every weapon and tool to maybe be better so that they can say, you know what? If I do fuck up, at least I got something on my back. Let's take a break. We got Austin Eckler on the other side. Chargers are a wagon. They got Monday Night Football next week against the Raiders. How do they feel over there? How's Brandon Staley as a head coach, huh? How you doing oh. with your 10-pack, Austin Eckler? We'll yeah. talk to him on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show.
got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I've ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the, uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> And I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. It's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there. Like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down. And, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple uh you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. Nah. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, you know, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help you help us, we help you. You feel me? And, you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your Thank former you know, teammates. Hey. Yeah, hey, everybody wants you helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just the line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name was Willie. Willie. Willie owned up to. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You okay. <laughs> yeah, we 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 buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. I actually would have made more money the day I signed than my whole contract with Indy. <laughs> Oh, dude. Why did you decide to turn down a lot of money to come back to Indianapolis for the year? True story, no bull. I prayed about it. By three o'clock, I'm, I'm signing somewhere. And then 2.55, I got on the phone with Chris. Like, are we gonna get this done? Like, how can we get this done? He, he came up with a number and I'm like, all right, it's all right. Well, I guess it's meant for me to go to this next team. As soon as I close his message, Ursay texted me. I said, uh, there go my sign right there. Like, <laughs> when, he, when he texts me, that's when we got it done. Well, he tells me he got it done. Hey, what, did you see my eyes tweet um, yesterday? Yeah, is that when you got the text from Merce? No, that was a text that I was, was almost gone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, where are we going to go? Hey. <laughs> you don't have to tell us, obviously, but I do believe Baltimore was in on something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also the quarterback. Nah, that's also what it was. That's what it was. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Anybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Not a single person. Welcome back to the show. Joining us right now, uh, AJ Hawk. And obviously a beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, but we're joined by another man who always provides us with incredible conversation. Uh -huh. He's oh, been yeah. on a few times, and we're incredibly happy for him. Just had a touchdown this past weekend and a massive win over division rival Kansas City Chiefs. Ladies and gentlemen, running back for the Los Angeles Chargers and also Twitch Fit God, ladies and gentlemen, Austin Eck. Yeah! 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 What's up, dude? <laughs> What's well, good, Pat? Thanks for having me back on, bro. No, it's great to have you. Thank you for joining us. Are you in your Twitch stream room right now? Is that what's going this on? Is, I see a logo. This is the office right now. Oh! Yeah. Yup. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, my, my Twitch stream's been down for a little bit because I've been working on a different project, but that's to come soon. 
next time I'm on the show, we'll talk about it. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> always moving and shaking. Yeah. Oh, always. Hey, way to go. Uh, congratulations for whatever it is. I'm excited to see what it is. But also, it feels like your guys' team is very good right now. I mean, last year there was like six, seven games I thought you guys could have won and for whatever reason didn't go your way, whether it would be situations or whatever the case would happen. This year, it feels like you have a mature squad. I mean, going into Kansas City and getting that win is huge. What is the vibe like over there? Is it Brandon Staley? Is it another year in the building? What do you think it is and why? Yeah, you know, I think it's I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination of a lot of stuff going on. All I know is that I like where we're at. Right, I like where we're at because here's the deal: like it's it's hard to win in the NFL, yes. especially uh, you know you go against a couple good teams uh, early on. You know, at the Cowboys, uh, which I feel like you know we beat ourselves that game. You know, they sure they beat us, whatever it is, whatever you want to say. And then the Chiefs too coming in and finally getting a road on the on the road against them uh, feels definitely feels good, right? But it, it's, you don't want to get this misconception like oh we're a good team, right? Like here's the thing in the NFL. You can get beat any given Sunday. There's teams, you know, they go on a run early on and they pit it out at the end and they're like, what the heck happened to these guys? And so it's been our message, like, hey, don't get comfortable. Like, do not get comfortable. We know we're going to see the Chiefs again um, coming up. You know, you know, the Raiders are obviously balling out. You know, Broncos are 3-0. and So, you know, we got some, we got some challenges going on. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to it, though, because we feel like we got a, a good squad that we can go out there and compete with. Well, you guys are in a good spot. The expectations are high, so yeah, you gotta you have to to keep it going. But going back to your your head coach Staley, I, from everything I hear, like he seems like he is a football dude. Like he is all about football all the time. Like how has he been from when he came in to now? Has he has he loosened up? Like what was it like? Also, like when he brings in this new scheme and all this culture, it seems like it it's worked pretty early, like right away. Yeah, man, this guy's a gangster, man. Like, this guy, <laughs> this guy knows his shit, man. This man, he has a plan. We practice the plan all week, and then we literally go out and execute the plan, and we're like, "This stuff is this is working, like this is legit <laughs> stuff we got going on here, right?" And this it's like it, it's such an emphasis in the week that it's like, "All right, we know everyone on the whole organization knows what we're trying to do," and then we go into the game and we do it. And I'm like, "This I've never been a part of an organization like this, or where we have a game plan that's this obvious to us, and then we go out there and apply it." So yeah, this man, I feel like there's two parts of coaching, right? That, the first part is like, okay, do you have the respect from your players? You know what you're doing. And then there's the second part. It's like, okay, can you go out there and actually win games? Um, and he, right now he's been showing that, hey, he's got good plans and we've been putting them together. So looking forward to continuing to freaking go out here and grind through these these weeks with this guy as our, our leader. Hey, how is that clear plan? Like, how is that different from maybe things in the past or that other teams do? Like, how, what makes it so, like, simple and clear for you guys? I think what I think the biggest thing that I love that Coach Staley does is every Wednesday – we have like a it's like a twenty minute meeting, and we talk about every aspect of the game: special teams, offense, and defense. And you know, in the past, we used to talk about like certain players, but this this year, we talk about this is what we're gonna do on defense. So everyone in the organization knows, like our Tom's there, coaching staff, training staff, like everyone in the organization knows what we're trying to do on defense. Then we go to the offense. Then we go to special teams. Right, we go through every single aspect, and it's like hey, this is what our emphasis is, and this is why. And he'll show us past plays, film, how he's had success in the past, what's worked, and we just break it down. We break it down, and then during the entire week, everyone knows what we're trying to do. Um, I think that's just been the little edge, and so like it's little things in the NFL, and you know I think that's a little thing that I really love that Coach Staley does that helps the entire organization go forward. Well, that kind of transparency from your from your head coach not only does it help everybody buy in with what you're doing, obviously, because everybody's like, oh, that makes sense. Let's go ahead and do that. You're having success, which is good news, but also it immediately cr uh, creates accountability, right? It immediately creates accountability. Like, hey, this is what you're being tasked with. This is what we're trying to do here. Everybody on the team knows what you're trying to do this week. Chuck Pagano was big on this. Let's go through the entire defense offense. And there was a couple times he got the special teams where he's like, hey, the return was really good. And he literally just pointed, we're going to try to, Pat, you're just going to hit fair catches this guy every time. The whole team knew. The whole mm -hmm. team knew exactly like, hey, if this guy gets any return yards, this is not supposed to happen. And then I, on the flip side, I knew what the offense was supposed to do. I knew what the defense was supposed to do. That kind of can bring you together a lot more. Was it? Uh, Chuck was the first person that brought that into my life. Is that vastly different? You said Anthony Lynn would hit on a couple players, but has this been something that, like, Herbert, who's uh, an introvert and everything, has this been Keenan Allen, Mike? I mean, everybody's balling right now. Has everybody just bought into this completely immediately? Well, I think the best part about it is we have a plan, and then we have players that can execute the plan, 
right? <laughs> like, so the fact that we've executed a plan and it's worked has continued to, you know, give us confidence that, yes, our coaches know what the hell they're talking about and it's working, <laughs> right? It's working. Like, the times, the time we did lose, like, we had a freaking, you know, illegal procedure that took a touchdown off and a, a, a legal man downfield that took another touchdown off, four, literally 14 points. Like, we beat ourselves, in my opinion, in those game, in that game against the Cowboys. And so if it weren't for those two penalties, like, I'm like, we're literally a way better team if we get lined up right, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and so the fact that we're still performing at a high level, you know, and seeing the plan come together and have guys that can execute the plan and it's it's working, it puts us in a spot where we're all, the chemistry is like, yes, like we can, like you said, the accountability is there. I'm like, okay, we're not going to let Pat Mahomes get outside the pocket and I'm watching our defense keep this man inside the pocket. And that's how we beat him. That's how we held him to 260 yards, right? The, keep this man in the pocket. And, you know, that's what they did with the Rams, and they had success with them. And they're like, okay, we're going to do that this year. And guess what? We held them to the plan, and it worked out. Yeah, that's the that's whenever those started happening, those meetings started happening. I started enjoying watching the game a lot more, you know? Because when, when I didn't know what the Legit. fuck was going on, I'm like, all right, why do we keep doing that? <laughs> we, we, why are we not running hurry up? It works every time, you know? Like, I'm on the sideline, and me and Vinny are like, what the fuck are we doing? And then once it starts getting introduced, it's like, oh, okay, this makes sense why we're doing this. And I think it's yeah. better for the entire team. I assume a lot more are going to do that, and we can't thank you enough for joining us, Austin Eckler. Saw you flying through the air a little bit, uh, score a little tud, fly through the skies over there in Kansas City at the home of the Chiefs. <laughs> hey, Herbert looks like a guy, man. Hey, Herbert looks like a guy right now. Has he changed, evolved since last year? Same guy? Man, just... He is a guy. Yeah, he, he is. is a guy. That's why he looks like a guy because we saw it last year. But the only thing he didn't have last year is a year of experience under his belt. You know, so now he's got some experience. Um, you know, he's opening up a little bit more. Just the personality. Just he's getting a little bit more comfortable with the guys. You know, he's been around us a little longer, so, you know, he's not scared of us anymore. Um, you know, it's just, it's just how rookies are. They come in, they're scared, a lot of them anyway. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, you know, he's he's coming to, coming to the point where we're wanting him to be as far as, like, a leader, as far as taking control of the offense, everything you'd want in your quarterback. I see him developing there. He's still, he's still working on it, you know, but the time's going to do him justice. Um, and, obviously, he's continued to play like he has been in the past. And the fact that Joe Lombardi – um, has got a scheme down that he feels like is going to be easy for Justin to make good decisions. Uh, it makes it way better too for him. When did you know that that Justin Herbert was the guy? He was going to be a guy because that was one of the things coming out of college. Like, oh, he seems to be like quiet or introvert. People think they they took that as a knock on him. And I love how he tries to to get away from the cameras. He, he plays little games with the media and stuff. It's fun to, to watch what he's doing. It shows you there's all different kinds of leadership, but did you know right away that he was the dude? Uh, I would say no. Like, he, yeah, he had a great rookie year, but this is the NFL. You got to do this every single year, right? And so it takes time. It takes time. Like someone asked me the other day, see a franchise quarterback. I'm like, well, give me like three years and let me see first, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, like he played seven to 18 games, man. Like, I don't know. Like, right now he's playing like he's got talent. Absolutely. He's doing it consistently, and that's what you need to see for a few seasons before you say, like, yeah, this guy's a dude. But right now, you know, he's playing at a high level. He's keeping it up. We have a lot of, you know, explosive talent around him, too, a lot of veteran talent, too, and uh, obviously put a lot of money into the O-line, which definitely helps. So right now we're, you know, people don't even see this, but right now we're in a, a premium spot, you know, in an offense where we have a young quarterback who's playing lights out on his rookie contract which means we don't have to give him half the salary cap to keep him around. So that means we can spread out some money all around him so we could, we could build this offense around this guy. And it's helped him so much, and that's going to help him too uh, as far as just developing because he's, now he's understanding, he's hearing from our center, Corey Lindsley, who's been playing for nine years, how he calls protections, how he's you know, pointing things out. You know, We have all these guys around him that are getting open, Keenan, Jared Cook, Mike Williams balling out. And so it's just like, man, he has all these weapons around him that are keeping him safe and giving him places to throw the ball. And so that's just going to make him even quicker and better. And it's just going to make our offense just, you know, almost unstoppable. Yeah, the theory about the rookie contract, being able to build the team around it is 
tried and true now over the last like 10 years and but once you get a guy you have to pay him and it seems like all signs are pointing at herbert being a guy with everything he's playing and i appreciate the fact that you said let's judge him in like three years from now like we have we still have no idea he's playing incredible football right now he's a massive massive human being with incredible talent you're saying he's becoming a leader but who knows what the fuck is going to happen over the next year we have no idea i think at this point in life so i appreciate and respect that uh austin eckler joining us the Los Angeles Chargers. Go ahead, Todd. Austin, how crazy is it playing in SoFi Stadium? Like, do you ever get kind of like distracted by some of the stuff's going on? I mean, a couple years ago, you guys were playing at like StubHub Center, you know, it was MLS, a stadium. MLS stadium. And now, you know, it, you're playing in like an $8 billion stadium. How crazy is that place? You know, it, it doesn't really hit me until like how crazy it is until I really go to other stadiums. I'm like, wow, like SoFi is way better than this stadium <laughs> you know like, it's just like it's not that the other stadiums are bad it's just like this one is like brand new it has all the bells and whistles suites everywhere the giant jumbotron ribbon that's a circle um the overhang just the outside venue you come in it's like already 100 feet down the field so it like opens up in front of you so it's it's really special man it's so special and you know versus the cowboys our first home game it was sold out so just feeling the energy of that place and how loud it can get um, compared to what we've been playing, like you said, StubHub, Dignity Health, whatever they call it nowadays. Um, yeah, man, it's it's night and day difference. So, like, I, I'm like, you know, the Chiefs stadium used to be my favorite to play and just because of the energy, but I'm like, you know what, SoFi, SoFi's got some energy now. Um, and, you know, obviously us winning games is going to help fill that out. So uh, we're going to continue to keep doing our part and try to make games exciting. It's a space station, it looks like. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Looks like it's, it literally is. It looks like 2050 in there. It feels like... Every camera is an 8K camera that I've seen. Mm, yeah. They even had it in like the booth, and that's because uh, old Cronky, the owner of the Rams, you know, paid what 10 billion yeah, for that. Yeah, just about. About. yeah, he better <laughs> save some of those though. Hey, St. Louis coming for a couple. Yeah, of well, I, I've heard that place though is amazing over there, and uh, it feels like the young team is the right thing to build a brand with. You know, like we're still in the stages of the Chargers and Rams building their brands in Los Angeles. Now, Rams were once there before, so I get it, but 10 years from now, 15 years from now, a lot of fans are gonna be of the team that they're a fan of in the LA from the success that the teams have. Rams are going, and the Chargers, your team, I mean, it's a very, incre- both of you guys are in incredibly difficult divisions, but well, it's been fun here, to watch your team, dude. Here's the thing, this year, this year more than any other year is a premium year for branding in LA. And that's because the Super Bowl is in L.A. Oh, so, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I get it. Look, I get it. It's going to definitely take years to, you know, build and establish ourselves as far as, like, the brand of Chargers um, and how that goes. Like, I'll be long gone and that's still be a, being established. Oh, dude, but if an L.A. But, team plays in the L.A. But Super Bowl. if an L.A. Bowl, team yeah. plays in the Super Bowl in L.A., bro, oh, immediate stamp. This then they're the, the Lakers, though. Then they're the Lakers. Immediate. The other team's going to be the Clippers from from then on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, hey, it's on, man. It's on. It's straight up. Like, there's no hiding from that. There's two teams. We play in the same stadium, same fans in the area, right? Like, we're, we're fighting for it for sure. And you guys got a squad. You got a quarterback that can do it. And if your defense feels like they're flying yeah. around as well. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, awesome. We were just talking about how big of a pain in the ass it is for running backs to be pass blocking. Uh, have you had to change your strategy towards that now that you can't just cut everybody that comes through? Or is that revamped O-line kind of help no, with see, that? No, see, there's the, you can still cut. And Matt, i definitely still cutting. As long as you're in the tight end box. Oh, so the inside box. you can. Yeah, inside the yes. tight end box you can. Uh, yeah, but hey, I'm, I've never been afraid of contact. But if you're trying to run me over, you're definitely getting knees chopped. So <laughs> slow down, slow down. It's a gentleman's game, right? Like, hey, I'm a, I'm a cop. I'm gonna cut you one time, and then you know, okay, oh, you, you better not b- try to bull rush me again. And we'll, we'll stay up and we'll be healthy. Like, but if you're trying to run me over because you think I'm a little guy, nah, think again. <laughs> well, I mean, the little guy does have the advantage of being able to get to the knees quicker than everybody else. So that is good news. Do you still have a 10-pack? Still got a 10-pack mid-season? You get a little bit, uh, you put on a little, uh, little, little fat? <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm losing weight, man, so it might be like a 12 right now. Whoa, geez, geez, this She's guy. Obese. Unbelievable. <laughs> what did you do this offseason? You jumped over something fucking stupid. It was something... You did a dive. Yeah. What are you? I did a bunch of challenges. Are you trying to become like the most athletic human of all time? Is that like a? a, Not even. Not even. I'm just trying to push my body, see how much I can really do. I was doing like I did like four one arm pull ups. No one did that challenge, and then I had the 405 squat challenge where I squatted 405 13 times. 
No one, no one challenged. No one, no one's challenging me. I want to see. Look at this up. fucking oh guy! God, Jesus. <laughs> Look at this guy! Hey, oh, like, so you were putting those challenges out just because you wanted to know. Like, is there? I would like yeah. to know. Is oh, there anybody out there? Yes. It's like, let's see. You know, specifically NFL guys, but then just in general. Now I'm like, now I'm curious. Like, is that people out here doing this stuff, or is it just me? Like, what's going on? Uh, I hope you get an answer. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see who answers. Look at this guy. Good Lord. What do you? You don't eat anything. You just have you had a sandwich? Do you? Is that all a little myth? Is that a lie? Do you, are you completely calculated? Do you get like your levels <laughs> measured monthly to make sure everything's intact? Like, what do you do? You know, I've been I've been doing the same routine for a long time, so I've got it pretty much down as far as how I can keep myself lean and also gain mass. And I've been doing that for as long as I can remember, like eight, ten years. So. Just doing it for that long. No, I'm not counting calories. Just like I eat the same foods over and over again. <laughs> what are they? What are they? <laughs> My main go-to is just rice, turkey, uh, oh, yeah. salsa, and a little uh, dab of sour cream. Ah, uh, yeah. So oh. I can't do it. Yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I appreciate you doing that and for you joining us. Uh, you're the best, man. Good luck on whatever project you have coming out, and good luck on the rest of the season with the incredible Chargers. Hey, I appreciate you, Pat. Thanks, boys, for having me on. Hey, tell everybody we said hello. Ladies and gentlemen, Austin Eckler. Hey, hey. AJ, is that what you do? Is that why you look the way you look and your jawline is the way it is? Is that what you do? Same. I food? mean, I do eat the same foods a lot over and over just because I like the same thing. So, yeah. What I mean, is it? What do you do? I don't look like him. I mean, that dude's a freak. And he's, I mean, crazy powerful too. Yeah. 405 for 13. And then he has an explosion as well. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. I do like the fact that he's like, is there anybody out yeah. there? Yeah. Aren't there any CrossFitters I feel like that would want to challenge that? Well, that's why I'm happy we just kind of put it out there because I, I am legitimately <laughs> excited to see. There's a dude that I've been seeing on the internet. He's been popping up on my Explore page every once in a while. He uh, he might be 360, and he's doing those uh, CrossFit. All the way up. The, pull all the way up. Pull ups. The muscle, muscle ups. Or yeah, whatever. whatever the hell that's called. Oh, Steve Weatherford. No, Steve, Weather, Steve Weatherford. That yeah. might be the guy that has to answer this, actually. Yeah. Sure. Tell that guy to be careful because his organs will fail and attack him if, if he's not careful. CrossFit did have that <laughs> going for them a little it bit. It actually happened to Phil Rabdo. when he was running. Though. Yes, yeah, Rabdo. CFO Phil, who is in the office, by the way. Yeah. Phil! Really? really? It's a nice little treat. Yeah, you know what that means. That means there's probably a rather large conversation happening. <laughs> if we get Phil Maines out here, which is good news anytime you talk to CFO Phil or whatever, but he ran a marathon. He ran too fast. He trained for so long for this whole thing. So long he trained so he committed his entire life to training to this thing i was Did so he dump his pants no. uh, i don't actually i've never been told or asked that hey, does that happen whenever your body I, just shuts down no, i feel like you guys we talked about on the show somebody the just was running and just dumps their pants and keeps it going i uh, know he's not a speed walker he was running a marathon that's an olympic speed walker you're talking about bailey did that mm -hmm. too oh, uh bailey did it in a track meet i think <laughs> 100 or whatever i heard that story but the the phil one is he trained his like all in this guy went and i'm you know, we play team sports, so running is, you know, not good. Like, running is punishment. Awful. Punishment. Not fun. In my yeah. eyes, running and, running is punishment. I hate that that's what it is in my head, and I know that there's people that enjoy it, but Phil got into running. He started getting, like, the runner's high. Did the Mar Pittsburgh Marathon's a big deal in Pittsburgh. Here we go. 26 point whatever. He started that thing, and he still has yet to get a medal saying he completed that thing Damn. because mile 23 or 24 – I guess he went into a state where he couldn't remember anything. His body was running, and then he passed out, and they had to take him to a fucking hospital. I mean, it was real. And so he needs That's to scary. get back on that horse and finish that goddamn That's right. marathon. He was, Come on. That's right. he was flying. He was, he was, like, competing with people that were racing. And his body, like, just quit. <laughs> body was so like, this is not those, what we are, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a maniac. Those last, like, those last five or six miles he ran probably had to be an absolute, like, think of the mental test that was. I doubt he just all of a sudden felt great and then, bam, shut down. I don't think he remembers most of it. Like, I don't think, he, I think he got to a point where he doesn't even remember and his body was just going or whatever. But wow. we're all keeping, you know, this is a big deal. Phil was doing this. I was very impressed. So I'm sending texts back to his family that's at the race and then other people. And I'm like, how's he doing? They're like, he's way ahead of schedule or whatever. He's way, like, he's flying or whatever. And then I send a text, hey, how's he doing? You know, when it was about to be over, how'd it go? I get no response from anybody. I text Phil, how'd it go? No response from anybody. And then it was like hours later, everybody was informed like, uh, Phil almost died in he that marathon down. today. Yeah. He was actually taken to the hospital by the people that run the marathon. He didn't finish. It was at this mile mark or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, my God. That's why I never work out. That's why mm -hmm. Smart. That's why I don't run. That's why I don't do it. But Phil's going to go finish that thing. He's going to conquer it. That's uh -huh. why you shouldn't change. And you should be who you are. Uh, all right.
And we go back to the beginning where Diggs is still on that Ben Roethlisberger theory that he had yesterday, you know what I mean, which is good news. Um, I mean, the best part is, though, someone in that that, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers locker room has leaked this to Ben, the theory that Diggs has. Yeah, imagine like Cam Hayward going like, uh, I played softball with a guy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I played softball. Do we like? Do we talk? You like you him? Yeah, he's a good guy. He's, he's one of uh, McAfee's guys. He thinks now. I'm just like because you're gonna hear this, and then Tomlin's like, he did say this. Uh-huh. <laughs> everybody, yeah. like everybody in that building, like you, Ben. We thought you should know this. He thinks that Jesus maybe is the problem for why you're playing football the way you are. And uh, if you would like to address that, we don't know if you have to. And, I mean, what a moment! They definitely heard that theory. Definitely heard that theory. And a lot, How by the could way, you not? A lot of people tweeted me that aren't necessarily thrilled that, that we are promoting this theory uh, sure, to the world. Yeah. Uh, a I'm lot sure of people. There's some evangelicals that take it. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. I was worried. I thought it was like. I thought it was like Steeler people. Team personnel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> PR. <laughs> no, if it's know. just those people, that's fine. All right, let's hit these five energy phone lines beforehand. I don't know if we need to be burning bridges with evangelicals. I'll either. see him. Huh? <laughs> I'll see him on Sunday in church. I'll talk about Joel there. Osteen coming at your ass. No, you, said, you actually dropped the first pillar of your life whenever oh, yeah. because of this. You said mm-hmm. uh, faith no more, so you're still going to Sunday uh, service. I huh? dropped it down to like 12 or 13, so I'm still going to go. But. Okay, so Sunday service just made me think of something. It should have made me think of R. Kelly's going to jail forever. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that right? Yep. He's guilty on everything. Yep. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. luck, officially. Oh, Ty and Gumpy were talking about this morning. That was they had a wild take. What was it? No, I didn't. Nice try, Tony. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, what happened? Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Something's oh, bad. Something not. Uh, needed to be left uh, in the back room. <laughs> 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 that was awesome. I know Tony's <laughs> games. No, I know Tony's awesome. games. Oh, You're this. not dragging me into this. You, know? <laughs> you have your Como <laughs> situations. I, I don't need I, that. I, I, that is awesome. I, I'd like so, to be known I'm out on both Cuomos. What happened? Okay, congratulations, oh. finally. I mean, yeah, that's what both. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, the other one, apparently, you know, scumbag, yeah. too. Wow. Oh. All right. Dipping just, his pen in the company ink. Oh, they're just Italian. All, all I said is I was gonna asking if Tony was going to let everybody know he was going to get ahead of the R. Kelly thing instead of being cornered like what happened with Cuomo. Oh, uh, so you were letting him know, like, hey, yeah. by the way, get, if get R. Kelly comes one. up. Gumpy's yeah. like, hey, hey, Diggs, by the way, if R. Kelly comes up, you are not by any means on his side. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, because... Oh, yeah. We try to do that, I think, with the Cuomo thing. And normally, I don't dive into the conversations that the toxic sure. office has. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Sure. Uh, and Foxy and I normally try to stay above it, even though AJ Always. sends it in there. But with the Cuomo thing, I do think I, I came in and was like, not good for the Italians bad what's guy. happening here. Now, uh-huh. this is not good. Bad guy and also saying, no, it's just that I'm Italian and I'm a bad guy. So I like, you know, as a very pro-Italian show, I mm-hmm. mean. Yeah. You are Italian. Please, I am <laughs> 0.01% me, yeah. Italian. I mean. We be talking about the meatballs, <laughs> not on the sub, but on the pasta. Hey, call me now. Grazie. That's a a papa de... <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> a papa. You Hit him can't. with it. Uh, him with you're it. muted yourself. Unfortunately, it's not Tony you have to worry about with the Sark Kelly situation. It is Zeet. Zeet's no, the one taking I will the say, news the I hardest. A, I am a bad That's guy. I did give him a birthday cake remix when I worked at Cold Stone. He came to my store. He's Chicago guy, some, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did Chicago. give him That's years ago, though, before you knew Way about it. Way before, anything. yes. Anyways, did he have anybody with him? Yes, and I think it was her. Her. There's like 30 hers. Yeah. The one that was in the documentary. I, I said this when really? it came out. Yeah, it was it's, it's Was she off. handcuffed to him? Um, no, no, no. She's brainwashed. So I did hear, <laughs> I do think there was some propaganda and cult oh. stuff that happened, but I think there oh, was yeah. also some physical stuff that was going on as well to keep people trapped and everything like that. What a th- fucking, I mean, would have got away with it forever, right? I mean, that's something like if, if the world doesn't advance technology wise, all those things could just continue to happen. Think about that. Yeah, I mean, sure. it's absurd. It's insane. Things like that are still happening with technology right now. Okay, so we hear those stats like the serial killers, there's an amount of serial killers out there, and there's like, a, somebody has said there's a certain amount of serial killers in every state right yeah. now somehow. You, we, yeah. we think those stats are still the same, even with the world be, basically being monitored every single where we ever. Probably worse. I, don't I think you just. I don't you, know. The world is. We are under surveillance, dude. Doesn't are, it seem difficult to get away with a crime right now? Like some, you're going to get caught on a ring cam on something. Like there's a lot of small fight. towns with no. I understand. Like there has been unsolved murders, and there is terrible people out there still. I'm not saying that's not the case, but I feel like when you hear the story of like Manson and and you go back to Dahmer and, and even the uh, the guy that Bundy. Bund, no, the uh, the Hans- Casey. The, no, uh, John Wayne Gacy. I mean, all those things. They were able to just go to another town almost, and nobody even knew what was happening. Yeah, yeah. And then just boom, 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 that whole thing. It's just, I don't know. 
are the percentages still the same? Let's catch them all. They're fucking disgusting pigs or whatever. But I feel like our entire world is almost surveyed now. Like you, you can see, uh, somebody can see something everywhere. And I think I learned that via watching like Dateline. As you continue to get older in Dateline here, the videos are getting more prevalent and more clear and everything like that because the world is just starting to be watched everywhere. I, I, I do wonder that. The, like could the R. Kelly thing happen right now? I guess it is. I guess it probably is. I mean, it was like a cult. It basically was a cult he was running. And we know there are plenty of cults running right now, but a lot of times they don't think they're in a cult. He also married Ashanti when she was 15. Very true, what you said about the cult thing. Yeah. And I did hear that yesterday. Did you really? In yeah. Do her parents have to sign off on that or something? I don't know. And then do they actually sign off on it? Is it not just a forged signature? Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, because you never know <laughs> back in the day. You had no idea. Remember, th that's not that long ago that the, oh, that ain't fucking right was available mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean like that that it's not that long ago when i was in high school you asked somebody a question there was no internet on your phone there was internet but it wasn't internet on your phone this is not that long ago this is not that long ago 15 years ago whenever you would ask a question 16 years ago whenever you ask a question uh if somebody gave it a good answer from a position of power that should have given that answer it's just like oh yeah that makes sense those are, yeah. Still lives those like are good times yeah <laughs> it's good times and also potentially catastrophic times for right. some particular situations. The issue with serial killers these days is they're learning from the mistakes of past serial killers. They, they know how those guys got caught. So they're just getting smarter and better. Well, we got to keep our eye out. And I'm happy R. Kelly's going to jail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. See you later, dude. I can't believe you sang to him because he tipped you at Cold Stone when you were working 60 there. 60 bucks and my fucking, the manager took it all. What you, did you sing the Ice <laughs> Ice Baby? Baby? No, we did ignition. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, no. Yeah, How'd it go? Yeah. How's it go, Z? I can't. I'm doing a count. Yeah, we're not singing it. Yeah, we got 30 seconds till the second hour ends. And then Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays on the other side. Yeah. Yes. And then we talk a little bit more football. We talk about 37 seconds. We talk about what's going on in the Aaron Rodgers book club. I mean, there's Ooh. so much to happen in about six minutes from now, AJ. I know. What, what are you going to ask? What's your first question going to be? Well, I, I wrote some things down after watching a game about 2 a.m. in the morning after Extreme Rules. You know, I'll see how coherent they are during the break and really lead off with something special. I can't wait for it. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, hour three, is on the other side of this six-minute break. We'll see you then. Every Tuesday this football season, joining us, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! That doesn't get you going for a game? Are you kidding me? No, but I have a funny Creed story. So, in 2007, we're playing the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday night. Oh, we're 10 one. I have long hair, and I'm a backup. And before the game, we walked down the field, and I don't know if it was on purpose, but our intro song was Creed with arms wide open. I looked to my buddy Nate Weir, and we both said, this is going to be a good night. And that was the night I came in mm -hmm. off the bench and changed the narrative about me from you know, possible draft bus oh, to, shit. hey, this guy might be able to play, maybe. Thank you, Creed. Yeah! Thank you, Why am I having so much fun? Bingo. I have just a new and increased love of life. And I've made decisions and changes and habits that put me in a lot better headspace. And there's just a lot of things that have come together in my life over the last few months. And it starts with love. And then surround yourself with, with people that you really enjoy. You know, to, to get sentimental. This show is, is just another step in that. What is the longest you've ever thrown? Do you even know that number or do you not care? Yeah, somewhere between 68 and 70, Pat. I don't know. Right in that sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 69 yards is how far you threw it. Hey, nice. Congrats. Hell yeah. I sometimes laugh when people talk about, you know, down years for me. Because a lot of times down years for me are career years for most quarterbacks. <laughs> That was awesome! You said in the interview that you would add an extra finger to your scotch drink or whatever. It was a long night. We didn't get home. I didn't get home till like 11.40. Look at how much scotch that is. Is that what you did? <laughs> it's not that much. That's four fingers, dude. You said you normally do three. That's four right there. But you have those fat sausages. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Why is football the greatest sport on earth? One main reason. It is a true team sport. The love is not just about our sport. It's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have by competition. Yeah, they wouldn't show it because uh, I play for the Packers, but um, I had a pretty sweet no-looker to Devontae <laughs> on the last drive that kind of set up for a few plays. Ooh. I'm so thankful Patrick Mahomes brought that into the NFL. I know. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Good for him. Yeah, I know. It's just none of us been doing for a while. <laughs>
who probably doesn't get anywhere near the credit for doing shit like that all the time. Uh, he wears number nine and plays in Detroit. There's a massive water pipe out there with vitamins, and I've been going pretty ham at that. Maybe that is the problem. <laughs> hey, guys. It's a plant, bro. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's it. A couple people, one college kid. Took a shot of my swag. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. We know. Oh, we know. We don't like that. Kid. Like a- you know, swag. It's just like clothes I wear, or whatever. No, no, no. A swag is a mentality. Yeah. Swag is a mindset. Swagger isn't that you have a supreme backpack on. True swag is owning your inner essence. Mm. It's a mindset. Mm-hmm. A lot of you guys are just posers. <laughs> I am very thankful for you guys, for this show, for the opportunity to have this Tuesday. I'm not going to say that it's the reason why we've played so well and I've had a good season, but I can definitely say that it's been a positive contributor in the entire year, and I do have a lot of thanks and gratitude for that. Aaron, thank you, Aaron. Thank you. No, no, no. no don't don't no, you no, thank no. us. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you on here. I feel like I've learned so much about not only you, but life and football. Do you have any hilarious interactions with fans? Anybody ever say something just absolutely despicable to you? There's been a bunch over the years. I think the the rowdiest and the biggest trash talkers and the funniest trash talkers are in Philly. Oh, yeah, Uh, me too. You know, one of my idols growing up was Alex Trebek. They're doing some uh, some guest hosting spots, and it's going to be released here pretty soon, but I have the opportunity to do one of those. Let's oh. go! I am so thankful you joined us, man. The mustache looks incredible, and the fact that you're wearing that shirt, I am eternally grateful for, pal. Well, yeah, we might as well drop some bombs on this show. You know? There's no scrubs out there. <laughs> <laughs> have you watched a film on the game yet? Dude, will you watch no. it? Though? Yeah, I think like uh, 420 on uh, Saturday, probably. <laughs> PM, <laughs> Central Time. Were you at all surprised to see the the wild speculation out there after your uh, post-game comments? I don't feel like I said anything that I hadn't said before. It, just, it was more a, real, a realization, I think. Ultimately, my future is, is not necessarily in my control. Now, obviously, after the season that I had, and you know, potentially winning an MVP, you know, we obviously Absolutely. made it to another good run. I don't think that there's any reason why I wouldn't be back. I don't think people are used to hearing the truth from athletes. So when they hear the truth, it's so like surprising at times. That's why this show, I think, has been so different. There's times where you let your mind go to maybe, well, I'm going to be a Packer for life. I'm, I'm going to be like a Tim Duncan or a Jeter or a Kobe and play with one team my entire career. I think naturally you dream about that. I think I've realized this year with the conversations, you do seem to be a rather normal human. And you guys know, we've talked about this off, off air, but there wasn't like some agenda doing this. It was like fucking talk to Pat and AJ every week? Yeah. Sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> but what it's allowed me to do is, I think, silence all the douchebags out there who were, you know, talking for me. You know what? I'll say it. What? Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is happening. Yeah! The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. Hour three on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, September 28th, 2021, years after the year zero was founded, we'll begin right now. Yeah. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Shout out to you for listening on SiriusXM. We're watching along at YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. The man sitting next to me on this screen is the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, and now a Ryder Cup champion, AJ Hawk. Hey, boy, AJ. Hey, hey, hey. Talks the tables here. Tony Diggs is here, the host of Hammer Down, which will go live 15 minutes after this show ends every Monday through Friday. And joining us in a moment or two is a guy that with 37 seconds left in the game on Sunday night football, 
with no timeouts, decided to take over and make some magic happen. Completing passes to Devontae Adams, getting them in range for Mason Crosby to drain a 51-yard field goal to get a massive win in the NFC over the San Francisco 49ers in Santa Clara, California with the North Valley Community Fund receivers in the building and back in his home area, the founder of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club, the current reigning MVP of the NFL, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! What's up, dude? Hey, thanks for uh, giving me a few seconds to get situated there with that long intro. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty nice. You know, Zito's back there like, ha, ah, ah. ha. And I'm like, all right, I can say a couple more great things because life is good for this guy. Uh, congratulations on a massive win. That vertical leap you displayed while celebrating after Mason Crosby put that ball through. Life's got to be good right now, huh? You were up like 40 inches, it looked like. Maybe a 50-inch vertical. And you look so cool right now, obviously, in a different place than normal. I'm in the, yeah, I'm in the, the sun room. I got the, you know, my uh, books behind me here. I thought that was very apropos. Considering the, uh, the, the uh, book club that we've been doing, I can see you've uh, at least got a book in your hand. That's good. <laughs> it's the giver, dude. Hey, it's crazy what that one kid got to learn from the giver there. And, That's right. I mean, really, it's free thinking. I loved it, man. This was awesome, dude. This was really good. It is apropos. You're right. It is. It is. <laughs> Uh, but a, a little trick, a little trick for the uh, the vertically uh, jump jumping impaired. If you lift your legs up, it actually looks like you're jumping higher than you actually are. Okay, so let's talk about the jump a little bit. In the bookcase, looks great. The lighting looks fantastic. The flow got good hang time. Yeah, I got my guitar here. Yeah! Oh my god, I wish I had one. I wish I had one right here. Are you gonna play something? Can you play? Uh, I can play a little bit, but, but no, I'm not going to. That's not what this show's about. <laughs> I mean, it could become that. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. it's Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. You do whatever the fuck you want to do, pal. If you want to play a little guitar, you do that. But let's talk about the game a little bit. Um, was San Francisco, especially with family, friends, community, people you helped in the building and being from your area of where you're from, is that a game that drew a little bit more excitement and enthusiasm, or is it just, hey, this is a massive win for our team right now, and that's what we got a chance to see at the end of that thing. It was beautiful to see you celebrate like hell with your teammates, your coaches, especially just weeks removed from, oh, this guy doesn't care. You know, that, that, that whole narrative was one that was getting a little bit loud. It was great to see it. Is it San Fran that did that, or is that just a massive game for the team, you think? Well, it's a rough night, I guess, for some of those uh, he doesn't care campers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the game, man. I love competing. There's nothing like it. There's there's nothing like uh, uh, having the ball in your hands with a chance to win the game uh, late in the game. Uh, that's you know, that's what we live for. That's what we dream about. We don't dream about you know kneel downs at the end of games. We dream about okay, we got to go down and put the ball in position to either win it with a field goal or win it with a touchdown. That's, that's what you dream about. You know, when I grew up, uh, when I was a young kid watching the Super Bowl and watching the drive, um, you know, I, that's what I wanted to do. Drive your team 92 yards down the field and win a game. Now, that was San Fran, so obviously I've been a San Fran. Uh, I was a San Fran fan my entire young uh, life. Uh, so it always is a special place for me to come back to Northern California, but – I don't need any extra motivation or, or inspiration. Uh, it was a measuring stick for our football team, I think, to see how we matched up against uh, against another really good football team, and, and I'm proud of our guys. Hey, did you? Uh, how much time did you think you needed to get down there in field goal range? And also, were you surprised? <laughs> I see Dane Orshlovsky on ESPN freaking out, losing his mind because they snapped the ball with 12 seconds on the play clock down there towards the end. Were you surprised they didn't run that down? Uh, I was considering that we were out of timeouts, but you know, what are you going to do? You know, they throw it to that stud fullback and he breaks a bunch of tackles and scores. Like it wasn't the situation where, well, don't get in, don't get in. You know, it's, it's you know, you got a great defense. You got to trust the defense. Like obviously we need to make a couple plays and still hit a 51 yard field goal. And you know, we got an incredible kicker, uh, who definitely, you know, reps the brand all the time, all the time. Oh yeah. But so still, you know, it's still a difficult kick, and even to get that position, you got to hit uh, hit a couple chunk plays and, and not have any penalties and, and clock on time. So, look, you know, I, I think no one's to fault uh, on, on their side, especially not Juice. I mean, he's 
you know, bowling people over, running a little choice route, getting in the end zone. Um, but you know, if you if you play if you play not to lose, you lose you, you usually lose those games. You know, and and playing to win is always the win, you know what I want to be a part of and. I don't think they, they have anything to be upset about. Okay, so let's talk about that last drive, and then you talked about Mason Crosby there, who, oh, gee, dude, by the way, he has been bombing balls for so long. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I'm so impressed by it. He's unbelievable. But as soon as you kill that after the two incredible plays, Devontae's is a stallion, by the way. I, I don't know how the hell he continues to be even better, and just you two playing football together is so much fun. But as soon as you clock that, your celebration – like, yeah, I know Mason's going to make it. Like, I bet you Mason saw that and really felt like my guy's got me. You know, like that is that's a really cool moment that AJ and I chatted about yesterday, but I don't think a lot of people saw. As soon as you killed that thing, especially in the state of the world we're in with kickers, you go, and, yeah, we just did it. And then him burying it, even though he bent it around a guy, which is fucking awesome. But that was just that was a really cool moment for the brand. I want to let you know that I appreciate that a lot. And I'm sure Mason does as well. Well, I have a lot of confidence in him. I should. He's proven it time and time again. Uh, he's made a lot of big kicks over his career. I remember his first game winner his rookie year against Philadelphia at home in 2007. I was a backup, and, you know, he just had a good feeling about the, the temperament of the guy and, and the attitude and the confidence that he had, and nothing really rattles him. And The only time you can rattle him is get him on the golf course a little bit, start piping it past him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, man, you know. It maybe wasn't my favorite game winner. My favorite was probably against the Cowboys in the divisional playoff. When he made it twice, if you remember, he made it the first time. This in 16. And then he, uh, you know, he was hitting a cut that day. So, he, you know, hit a little cut in there off the left upright. Then he hit it outside the left upright and just snuck it in there. That was really special just because of what we went through that 2016 season. Um, but this one for sure will always be special. Uh, the way that game went, the ups and downs, the calls both ways, and oh. and then to, to have no timeouts and to be able to put us in position. Devontae, you know, the undertaker coming out of the, <laughs> the <front. laughs> uh, was was pretty amazing. Even I was surprised when I saw him on the field. I mean, I was standing over there when he went down, and, and he kind of gave me the, you know, the thumbs up, which, which usually means – Okay, I can feel my arms and legs. I am not. I don't have any paralysis, so I'm like, okay, good. Because as a quarterback, you know, that's your biggest fear for sure is laying out one of your buddies. You know, especially a guy like Devonte, who I love so much and have so much respect for. Um, so I didn't see, expect him to come back on the field. When I saw him jog on the field, I was like, Jesus, John Wayne over here, what's going on? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, it was pretty cool. Go ahead, Pat. Play something. Okay. I mean, I Thanks. learned this one uh, way back in the day. Mm -hmm. I'm happy I'm taking requests. Uh, I'll, I'll begin this thing. Uh, you just let me know what you want to hear next. All right? And uh, thank you all for coming out. I think it's open three. Wow. Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me, bro? Let's go. Bro, I fucking did. And then. Spider-Man. Yep. <laughs> Boom. Hey, I'm a fucking... Huh? Hi, am I not? This is my dad's guitar. I, I fucked it up hey, for sure. Hey, smoke on the And I normally have the... Pick. Yeah, that's it, dude, right? Oh. Is that not it? Damn. Is yeah. that not it? That's amazing, yeah. Can you actually play? I remember when you were younger, you did some Fox interview, and you were, like, sitting on a beach. That was and you, sweet. And you were, <laughs> you were doing the full strum, and then now, obviously, on the State Farm commercial with Jake's dumbass giving your rate off to everybody. I mean, can you actually play? Have you ever gone up in, like, on a stage at, like, a uh, maybe a uh, Howl at the Moon or, like, a uh, dueling piano place? I did a, uh, an open mic, a couple of songs. This was years and years and years ago with... Uh, with Brett Good, our longtime long snapper, we we used to, you know, have our Fridays where we uh, drink some brown liquor and uh, play some guitar, uh, yeah. and and we decided for whatever reason to play this open mic. This is I don't know, this is about twelve years ago, maybe. Is this and Green Bay? This is in Green Bay. Yeah, we went down there, you know, and you sign up or whatever. So we, you know, we were gonna play a couple songs, and he kind of froze. Be honest with you. Like we played a couple. We I mean we practiced for a few weeks too. And you know when you're maybe when you're drinking everything sounds a little bit better I guess. But 
<laughs> but we went in there and we struggled. <laughs> Did you get booed out? I mean, they had to know who you were, right? Immediately upon you. <laughs> no, we didn't get booed out, but we started our last song and Brett couldn't do it. So I said, hey, man, I got it. So, oh! Yeah. And I did a little uh, Ben Harper forever to kind of bring it home. Never what, what did Brett do? Did he just slowly walk off the stage while you <laughs> played the song? I think he bellied up to the bar. Oh, good. Hey, hey going to your, you were talking about, uh, Pat and I were talking about LeFleur earlier. You ever feel like you may be bullying him a little bit with this position you're in? Whenever you get juiced, you just sock him and forearm him in the chest and hit him in the neck and just mess around. I know it's all in good fun, but technically he can't really hit you back and he you deserve to get smacked a few times how, how, how heavy handed you are <laughs> yeah you know matt likes that real intimate hug you know kind of where you hold and then look at each other and i'm more like you're in my space man come on <laughs> like i'm not trying to like hug and then like talk it out close like man come on just dab me up and let's move on come on how are you with how are you with the offense? How are you with Lafleur? I mean, this was a big one for him too against Kyle, I guess, and there was the cold handshake or whatever. And who knows if that was just two friends being mad at each other? I'm sure that's been addressed. But how was it for you know him to get this a big win? San Francisco has been a nemesis. I mean, it has been here for a bit. This is a massive win. How has Lafleur been? How's your relationship? And how do you feel about the offense right now? Yeah, I don't think anybody's seen him. I mean, he's been on a on a bender the last couple of days. <laughs> Uh, no, Matt. Matt's a grinder, man. I'm sure he put that thing to bed you know, on the plane. He probably stayed up the entire plane ride. We landed like 5:30 in the morning, you know, walking out there. It's like the damn paparazzi. You're walking off the plane. No, I love it. I mean, I love seeing the fans at the airport. But it's like 5:30. I haven't been even slept. It's hard to sleep on those planes. Um, and you know, walking off, and it's like people clapping and people taking pictures. I think people just got to the airport. Some of them were flights, and I'm like, you know, baggy eyed, can't even, you know, st you know, staggering around there, haven't slept, you know, hardly at all on the flight, uncomfortable, hungry. Um, but I'm sure Matt was, uh, you know, put that film to bed and was on to to Pittsburgh pretty quick. Now, I'm, you know, we were all happy, and, and some games mean a little bit more than others. I'm sure when you go against your former boss, it does, and then have an icy handshake after. You know, after a win, I'm sure that feels a little bit better. What is that icy handshake? Do you ever have any any uh, opponents where you weren't really sure how the interaction was going to go after? You know, you always go talk to the opposing quarterback. You always seem like you're your best buds with them. You ever have any interactions after a game that you're like, oh, this guy's a little more serious than I thought? I haven't. No, I haven't. I really haven't. I mean, there's been a couple where you might have some strife with another guy on the other team during the game, but uh, usually after the game, it's you either don't talk to him or – you know, it's squashed. It's like, oh, that was heat of the moment. You know, you dap each other up, and then you you, know, you move on. So I, I haven't really had any any of those on the field. The cops walk like with you, too. Cops walk with the head coach and the quarterback. Yeah, it's too, so don't do it. Yeah, yeah. sure, I got a ton, of, yeah, a ton of cops around me, I'm sure. Oh, that's a no, you don't. I guess we have seen you very casual conversation, except uh -oh. for uh – -oh. Except for, is that Indomik and Sue saying, hey, you're right, we should get past this? Because I do remember <laughs> that is a situation that is still potentially – you know, something that exists. I don't know if you guys handled that or not, yeah? Uh, no, I mean, I never really got necessarily handled, but I, uh, you know, I didn't see him after the game. So I'm sure there's, there's not any strife between us. It's a couple of, you know, competitors, savvy businessmen off the field. Nothing but respect for each other. That's all. <laughs> Nothing but respect. Do, do all the younger quarterbacks just come up and ask you a bunch of questions? Like, right now, the rookie quarterbacks are swimming in it. This last yeah. weekend, I forget yeah. what it was. But do young quarterbacks after the game, since I know you don't go out early in the pre-warm-ups, do, do they take that time to ask questions? Did you ever do that to any quarterbacks? Or is that something that's not really, like, talked about much and doesn't happen on the field? I mean, uh, there's a time and a place. Like, after a game, but this it's not a lot of, like, Q and A stuff. You're usually looking for, uh, for me. You're looking for uh, you know the opposing quarterback, and then maybe the defense coordinator or people you know on the staff, and then friends. You know, and then you're looking for your friends to catch up quickly. But it's all quick stuff. You know, it's it's uh, you know it's respect and and uh, well wishes, and then you know and then you move on. If you, if you see like you know a friend, you might stop and you know might grab. Uh, uh, Evan Siegel to take a picture or something, you know. It's like last week when seeing the, uh, you know, Tim Boyle and Jamal Williams and you know, Geronimo Allison, you know, that was definitely, uh, definitely wanted to to get a photo with some of those guys. Hmm. 
<laughs> so I thought Pat, you had something. Oh for... no, I do. Yeah, I actually. No, do. no, 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 I'll no, no. Because this, this, this is it. So, so talk. Oh, so, right. like, my thing was, who's somebody you look? Who did? Who did? Like, when you're fucking Aaron Rodgers, everybody talks about you, and I'm sure you have heard this. You've had to have heard this. Like, hey, this guy's the greatest ball thrower of all time. This guy is the reigning MVP. There's only a certain amount of people I assume that you can go to for any advice. And do you even have that person? When was the last time you had that? Like, we saw you and Tom Brady have a little relationship this offseason with the match happening and hanging. You guys had a nice little catch. I mean, you guys oh, had yeah. a good catch with each other. Like, is there right. people you. Is there people you could talk to? Is there people throughout your career you think that maybe we wouldn't know, like, hey, helped you out immensely with some tips or advice or anything like that? I think there's a lot of people for sure. I mean, you know, Steve Young has been a has been a friend and a, and a mentor for a long time, especially younger. When I was younger, I reached out to him, I think, after my second concussion in 2010. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to him to alleviate some of the fears I had around uh, around concussions and, and long-term health because I know he was a guy who sustained a number of concussions over his career and, uh, you know, had a bad one at the end of his career. So I reached out and he was fantastic. And since then, you know, we've kept in touch over the years and, and he's, uh, you know, been a great resource when I need him, um, but, but just also just kind of a supportive friend from afar. Um, you know, some other former quarterbacks that I keep in touch with, uh, from time to time as well. Obviously, Farby and I have uh, uh, become good friends uh, over the last few years, especially. Um, but yeah, it's kind of people reach out to me a little bit more, I guess, now than, than I reach out to them. No big it's deal. Fun. No big <laughs> deal. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. Yeah, people calling. Uh, it's cool to chat with people. Yeah. No big deal. Go ahead, Ty. Aaron, first and foremost, incredible game Sunday night. That was a lot of fun to watch. Something I'll, I'll remember that one for a while. Let's go. Yeah, that big, big win. Um, a lot of people were talking about how the, the first pass to Devontae on that last drive was something you guys came up with during the week in practice. Has that been common through your career? Like, can you think back to, like, these pivotal moments where it was something you guys put in the week prior to the game or the week of the game? Yeah, great question, Ty, as usual. Thank um, you. And a boy, Ty. For a long time in Green Bay, especially when Joe Philbin was around, we used to do this thing on Saturdays, and it was a – two minute uh, against ourselves. So it was the number one offense against um, a bunch of other offensive players, backups, and they would play as a defense. And over the years, it got very competitive. Um, Joe Philbin, uh, you know, got those guys running a bunch of crazy defenses and it turned into a, a period where we'd work on things, but it was, it was also kind of a bullshit period a little bit um, because we would do two drives, one drive with uh, you know, the normal guys playing in the second drive, all the skilled players would play the line and the line would play the skill positions and we'd go against them. So it was this big fun thing Saturdays, right? That got kind of outlawed uh, towards the end of Mike's time and, and Matt's time as people were worried about, you know, O-line getting hurt because they're running 50 yards down the field. Ridiculous, right? Um, just take away all the fun. But the reason I bring this up is because during that first drive, we would always work on certain plays. So I would, I would think about plays during the week that I wanted to either make up or see, or maybe something saw on film, or maybe something that I came up with based on another play, and implement them into that Saturday morning two-minute. And during that time, a lot of plays came out of, uh, of those things. I, the, the two most notable, I will say, that, that have helped us, one went all around the league, and that was... Um, that was a three-man side. Number three runs to the flat, and one and two block for him. So the two outside guys block for three runs to the flat. Everybody runs it now. It's a part of every offense. Um, that came up on the Saturday pre-practice, probably in 2011. The first time we ran in the game was in 2012 against Detroit. They played a lot of Tampa 2 in their two-minute, and I hit uh, uh, Jermichael on the right side, so I'd be going on their sideline. He broke tackle and went about 53 yards. It set us up for uh, the. It was the game-winning touchdown I threw to Randall on a on a corner route. But it was set up by that play that came up in this silly pre-practice Saturday morning two minutes. The other one is the genesis of the the dash protection, which came in handy in 2016 in a game I mentioned earlier against Dallas, where you know we it was third and 20. Um, we had taken a sack. I called timeout. We ran dash left. Lane Taylor leaked out and blocked uh, Durant, I think it was, and, and gave me enough time to fit the ball in the cookie. 
uh, on the sideline there that set up the game-winning field goal that Mason made twice, once when they called that out, and then the second time that I mentioned before. That protection and the genesis of it uh, came up on the Saturday morning pre practice as well. So it's sometimes these things that you don't think are that important and people might bullshit through where super impactful plays come out. And I've always taken that approach. Now, we don't do the Saturday morning two-minute anymore, uh, but during our two-minute drill, which is usually Thursdays, I will try and work on uh, different concepts. The initial concept that ended up working on Sunday night was the genesis was in the meeting that morning. Um, we all kind of put our heads together and came up with this uh, this play. Now, we adjusted it slightly based on the protection issues that we had, but all in all, it turned, turned into ran around the high corner, Devontae ran a deep end, and, and Mark Wells ran a post in the backside with the edges protected, thinking based on safety rotation, the coverage, I'd have a good chance of hitting somebody. Of course. Yeah, we thought so too. Like, it, it, whenever, whenever we were a part of that conversation with you guys, we were like, yeah, that makes sense. Everything you just said, that's going to work completely. Isn't that amazing, though, that whenever you get a bunch of people who know football and are on the same page, you can do shit like that and be like, yeah, we can all be on the same page, especially do it whenever we need it at the biggest moment. I mean, it's unfathomable, the football IQ that you super nerds have. It's unbelievable. Go ahead, AJ. Wait, you still have to be able to execute those plays that you come up with, but you ever watch other teams? Like, there's all these young guru hotshot play callers, like offensive play callers in the league. You ever watch other film and did you see, like, I would imagine you guys are picking other, like, you know, everyone recycles plays. Do you see stuff and bring it to the floor and bring it to different people? Say, hey, why don't we do, let's, let's jam this thing in the playbook this week? For sure. And that's the way the league goes. You look around, you look at some of the big plays, uh, and they all get transferred week to week. You know, you see somebody run something. Yeah, I'll give you this example. Week one, we're playing the Saints. They have a fourth and five on like the plus 40-ish going in. And what do they do? They run tight end screen back to the right after they motion the back out left. So what do we do the next week? We're playing Detroit. We got a second and 18. We motion the back out to the left and throw a screen to the right. To Bobby, he hits 22 yards for first down. Um, what did I see last night? I think it was Cowboys. Cowboys had the ball. Get back on track situation. They motioned by it was Pollard out to the left. They threw a screen back to the right. Guy gets you know a ton of yards, first down. That's the way this thing goes. Somebody sees something on film that worked, and everybody tries to to initiate into the game plan. There's a lot less uh, stable, maybe stable isn't the right word, but systems that are rigid in that this is what we're going to do every single week. And we don't, we know if we do what we do better, uh, then you can stop us. It's going to be very efficient. That's how the West Coast offense was. The West Coast offense was not a, you know, make things up. It was, it was not, it was not relying on scheme. It was relying on timing and rhythm, uh, and proper, uh, ball placement. Um, most of the offenses now are heavy scheme offenses. So, of course, they're going to steal from the latest fads and, and try and recycle plays if it fits in your scheme. What did Tom, Tom said it's getting, it's like dumbing down the game almost because it's the scheme making plays as opposed to the players having to do it. Do you, I, it sounds like you agree with that type of thing, right? Yeah, I definitely do. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's a scheme. And you know, listen, I think one thing that was interesting that Nick Saban said last night, because obviously I was watching Peyton and, uh, and Eli, and, and wishing that you'd been on there. Oh, thanks, uh, man. It's very nice. But I enjoy, I did enjoy, uh, you know, the guests they had, especially. I mean, I'm a big Chris Long fan, so I, I love having him on there. Oh yeah. He was and I know you're a fan as well. Um, he's a good man. But uh, but having Nick Saban on there, the one thing I thought was really interesting that he said was he was talking about college offenses and the fact that nobody huddles anymore. And I I think. You know, the, the college offenses have been impacting the NFL offenses so much because you're seeing uh, quarterbacks and centers, there's just so much less that they do now, you know, uh, from never being in a huddle to never having a live cadence to never making a check or a protection adjustment. The game has definitely changed in that respect. Uh, quarterbacks are asked to do a lot less, I think, now as far as check with me adjustments uh, and protection adjustment, understanding protections. It's, it's so much on is, you know, where's my one, where's my two, where's my three? Instead of, well, I break the huddle. Okay, what protection issues do I have on this play? 
um, what adjustments can I make within the protection, and then what what uh, subtle adjustments to the routes uh, do I need to make in case we get certain coverages? And everything's reactionary now, it feels like, right? Every read is like reactionary. And, and, and this is not every, I'm broad brushing here and I shouldn't do that with anything, but a lot of it is you just got like similar reads. And if you get these quarterbacks that are so good at it, and now Lamar Jackson is obviously just an alien, that guy, what he's able to do. But you can see why NFL offenses might want to implement it because it makes the game easier for their rookies and young quarterbacks that they're probably investing in and trying to turn over and everything like that. But long term, do you think it it'll be gone from the game? Do you think there will be a, a less cerebral game long term? Or do you think everything's like cyclical? Do you think somebody will still do like Sarkeesian's down there running an NFL offense in Texas? Arch Manning, I think, although he can run, is going to be a, a, a old school pro style quarterback, I think, with breaking down. Do you think that it, that it would leave the game because of how athletic everybody's becoming and how quick the game's becoming and how the hurry up is basically everything in the RPOs, the D line has no idea what to do. The running backs are, or linebackers don't. Do you think that'll, that'll become just everything later? Or do you think that the old school break down the defense, read the defense will always live? You think? I think, I think you're going to see more of that. I think the, a lot of the cyclical shifts are due to the rules as well. So if the rules continue to uh, limit physical contact, protect defenses, players, and quarterbacks. And uh, the defenses, players part, I think, is very important. But I think some of the hits on quarterbacks that are being called rough in the passer uh, make us way less a part of the physical nature of football that we grew up loving and, and enjoying and being a part of. And I think that's that's kind of a bummer. But you're seeing, you know, as the rules continue to change, uh, you're going to be seeing more college influences look at the rpo stuff and they're trying to crack down a little bit more in linemen downfield but uh but until these you know and, and also with the the cut rule i think has really uh adjusted some of the rpos because receivers you're not allowed to cut outside the, the tight end box now you know five yards on each side of last scrimmage um i believe so that has changed some of the rpo mindset where you can't just throw it out to the flat have two guys cut and now you got you know racing away from one guy. Now you got to body up a guy and, and be able to actually block a guy. It's, I think that's swung it back in the defensive favor, which is not exactly a bad thing based on the, all the rule changes that we've had over the, the last uh, half decade, decade. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Aaron, in your post-game interview, you were holding a football, and it kind of looked like one of the ones that Pat has on his desk where it was kind of half white. Was that a gift to you, or you were signing one for uh, some of the people in the stands? I take that ball everywhere with me. That's a really special one. Smart. Yeah. Smart. No, that was, that was an NBC Sunday Night Football uh, player of the game uh, panel. Oh, nice. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, they uh, – yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I – Oh, you have too fucking many of them. This guy. Yeah. I went over – I went over to – It doesn't have my name on it. It doesn't have my name on it. Yeah, you know, it's like – that, that might have been one to throw in the stands, but uh, <laughs> but I kept it. I did, I did keep it. I definitely kept it. I do appreciate. I do appreciate the nod. Very, very nice recognition for sure, and then a good memory. Um, game balls used to be a lot more prevalent. I think as far as the ones that the team give out. I remember, you know, we'd be we gave out a lot of game balls um, in in Green Bay. Every Friday was kind of game ball Friday, so that. Uh, there'd be offensive guys, defensive guys, special teams guys, special recognition balls, and other things, shirts, baseball bat. You know, who knows? We had a lot of we had a lot of awards. AJ knows we had a lot of awards over the years, and that was fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, you know, behind me, I got a couple. I don't know if you can see that's my neck killing me. So I can't really turn my neck very far. But are you okay? Yeah, but I got a couple game balls back here on the shelf. I got one from. Uh, it's a 50,000-yard ball that they gave me last year. So. What do they do? What do they do? That's so far, dude. That is so far. You know, 150,000 feet, bro. Good for you, man. Hey, uh, what's up with your neck? Are you all right? I was about to say, how's the body feel? I was going to ask about the arm because the arm is always in question because that is what you are so prolific at. How's the arm feel? How's the body feel? You can't even turn around and stare at your trophies. Is everything okay? I mean, what the fuck is going on? Are we all right? Yeah, the arm is fine. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. It was a great reminder for me that even when something seems like a good idea, 
might not be in the moment. I threw a pass. I kind of double clutched the pass. I was trying to get the ball out to the flat. Both had knocked up in the air. And the ball was just up there floating. I was thinking, oh, yeah. well, it'll be good. I wasn't thinking the right thing. The right thing would have been, knock this shit down. <laughs> but I was thinking, ooh, I could catch this and maybe get some yards. <laughs> so I caught that thing, took about one step and got ear hold. And uh, <laughs> my neck... Uh, my neck is definitely a little locked up. Now, big, big shout out to uh, shout out to, to Doctor Zoli. Um, for years, we didn't travel. People trying to call me. They don't know it's fucking McAfee too. <laughs> yeah, Please. what's the deal? <laughs> Come on, dude, we're getting a medical <laughs> break done. I'm in the middle of a story. Call when AJ's talking. <laughs> uh, no, but a big shout out to to Doctor Zoli for. Uh, give me a little crack at halftime. Shout out. But, uh, yeah, next a little sore from that. Uh, good reminder. Don't catch the ball. Knock it down. Just let it yeah. bounce. You're not built You know, you're not built for that. Nobody's built to take those shots. But uh, since you already spit in Collins' face, look, yeah. basically, you know you did with the ball, the, the game ball thing you're going to throw out in the stands. We're on to Pittsburgh now, right? I don't know if you know this, but Diggs has a great theory on what's going on in Pittsburgh. I don't know if he'll share it with you maybe in a little bit. But what do they look like, man? We don't know. Week one, they were – Getting after the quarterback like gangbusters, looking great, and now we're not really sure what they're doing. What's your deal? What's your deal? How do they look, man? What's the game plan look the, like? Am I going to hear the theory first? Oh, no! no. Yeah. 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 I can yeah. tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, please, Diggs. Uh, th- once again, the opinions expressed by the COVID cowboy do not reflect that of his peers, employer, or Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah. Aaron, and Aaron, I don't need a reaction from you on the theory. I just think that... Since Ben Roethlisberger has found Jesus, his his play has seemed to decline a little bit, and I'm not blaming Jesus. I'm ah, just well, I'm just connecting well. dots here. That's a theory that AJ wanted you to hear. I don't need you to comment on that. Just a good luck this weekend, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> what? It goes many layers deeper than yeah, that. Yeah, there's way more. <laughs> Keep on going, Tony. No, no, that's good. Nobody uh, wants we, to hear we, that on we, air. We don't need any bulletin board material, all right? That's right. We don't need right. any of that. But Steelers defense is obviously one that is always going to be good. Your thoughts going into the weekend? Have you started preparation? And, you know, just city of Pittsburgh as a whole, do you have any feelings about that? Uh, yes, I've been around a lot of Pittsburgh people over the years. And I have loved my time with all of them. I've learned to speak the language really well, which has actually allowed me to uh, to follow and become a big fan of Pittsburgh Dad. If you haven't seen (laughs) Twitter, uh, big shout out! Um, Some incredible, incredible, incredible videos um, that for someone, if you whether you you live in Pittsburgh, you live in Pennsylvania, you know somebody from Pittsburgh. You just you appreciate the videos so much because you know people who talk like that, who uh, you know enunciate like that, and uh, you know that was my most of my career with Mike in the headset. You know, was trying to figure out what the hell he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to dice right downer. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I didn't even think about that. That's amazing. But it's a great, you know, it's a great blue collar town. There's a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of great people that live there. It's got a lot of history, that city. Um, Mike Tomlin, you know, been there forever. One of the – is he second longest tenured head coach in the league after Bill? I believe so, yeah. Second or yes. third, yeah. Pete Carroll, uh, no. Peyton. No, Sean Payton? Uh, but I have a ton of respect for Mike. I think he's a fantastic coach. I think he's – I love the way that he leads. I love the way he talks after the games. He always seems to keep things, uh, you know, really even keeled. And you know, it looks like he's somebody that the players players love playing for him. So they, you know, they've had a great defense. It's been a part of Pittsburgh, uh, the franchise for a long, long time. Is is uh, is great defense. They lost a couple guys uh, in the off season, but um, but I don't know. I mean, it, there's there's anomaly games. This is early in the season. We you know we're you guys are overreacting on Mondays, and people are crowning you know. MVPs and offensive players of the year, defense player of the year for a long time. Um, you know, TJ had you know, TJ got hurt in week two against the Raiders and then didn't play this last week. Uh, he's you know one of the top, I don't know, can I say two or three at the most uh, defensive players in the league. So having him back is total game changer. 
uh, if he comes back this week, which I'm expecting him to. So, um, you know, and they're they're one and two right now. I'm coming off a tough divisional loss. Um, you know, that seems like a dangerous football team, so we're going to be ready to go. Okay, and you guys are obviously a buzzsaw coming out of Santa Clara. I can't wait to watch that game. Last question for you here on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday before we debut the new book for the Aaron Rodgers Book Club. You said, how could you not be romantic about football? You don't just say something like that without having thought about it in the past. What did you mean by that? And is it because just how great the game is? Is that why you said that? Or how have you thought to that point of about how romantic, how you get romantic about football? I've never heard that word used, I don't think, to describe football by anybody. So I'm excited to hear why you chose to use that word. Well, that, that was definitely spur of the moment, but it was something that I thought about. I was watching uh, Moneyball nice. the other day. And great movie uh, with, uh, with Brad Pitt. I mean, how about Billy Bean? You know, you, you joke with your buddies sometimes you're sitting around like, who would you want to play you in a movie? And Billy's like, yeah, oh, fucking uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a pretty good deal, right? Uh, and what about Jonah Hill? Yeah, and, and, and Jonah as well. I'm not sure if the other guy, you know, the guy. Fucking Jonah, huh? More than Brad Pitt. That was the whole thing. Uh, we don't need to bury Jonah, okay, to no. put over Brad Pitt, AJ. Just, Asshole, let him finish. He's a great his... actor. as a compliment, bro. I, I, settle down. I agree, but what, I mean, I love Jonah. You ever Hill. seen War Dogs? Hey, you yeah, ever seen I Accepted, dude? You ever seen him in Accepted? Ooh. He's fucking awesome. Ask me about Sorry, but anyways, go ahead. What were they asking him about? Oh, the romantic about football. You're watching. Uh... What were they asking Jonah Hill about in Accepted? I can't Oh, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, well, you do remember. I mean, yeah, we, can go, yeah, we can go, we can go. All right, yeah. Jonah's fucking awesome. Buddy. We've totally lost track, man. We're just all over. Yeah, you can be romantic about comedy as well, I guess. But football <laughs> is something that I didn't expect to hear that from you. And it was, I feel like. At uh, the end of the movie, right? At the end of the movie, you know, Billy Bean has gone to, to Boston to, you know, he gets offered the GM job, right? And he's coming back and he's disappointed. They lost in the first round of the playoffs. And after everything, you know, they won with 22 straight or 23 straight. Uh, you know, after, you know, they didn't implement what he was trying to do. And then he traded a bunch of players away and you know, all the stuff that happened. And basically the last scene is Jonah showing him a clip uh, of, you know, uh, a player in their farm league thinking that he, you know, he was trying to get the second on a double and slid back in the first, and the whole thing is he just hit a home run. He had no idea he'd hit a home run, you know, because he was so scared about um, about getting out. And the, what hits him in the moment, what hits you as a viewer in the moment, is perspective and how important perspective is in life. And you will be affected, your attitude-wise, your focus, your happiness, by what you focus on. So if you focus on what you don't have all the time, you'll always be in a state of disappointment and dissatisfaction. If you focus on the amazing things in your life all around you at all times, hmm. that should definitely, in my opinion, lead to a happier life because you're never thinking about what you don't have. You're counting your blessings about the amazing things that you do have in your life. Hmm. And I said that not just as a metaphor, because I love football um, and I love nights like that. But the metaphor in it is that if we focus on the blessings and the amazing things going around, going on around us at all times. Naturally, our life is going to be more full of love and happiness and joy. And um, just it kind of hit me in the moment. It was perfect timing for that comment. Yeah, I think so too. And as soon as I heard it, damn! All right. And then the internet did the same thing. And uh, I think we're at a perfect time right now for the world to come full circle and me to count my blessings that I'm reading all these goddamn books. Hell yeah! I mean, I'm not the only one, Aaron. Okay, I'm not the only one, AJ, that maybe had never you know, thought about reading a book again, you know, or maybe even having a book in our lives now that the internet exists and other things like that. But this Aaron Rodgers book club has got me back into the books and into the pages and turning the pages. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is time, I believe, for the fourth installment of the Aaron Rodgers book club. Drum roll, please. The first one was Alchemist. The second one, Where Men Win Glory. The third book was The Giver, a beautiful book about perspective. This week's book in the Aaron Rodgers Book Club will be... Chuck Norris Can't Be Stopped. Yeah! 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 
Oh, no, that's not it, actually. That's not it. <laughs> I found this book on the shelf, though. Uh, it has a 400 uh, all new facts about the man who knows neither fear nor mercy. So that's uh, an honorary uh, title that will add to it. But, uh, you know, in, in full transparency, the book that I wanted for week four, I could not find in the entire house. So I don't know if. Uh, oh, no. we, we can Google if, it. Uh, so no, no, no. So that'll I'll find it for another week down the line. It's a fantastic book. It'll be in the in that spot. But I just I bumped up the week five book, uh, or, you know, or the the fourth, the fifth book to the fourth book, and this is a book that was really important to me in my uh, early journey into the idea of spirituality and, and um, wanting to uh, to better myself. And I'd heard of Ram Dass before. Uh, people talk about Ram Dass and some of his quotes and philosophy, um, but I didn't know his story and until I read uh, Be Here Now. Let me hold this up here. Oh. oh. Can you see that whole thing? Yeah, remember, 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 remember. Yeah, well, that's not the, the that's, you remember to be here now is the whole point. Uh, but it's a story of, uh, of Richard Alpert, um, who was a professor in the 70s and he was trying to this is not really a, a spoiler alert he was trying to uh, figure out kind of the meaning of life and him and somebody started doing some uh, some LSD right and good way to find out I've and their that. whole life perspective kind of changed uh, but you know long story short he goes over to India and uh, realizes that they have something over there this peace, this understanding, without ever taking any type of hallucinogen, uh, you know, uh, anything. And he wants that. Um, he wants that presence, that calmness, that enlightenment that he sees in these people who don't need to take uh, any stimuli to get there. Huh. And it's a good intro book, uh, I think, for anybody interested in uh, needing inspiration on their journey. Uh, to a new type of spirituality, uh, some incredible quotes in here, and, and a book that uh, that really meant a lot to me. Ram Dass actually passed away a couple years ago. Not Ram, no, now, no. Maybe not even two years ago now, but uh, there's a great documentary about him that's out there, and um, you know people that love him and his foundation still puts up a lot of great uh, inspirational quotes and, and stuff. Uh, uh, on Instagram and, and social media. I wanted to have a moment of silence for Ram Dass there, but you were in the middle of your sentence, so I felt bad. And AJ, and I mean, I felt like I disrespected the man. Cannot wait to read the book. Remember, be here now. Be where your feet are. Let's live a little, huh? Let's let's appreciate life a little bit more. And I can't thank you enough for uh, reminding me to read The Giver again, you know, last week. And I can't wait to get into Ram Dass's here. Remember, be here now, dude. This is awesome. <laughs> Okay, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait. I, I just hope you read, you know, whatever it is. I don't know when your off season is because you hustle so much. You don't have to take a damn day off. But Thank you. Thank you. I just hope at some point you read one of those books or your wife reads it to you in bed, you know, when you're having your pillow talk or something, just so you can, you, you know. You can digest it more than than Connor's, you know, clip notes. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Connor, I mean, the giver I read in fifth grade or whatever. So I mean, that was easy to pull. And then, obviously, the alchemist. My wife, big time reader, though. Maybe that is how I get into this thing through her beautiful voice and your incredible recommendations, sir. I can't thank you enough for joining us. Good luck this weekend against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, and enjoy the hell to your Tuesday, man. Let's loosen up that neck a little bit, you know. Ooh, I'll try, man. I'll try. And keep playing guitar, too. That was really inspirational. Hey, you, wanna, hey, you want to play something? You want to play something right here? Yeah, play a duet, guys. Come yeah, on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, play a little something on the outro, right? Uh, yeah. Recreate that sweet Fox uh, Fox Sports interview. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we, on right. the beach. Here we go. All right, ready? Hey, play, jump, hey, play Jumper. You got to sing it. Oh! I almost showed his screen, too, huh? That was your fault, AJ. AJ, hey, if you would have just shut lot, up, AJ. we could have had a fucking duet, dude. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, he was definitely going to play and sing. He was. Well, until you brought up that commercial. Jeez. You ever heard, have you ever heard him play and sing? He'll do it. He does it. I listened to that. I watched that one piece that he did on the beach or whatever. He's pretty good. I wish I was there at that open mic night. They got oh. booed. Oh, man. That would have been insane. Brought yeah. the house down. All right, we have to get to a break. Like, actually have to right now. We'll be back on the other side to chit-chat about everything that happened there with Aaron. He said a lot of words. Mm -hmm. 
put over Pittsburgh pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. seems like he's going there next year. Okay, so there, Diggs once again planning for the future with a new quarterback. Wow. This is the second quarterback in less than 24 hours that he has proclaimed going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That should be a little bit of a sign of worry maybe for the Pittsburgh Steelers fan base. I'm not 100% sure. AJ? Well, Diggs, I, I bet Diggs is a bit worried when he heard Aaron talk about spirituality. He's like, well, maybe I don't want him. All right. Oh. All right, we're back in four minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Today's event is me versus a Carolina Reaper pepper. A pepper that has what? 2.2 million Scoville uh, on average. I think it's, it's pretty much the hottest pepper in the world. In comparison, a jalapeno is? 6,000 Scoville. For every second after it is in my mouth, I don't grab this milk. Yeah. We'll give $25 to a random person in the comments section right now. $4,500 feels like a good amount to give away though. And that'd three be three minutes. This is gonna be a long three minutes. That's redder than devil's dick. <laughs> that crunch. How are we, how are we doing so far? It doesn't look too bad. I should have taken a drink of water beforehand though, because I think I had a dry mouth, had a little cotton mouth. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, once the hiccups start, <laughs> I, think I think you're just about done for. What's your biggest regret in life? Do, do you have two more minutes in you? Oh, I think it's just starting to hit like the peak. The curve on this thing is just starting to go up. You are handling this much better than Bill did, though. You are, yeah. Billy Tubes was puking 10 seconds in. 130. 130. It's better my esophagus. Do you feel like you're going to puke? And that milk looks ice cold, too. No! Ah, hey, one more, one more. <laughs> yep, now we go, now we go! Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! <laughs> How you feel now? A little bit better, but not great. Oh, God. That's a bad idea. I need more. I need more milk. I need more. Oh, God, bro. You know, it's just like EA Sports yeah. is oh, in the game. Oh, We're the only media outlet that does not have a deal with them. Like, we don't get free codes. Nope. I'm not even in the fucking game. Mm -hmm. They've asked me to do it. I've said no. I don't want to be a part of it. I mean, that is legit because I've never played, to be honest. I am not Smart. good at it. But we're the only ones. Yeah, you guys have played. There's a lot of guys in here that have played. A lot of fans have called in and played. We're the only ones that aren't really on an EA Madden payroll at yeah. this point. So it's okay for us to come out and say, like, hey, Y'all need to stop fucking over your fans. Like, mm -hmm. You need to help them. I feel like that's a good thing of this show. is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday wrapping up here on Sirius XM. Probably a lot to chit chat about in the after hours show at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. A lot happened there with Aaron Rodgers. AJ Hawk, your big takeaway from the conversation with that, sir? I don't, he seems to be in a good spot, right? Seems to be happy. Seems to be 
love football as much as he ever has. So, yeah, it looks good for the Packers. Yeah, it looks like he's very comfortable, very happy. Be here now. Neck's a little sore. A little bit. Hey, neck's a little sore, but he wouldn't be talking about the way he's talking about it if he thought it was going to be a problem at all. Bingo. So that's kind of how we have to read. I mean, who knows what the conversation will be tomorrow around the sports world about what Aaron said today. I'm excited to hear what they hate him for today. I think him not playing the guitar is probably wild. Yeah, hanging up early. He's selfish. Doesn't care about, you know, teammates. Aaron Rodgers said he created two plays. I think that'll be a conversation uh, potentially. How about that? I just love the fact that on that Saturday with Joe Philbin, who's a legend of a human, they're like, let's try this. We got a we got skill position here. Let's see if we can run him a little bit here. And then mm. that, that whole thing just leads to something. It's ridiculous. What a what a cool it, he breaks down the the two kicks from Mason Crosby from two thousand what seven eleven whatever yeah. the hell it was. Seven. Unbelievable. Seven. I think I hit a cookie. I think I hit cookie right there. He said that's that brain is absurd. AJ Hawk. Yeah, his recall, he's Rain Man with that recall. It's unbelievable. Yeah, like how, how far back does it go? It probably goes back like third grade, like throws he made. Oh, you know, it was on the right hash, you know, it was third and six, so I had to really get some loft. Oh, yeah, he probably can go back that far. Hey, last year he told us in the middle of the season at one point that somebody showed a coverage that he remembered from his rookie year, his first year playing or second year playing. He yep. was like, oh, yeah, somebody showed this one, and I remembered from like my second year when I was playing, somebody did it. I'm like, you fucking maniac. You psychopath. Because that's at what, one play in the middle of a game that has like 55, 60 plays? <laughs> yeah. That's one coverage that he saw. <laughs> Quarterbacks are a different level, man. They're a different fucking level. A big shout out to Aaron Rodgers. Let's continue to win this thing, huh, Ty? Yeah, here we go, boys. Here we go. How do you feel about it, Ty, after listening to him speak? You feel more comfortable than ever? Oh, yeah, I feel great. Never, never felt bad to begin with. I mean, you know, you know that people are going to shit on him after that opening week against the Saints. But, hey, last night, I mean, or Sunday night, galvanizing victory for the whole team. Not that they didn't believe it, but it kind of just further emphasizes like hey they're gonna be fine and if you're a pittsburgh steelers fan you gotta appreciate the amount of appreciation he has for the city of pittsburgh ain't that right Diggs? i mean if he's already following pittsburgh dad he's already got one foot out the door and one foot in oh, the shut already. up speaking in glowing terms about the city what are you guys doing right now you guys hey Rob, he's been on that Scott's. pittsburgh dad for years hey pittsburgh dad we've that is, and he said, he, that because if you know any Pittsburgh, I bet you Big Mike McCarthy is so similar to Pittsburgh Dad, it, it's filthy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Pittsburgh Dad is so good because of how accurate and how hilarious, obviously, he is, the timing, everything like that. But that everybody in Pittsburgh knows somebody like that, or their dad is directly like that person. It is fantastic. <laughs> Turner's iced tea, too. He'd probably love. Oh, mm. sure. Oh, I couldn't even wow. imagine the icy, like, Mongo in oh. Pittsburgh. Oh, Manny's. Oh, Rudy Subs. Oh, all right, a show much better than ours is on the other side of this six-minute break. We'll be back tomorrow with a Coach Em Up Wednesday. Is that JB? Come on. It's Chuck McGon. JB's on Feel Good Friday. I thought it was Coach Em Up Chuck Wednesday. Yeah, I might have talked to Chuck out of it, though. I don't know. Just because also we were running out of seconds on the clock. I noticed it was a three... Yeah. You know, so instead of taking a pump fake and putting Chuck up in there, get it up. I just got it up. Yeah. You know, it wasn't it wasn't balanced. I was off balance. Yep. I, it wasn't perfect form going out, but I saw the clock, and right before the red button or the red light lit up, the ball got out. So I think if I would have added Chuck, probably calling Count. it back. There's still yeah. a bucket. Probably calling it back. It was. It did go in, but it wasn't mm-hmm. as good. It is coach us up, Chuck Wednesday. Good move. I just for some reason. A couple, like 10 minutes ago, I started laughing in my brain. I didn't laugh out loud, thinking of you doing the little Carson Wentz double ankle sprain like thing, <laughs> doing your little shuffle. I don't know why it made me laugh. That's what he looked like, dude. I, I was watching him just so bummed out. I'm like, yes, God. Because you know how that feels, though. You know how yes. it feels when you have a bum ankle and you're trying to, like, okay, I can't come. Oh, here we go. Everything's super ginger. Yeah, because the way the ankle is set up, you know, it's a joint. You know what I mean? They say mm. this is the ankle joint here. It's going to the okay. foot down here, and this is your thing. You know, and when they got that thing taped up, it's so it's stable. You know what I mean? So it's stable. So they tape that thing so it's directly in line. As soon as you get off a little bit, as soon as the balance gets off a little bit, that's where the pain and the irritation happens. That's why they're locking that thing, trying not to move it. So you literally have to run like you're on stilts, especially if you have, and I can't stress this enough, two sprained ankles (laughs) from one play. This guy's a psychopath, dude. He's like, he's a maniac.
He's still running around, flying around, but I appreciate you enjoying that. I do appreciate that. It means a lot. I enjoyed it as well for a little bit. I enjoyed it for yeah, a Yeah, it came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere at me. For some reason, it keeps popping up in my head. SeatGeek is a sponsor of today's show, and oh, we yeah. got a special promo for you all. Something they've never done before this particular promo had run. For years, we've been asking SeatGeek to do this, and today they have finally come through. And it's because this SeatGeek company is at a brand new chapter. This SeatGeek company is at a brand new altitude, surviving a world life event stoppage for 18 months they're on the other side of it with a fresh new logo Ooh, and a yeah. beautiful new mindset to take care of their customers so if you're not a first time user if you've shopped with SeatGeek before this does not matter if you have never shopped with uh, SeatGeek before this does not matter this is good for everybody wow yeah. everybody everybody in honor of football being all the way back they gave us a special link that gives you 15% off all football tickets whether you're a first time buyer or not this is good for for everybody. everybody. No code, just click the link in the description uh, of this particular video on YouTube and 15% off code will be auto applied to your account. Doesn't matter if you've purchased on SeatGeek before, we have no idea how long it's going to off uh, this offer is going to last. Wow. It's been going pretty good. That's yeah, a great uh -huh. deal. Yeah, a lot of tickets moving, I guess. I get tickets to anything, right? Concerts, all that? Yeah, they have tickets to everything. But right now, 15% off all football tickets with the link. But yes, if it is a ticketed event, SeatGeek probably has the ticket. And they also rank them. They rank them yeah. for you, whether or not you're getting fucked. Or not. That's yep. cool. Which is very nice of them. That's you know cool. what I mean? Green means good, red means bad. Hey, you're getting fucked on this particular ticket, but it is the only one that's available, and there's no other prices out there. So what do you want from us? So that's very yeah, nice of them. Bieber, I heard Bieber's coming to Columbus in the spring, so I'm going to have to use SeatGeek. See what kind sick. of tickets I can get. Yeah, they'll be able to hook you up for sure. They'll have great tickets. I mean, it'll be if it's green, it means you're getting a good ticket. Mm -hmm. You're getting a good deal. And they don't catfish you either. You're not going to buy a fake Biebs ticket. You're not going to get catfish Bieb tickets. No, you're going to get actual tickets. That's what SeatGeek does. Thank you, Where's Manti Teo? Catfish. Is he playing for somebody? I thought he was, so he was, I said the word catfish. Yeah. yeah. And your brain didn't go to Nev. Shout out. That would have been the first one for everybody. Is the guy that, you know, either got his I heart. didn't see much of that, but yeah. Okay. Was, but Manti Teo, I mean, that was quite a – he was on the Saints the last I remember. Yep. Yeah. I He's a free he was, agent right now. Yeah, he was on the Bears practice squad last year. I, I thought, thought he was done. trying to play. No, that guy's a football player. Yeah. Oh. Most decorated linebacker in college football history. Wow, I know. Damn near won the Heisman. Yeah, he's a good football player. Yeah, great football player. What do you mean? He was so focused on football at college that he didn't have time to go out and socialize and maybe investigate everything that was going on in his life. It was uh, football, 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 mm -hmm. then academics, then obviously at Notre Dame, Lord, mm -hmm. and then his social life. And he got caught there, and it became a pretty big story. Yeah. Pretty, pretty big story. Pretty pretty tough. Tough. He rebounded fine, though. Like, he came in the league and was all right. Like, yeah. nothing. I, I mean, I don't think he ever did an interview. His teammates liked him. Uh, has he ever done an interview that was like an actual real interview as opposed to like the I had my heart broken. He did, by the way. You ever yeah. watch Catfish? He, he had to sit down. I, th I think he had to sit down after it, didn't he, with one of those like well, that's you know, what, media personalities? That's what I'm saying, though. I think it was a Tom Rinaldi piece. Yeah, I think it was. No. What? That would be Tom. I have nothing but the utmost respect for Tom Rinaldi. Please. I think it was like a Barbara Walters type thing. Wasn't it? Yeah. it was oh, like an E60. Yeah, it was. It was, By the way, it wasn't Barbara Walters. Shout out to Barbara Walters. Shout, Shout out. out. Shout out. Barbara Walters. Love you, Barb. Crushing it. Need Always. You, Barb. Yeah, crushing it. Absolutely. Barbara Walters, fucking legend, obviously. But yes. I think it was one of those types of sit downs. I think. I remember him like uh, sitting down. Oh, yeah. Very uncomfortable, very awkward. And he said just like everything, you know, he was still in the moment. I would like to hear him looking back on it now. What? You know, well, he's married now, too. Like, yeah, that, uh, yeah I'm sure he doesn't really? want to have to keep bringing it up, but yeah. Think about his, his next girlfriend. She had to be oh, so pumped. Yeah. Definitely met her first somewhere. <laughs> You think, I would assume what, so. She had to be, why did you do that sound? She had to be so happy. Like, oh, Wait, this why? guy's ex is uh, something that it didn't even, it wasn't even real. Yeah, I have true. to be better than the ex, right? I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that is part of it. But then <laughs> part of it, too, is like, oh, this guy might be the most gullible guy on the face of the earth. Oh, no, you so, so so focused on football. Did you not hear what I just said? You so football, 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 well, football. Yeah, I know, but I think they put it to bed because they were like, you didn't actually think you were dating Scarlett Johansson, did you? Like, didn't uh, you look into it at all? And I realized, did. Like, His oh, interview was man. with Jer Jeremy Schapp. Yeah, yeah. Outside, of outside of lines. I remember it being very serious. He married a son. fellow cafe, uh, catfishy, I'm pretty sure. Oh, he also, oh, did. Uh, he also sure. did one with Katie Kirk, too. Ooh. Really? The Today Show. That's what I'm talking about. What did he say? About. He just basically. I love Kakua. He was devastated. <laughs> what? It was just all the. It was, I don't. That was her name. Was that actually her name? Mm hmm. Who was actually doing it, though? Somebody. somebody uh, I heard was a doing the catfish. this morning mm -hmm. about names. How, it was. Who knows? I caught a catfish trying to get me. Have you? I've told you that. How? No, how? I just, 
the person was way too, way too, to be talking to me. I mean, I was like, I was the low man on totem pole punter. The person, the picture, the people that she was interacting with allegedly, like I'm way too low. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. Like, there's no reason you should be saying the things you're saying to me. But they, hey, they had me for a little bit. The first half they had me. You know what I mean? The first mm -hmm. half they had me. You know, on the on Twitter DMs, and then literally, I had, I mean, I had a dream one night, and uh, I was uh, running through an airport. And I asked somebody to use their phone, and it was a large, fat, hairy man. And uh, I asked to use his phone, and he gave me his phone, and it, her, uh, the, her account was on his phone. And I was like, I, I woke up, literally, I knew it. And I, uh, I sent her this well-crafted DM that basically said, when you write your book about you catfishing people and stuff, I would like a chapter dedicated to me. You're a fucking fugaze, dude. And it was like, <laughs> it was like probably, you know, like, we had like a send, a send, a send, a send. And then that was the end of it. I was like, I caught you. I fucking caught you. And I was so proud of myself. I got blocked immediately. Oh, they didn't respond? No, no response. No, not even a recognition. Like, I was almost like Roman. Like, acknowledge me, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. hey, acknowledge me. Because I saw some other people that were tweeting with her. And I was like, it kind of got me going a little bit. Then I was like, nah, it's not. And then it was a catfish inevitably. Did, yeah. you, did you think about sending dick pics? What's that? Were you close? No, no, I've never sent a me tweet, pal. Anyway, Tony uh, was wrong with the name. It was uh, Megan and her real name was Angela. That's okay. not true. Kakua? <laughs> that's not true. Kakua. Yeah, Zito, that's not. Yeah. What happened to the girl that catfished Nev? All right, so that's not. Yeah. That's not who we're talking about. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Lene Kakua. Thank you. Tony. Wow. Yeah, Tony. Lene, Good Lene, pull. you're right. Lene, I do remember Lene. I, I, the fact that you did not remember Lene and you remembered Kakua <laughs> is amazing. That yeah, is amazing. That's a wild world, though. A lot of athletes, I think, get got. I had a couple teammates that got got in Indiana, I think. You know, because you travel. Like, actually, like, meet up? It's, it, do you actually, like, meet up with a person or just, like, online? Yeah, I think it's just online. I, I don't know if anybody's ever gone. I think I, I, I do take that back. I do remember hearing quite a tale on a Saturday morning walkthrough of some of our younger guys potentially going to meet what they thought was going to be a group. <laughs> and it was not what they had expected in the way that the story was told on their end. It was mm. a much different uh, group of people, I guess, although they did meet with a group of people. It wasn't the exact group that they expected. So I think maybe there is a little bit, but with the Internet, man, like any time we get a caller, for instance, this is Drake in West Palm Beach. Who the fuck knows? If this is Drake, I literally say that every single time. Who knows if this is Drake in West Palm Beach? We assume it is because Drake in West Palm Beach doesn't fuck around. No, 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 no when no, Drake no. calls into the show on the five hour energy line, we assume it's him, but who knows? West Palm Beach. Drake, Drake what's going on? Yes, what side of the bridge? That's a good question. Uh oh. What side of the bridge, Drake? I don't know. Hey, we're on the, uh, we're on the inland side of the bridge That's here. Okay. okay. So he says. Uh, yeah, we don't know. We don't know, but that is the right answer. Drake, <laughs> so far, one for one, if he was to be. Drake in West Palm Beach, that's what we would hope to hear. Because mm -hmm. nobody on that island is listening to us, by the way. Have you seen those houses over there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there ain't nobody listening to this show. Anyways, Drake, what's going on, pal? What do you want to talk about? Hey, uh, not much. I just wanted to appreciate uh, you guys. And, uh, you know, um, you know, yesterday uh, you had a bad call from a Raiders fan. And, you know, I hated to see it because I'm a Raiders fan myself. So I just wanted to give you guys uh, some love and uh, thank you for all that you do. And speaking of the Raiders, Thank last you. time they went 3-0 and was 19 years ago. So are they going back to the Super Bowl? Okay, I like that, Drake. Thanks for the call. Go Raiders, huh? huh. Raiders. Raiders. Raiders hey, go up. Raiders, huh? They lost right, in the Super Bowl to John Gruden that year. Yep. Or down in Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now they got John Gruden. Mm -hmm. Different story. Different story. Got the guy. Uh, the Raiders. Oh. 3-0 and next opponents, the Chargers, on Monday night football. Ooh. I mean, that's going to be a game there. But that AFC West, if they – I mean, it's murderer's road, just like the NFC West. I mean, it is going to be very difficult to make it out of there. And I think that is why there isn't as much Raiders talk as there probably should be, especially with the loyalty of the fan base and how big it is and how they are 3-0. and I think everybody that does sports talk is just like, oh, that's Chiefs division. Yeah. Like, what are, we, what are we even doing? That's Chiefs division. That's the only conversation. And the Raiders deserve a much bigger convo, I think, even by shows. Like, I'll, I've been attacked by numerous Raiders fans for good reason, I guess. I mean, I observe and fucking report. Yeah, I don't know which one's right. for me. But I think that is potentially why the conversation doesn't happen. I feel like we say that every time somebody tells us there isn't enough Raiders conversation, though. Yeah, the Raiders, I, I, I give them credit. I give Derek Carr a lot of credit, but I think people don't trust them. Like, they just think, all right, well, 
at some point this year, like things are going to fall apart. That's how people feel. I need, I know some diehard Raider fans that are very happy right now, but they're also scared and have anxiety at the same time. Like, oh man, let's, let's just see it one more week. Let's just keep winning somehow. The AFC West, they are the sports books who let's assume they know something every once in a while. They're making a lot of money on a regular mm. basis, not from people that listen to this show or hammered down, obviously, mm. but from other people that don't. They have the worst odds to win the AFC West. And it's like, I'm not happy about it. Hey, I don't like it. The Chiefs are one and two. They're currently still the favorites. But I just think it's what do you say? Don't anybody trust them? What, what happens? And also knowing what the Chiefs have on their roster and they're adding Josh Gordon. I think it's tough. It's just tough. It's not fair. I don't like it. That new stadium in Las Vegas is awesome. New home. Team seems to be flying around. Love. Love. The tight end, Darren Waller. Love him. Mm-hmm. Love him. I was trying to think of his rap name. Oh. D Wall. Is that what it, it is? Is, is it just D Wall? I think so. Hank Ruggs is starting to play out there, too. Yeah. I mean, they are a team, but I think this is how everybody feels. Like, are you? I mean, you're in the Chiefs fucking division. Hey, Gruden should use it. Gruden should take that that slide, put it in his PowerPoint deck in the morning. So, hey, guys, that no one believes in us. Look, we're. Our odds are last to win our division. Are you kidding me? And then he says, knock on wood if you're with me, man. (laughs) Hey, they're not with us, but you knock on wood if you are with me, man. They're knocking. And then he looks around and he sees uh, Mark Davis not knocking. And he's like, what the fuck's going on? And Mark's like, oh, I had to okay uh, a wing on my house that I just built in last week. Talking to the IRS. Yeah, sorry. sorry. And we got the IRS issues. I would knock, but right now the IRS is is knocking. What's that? Is there anybody else to pass the Raiders down for Mark Davis? Who gets it after him? Gruden. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. I think he goes to Gruden. Do Gruden, the strength coach. Yes. I think so. Uh, let's finish up these phone calls. Reed in Dallas, what's up, dude? Yo. Yo. How are y'all doing? Hey, not too shabby. Congrats to the Dallas Cowboys down there, Reed. What do you want to talk about, man? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I fucking love this show, guys. Oh, this show stinks. You know, what a dream scenario would be to work in that atmosphere. But having said that, this question actually goes out to A.J. Hawk. Give me your number, Pat. I'm, uh, I'm one of those guys that watches a lot of sports clips on YouTube, and one of them popped up on, uh, on YouTube today. And it was uh, back in 2011 against the New Orleans Saints where uh, A.J. Hawk jumps over uh, Darren Sproles back, who's four feet tall and six-inch heels, hits the ball before he even hits the receiver and then gets called for pass interference. So I want to know what was going through his head whenever he finds out the pass interference was on him. Hey, Reed, we appreciate you, pal. Thanks for the call. Thanks for listening along. That play was insane. You might have had a 70-inch vertical on that play, but inevitably you fucked over your team because they got the ball first and goal at the uh, half-yard line or whatever because it was a pass interference in the end zone. What, right. is, what is your thought? Just make a play regardless? Do you think out there? Did you black out on the, the last field? play of the game. Drew Brees was scrambling around, and I had the only way to do it was try to jump over him, and Sproles' leg <laughs> slipped a little bit, as, and I hit the ball. Like, I don't think it was P.I., and luckily – we all went diving over the pile and made a stop and ended the game, and I chased the ref 100 yards down the field. Okay, and let him know what. Hey, pal. I just, I, I just needed an explanation. I just I wanted some kind of answers. Bro, you jumped so high here. Damn, are you kidding? A, You're higher than me right now. Look at that. You are sore. Is this just run-of-the-mill type shit for you? I don't think I watch enough A.J. Hawk. Did you fly around like – I mean, you are – Taking flight right there. I know Darren Sproles is not the tallest human, but look at old 55. I mean, he's in an athletic position. You could clear his head right there in the middle of a football play. Is this what you did? Were you just a reckless, careless psychopath on the football field? No, this is, I mean, this is the last play of the game. We're scrambling. You're trying to find coverage and That's get there. Awesome. Drew made a good throw. Bro, look how awesome you look. Is this up in your house somewhere? P. I, no, I mean, of course, it's P.I. It was terrible. We could have lost the game because of that. Fuck that. That ain't terrible. That is a great play that the refs fucked up. and you. Oh, yeah, I'm not mad about it. Believe me, I lost my mind. Like, as soon as we – I jumped over the pile, realized we made a stop, didn't care at all, was just chasing refs. I didn't know who threw the flag. I'm just trying to get an answer from someone. Because this is supposed to be a poster at the house. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. This is supposed to be something that is maybe an NFT forever. This That's a play that if I ever had – which I don't, so that's why I'm saying this. If I ever had the capability of doing that – 
I think I would want as many people on earth to see that picture as possible. That guy right there about to chase down and yell at the ref immediately before the play ended. I get this. You had to make another stop and continue this yeah. rant. But what a fucking hero. This, well, you watched, obviously, a lot oh, yeah. of AJ Hawk. Oh, yeah. I watched you, but I didn't, like, study focus close enough. You know, I was in the league at the time That's and true. in college at the time. He was a maniac. Oh, huh? yeah. Not just there, too. I mean, you know, I'm iowa guy so i watched him play at ohio state quite a bit too so i mean you, we, you knew we got beat at iowa I, I know well, you know that i'm sure we got beat my junior year at iowa that's a tough place right. to play yeah kirk's dogs exactly you know, <laughs> kirk's dogs. You know. your highlighter is very distracting by the way well he's got to highlight some stuff every once in a while i know i know what it's for it's awesome but yeah that was wild i mean that dude <laughs> hey listen we'll get you try to deflect us out of this conversation i'm gonna stick with it a little bit longer okay i think sometimes we forget <laughs> who we're talking to oh yeah oh yeah mostly sure. you is what i'm um, no, uh, i remember yeah, mostly you i remember that's why i want him to smack me in the mouth and i'll come for everything he fucking has oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, got a, hey, we got a big umbrella policy over here connor you're welcome uh -huh. Come on. hey the umbrella policy i was introduced to that at one point in my life and that really changed the full game i mean they get you they fucking get yeah. you on that payment of that thing, too. You need it. You need it, man. Yeah, Someone slips and say. falls on your property. Yeah, that's what they say. Just remember yeah. on that next play, too, he jumped over two linemen. Yeah, to, and he was doing that so he could chase the fucking ref. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why you That guy, whoever that guy was, he's wrong. He's still. Hey, it's probably uh, fucking Walter. Mm. Yep. That was probably Walt. Oh, you, nah, I don't know who it was. It, it wasn't Triplet because I, I would remember Triplet. Well, it was probably Alberto River on or Walt, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. And they, they, good news now, they're running it. That's right. Mm. Much better. Yeah. Good for them. All the great refs go to TV. All the ones that just been around a long time and maybe had great days b before, they go into leadership roles. Straight to the top. That's the problem. We need to figure out the refing stuff. They need, they need to figure it out. Need to figure it out. We, I can't get can't it. Can't have it. He screwed over AJ. I mean, that's supposed to be a poster, dude. <laughs> that's bullshit. Right. That's supposed to be a poster. Sproul's a hell of a fucking football player, too. That yeah. ain't like... And you're flying over top of it. Can you put that thing up one more time? Sorry. So when you hit the ground here, does your whole body hurt? I mean, this is... This I don't like know. That's full... a good question. I don't know how I landed, really. How do you... How... Was your body sore every single day? On your feet, probably. He probably <laughs> did flat oh, back. Front flip, yeah. You landed flat back. I just saw the video. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> so I must have turned. Oh, yeah. That makes well, sense. he probably forced you because you passed interference off his shoulder. Yeah, that was bullshit. Yeah, yeah you hit your hip and his, your... your... Yeah, yeah. You're you can see I'm touching the ball right there. Though. AJ's you memory of plays and Aaron's memory of plays are quite drastically different. I wonder why that is. <laughs> no, that's because you, you want to know why? Like you want to know why? No, no mouthpiece. No, because I'm in the moment. I'm here now. Be here now, like the book just said. Oh, I just Ram there, Ram Das. Then I race it. I'm on to the next. Ram das, hey, by the way, that happens to me a lot. It is problematic. I we'll walk out of this show. I have no idea what we talked about. I have no clue. There was a time they were like, hey, what are some things we should cut up for a video? And I'm like, what do we talk about? <laughs> like, you were just in there. Weren't you a part yeah. of it? It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll remember more what we talk about today, tomorrow, or next week yeah. than I do right now in the moment because of what you were saying there. And I think that be where your feet are thing, be here now. I wish a lot more people would do that. All these big moments that people see, you see it on the internet. All these big people on the, uh, like these big moments, all anybody's trying to do is record it so they can remember it. And I respect that. I appreciate that because content is king and we live in a content world. But I do feel like there are some moments that are missed out upon with just the looking around being like, I can't believe I'm fucking here, you know? And it's going to continue to happen and evolve. And we're a part of it. I'm guilty of it as well. It's hard not to do that, but it is nice to get lost in some moments. It's nice to get lost yeah. in some moments. It's awesome. You know, people always, I, I always try to tell people, like, oh, those are the good old days. Oh, the good old days. I hate that. I'm always like, no, man, right now. You are living the good old days. You create your good old days. Like, because, sure. you know, everything is like perspective. It's sure, I'm 37. That's old as hell for some people. That's also very young for old people. Like, everything is relative. Is all You got to have, like, a, a decent perspective, I think. And I hate when you're like, oh, just in another two or three years, things are really going to clear up for me and things are going to be great. And, like, everyone's. Everyone's got some kind of struggle or battle they're dealing with, but man, you got to enjoy it. You could be dead. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to make it to 34 there for a while. Yeah, I mean, you're passing out now at pay-per-view events, so yeah, hey, like you better enjoy every minute. Hey, somebody tweeted me. I didn't pass out, by the way. I saved me. <laughs> Shout out to me, dude. <laughs> Saving me from full pass out or whatever. Somebody told me that old F1 driver guy who had COVID is saying that this is similar thing. Larson? Things. No, that's oh, uh, NASCAR. NASCAR, dude. Obviously. My bad. My bad. Different cars. Schumacher? I don't know. Somebody put a tweet out. I actually responded AJ with... AJ Foyt? Uh, no, AJ Foyt IndyCar, okay, and uh, his 
grandson or son is now potentially owner of the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Wow. Future. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Married one of our states. Daughter. Cool guy. They own a wine vault now. I think they just drink wine and have a good time every oh, night. Sweet. Yeah, it's great. They, he's great, dude. Great guy. A wine vault? What do you mean? It's a, That's what they call it. I think the store is called the wine vault. Oh, uh, okay. It has like... Everything. All the wines. I think they have all the wines, you know, and you just go and hang out. It's, they're still involved in the race community a little bit. I even responded with, like, the him interesting Batman thing because I never thought of it because, you know, after we talked about how much caffeine was in those Celsius that I was drinking, 300 milligrams or something like that, and uh, coffee is 80 milligrams, so I'm doing, like, four coffees. I'm doing eight coffees in two hours <laughs> with not really eating much. I mean, that is... <laughs> That's potentially what it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So maybe it was a uh, backlash or and maybe some out lying. No. Fire. Out. That long COVID you got? COVID effects. Ah. Maybe outstanding. No, because outstanding means good. Underlying. Uh, withstanding. Outlasting. Out. Long lasting. <laughs> long term. Long. Here we residual. go. Come on, let's work this Rippling. Out. Sure. <laughs> residual. Residual effects from COVID, maybe. I mean, that was not the word I was looking for, but it does work in this uh -huh. particular system. Maybe it is, but also maybe the eight cups of coffee worth of caffeine that I'm drinking right before I go on to the air. That's yeah, I mean, if you see some guy who's drank eight cups of coffee and hasn't eaten yet, you're like, oh, this guy's on meth. This guy's well, an absolute maniac. A lot of people in the wrestling community do say that about me on Friday nights. Oh, they do? <laughs> huh. This guy's no, on no, meth. No, it's just Pat. No, yeah, yeah that's, that's who he is. It's like, yeah, hey, I almost just fucking died there. Let me come back to life real quick. Online, <laughs> it's called long haulers. Long haulers, there it is. COVID-19 COVID long haulers. That's what I'm talking And I'm in it for the long haul now. You're yeah. a warrior, man. Chuckers? You know what you are? You're a war daddy. Oh, you are, hey, you are a fucking Hey, you want a war daddy on your team, on your special teams. I'll tell you that. Hey, we got a war daddy right down here. This guy's going to go bust whatever wedge is down there. You need uh, a war daddy out there. And, I mean, I guess this war on COVID, I was I was in, in front lines that day. Uh -huh. I mean, I wasn't, not front lines like you get it. I was not front lines no. with saving people. I was just saving myself. No, you were in it on the front lines. Uh -huh. I was in the battle. I was going to say, I guess you don't really want to say you're in the trenches either because of yeah, that. Yeah, the, the, front, the first responders. You get it. I fucking beat it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Champion. <laughs> Champion. I mean, there's some long haul. Yeah. Long haulers happening, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, dude, I beat it. I feel good about it. I'll be able to talk about it one day. Like, hey, the world stopped. Yep. When about, you get it again, you'll beat it again. Well, Whoa. exactly. But with the first time, when the f when we were able to continue to work socially distant yes. and travel and do this whole thing for about 15 months, I did not get it. I was traveling. I was getting tested three times a week. I did not. We somehow navigated it, and then after getting vaccinated and after the thing happens, I do get it. And I got into it too. I mean, 104 and a half degree fever ain't nothing to sneeze at. We're on the other side, man. You know, we're on the other side. So that's the story to my son. And my grandkids. Hey, your your grandpa fucking took his right hand, looked COVID right in the mouth, and fucking punched him in the face. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. That's what your grandpa did. Never forget it. And that's why that's why you're getting the vaccine you're getting this year. You Boom. Know, that's right. COVID or whatever. Because yeah. my antibodies, you know, came through. And they told me I could suck COVID through a straw. Hell yeah. Yep. Last call. You think little, is it Duber? Who, what's the kid's name now? No, we've moved on from Duber. What is it? Midas Michael McAfee. Mm. Okay, so old Triple M. Do you it, do you think it'll be cool for him to sit down Triple someday and watch all of like because you have your whole life is documented. Won't it be cool for him to sit down and watch? Like, I want to see what my dad was like. Yeah, I mean, let's see if he's not a fucking shitbird or not, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a little worried about that. My spawn is going to be a problem. My spawn is going to be a problem. Why? Why do you think so? Because I've I've seen me deal with like parents and people of authority you know so i just assume that my spawn's probably going to be similar now i'm on the other side of it it might be opposite though you know it's like if your dad's an alcoholic and you don't drink a drop ever in your life it could be the complete opposite yeah, yeah like foxy i have something on that foxy's an alcoholic <laughs> they always say like um <laughs> you are i mean it's unbelievable this guy biggest booze hound i've ever seen i saw it i mean oh, i don't yeah. get to see ty as much i assume he's got him outwitted in the uh, booze hound standings or whatever but Foxy's making a lot of drunks proud right now with how he's going, including his dad, I believe, right? Oh, well, Evie, Evie, you've been, you've been having drinks? Hey, Evie. Every Evie. Friday night on a plane ride home, I am guaranteed having a drink on the way home. That's oh, not one. One drink? Nothing no, wrong no, with no, that. No, 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 Triple is one. Yeah. Good for you. You're flying on a private jet, and you're not paying for it. You should have 15. 
Bingo. That's usually my method. Yeah, that's what time is. The boys do try to drink the planes dry, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. They've never really broken down. Yeah. Good news, guys. Hey, this drink was only $720. Well, that's what I'm saying. We have not gotten a line-by-line -line breakdown on what we are oh, paying for. Oh, those aren't complimentary? Uh, so when you fly privately, there is nothing that's complimentary. Yeah, the whole thing should be complimentary for what you have to pay for that plane. Well, that's... So what you just said there at the end would make it not complimentary. You know what I mean? Right. Now you pay for the flight. Oh. Everything inside of it's complimentary. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, though, because every once in a while, you know, we'll be out 72 airport bottles of vodka. <laughs> and it's like, how much are they charging us for this? How much? And, uh, Bring my, your own, guys. We don't have time, man. Everything's a rush whenever we get on these planes. It's oh, a rush nice. in. It's a rush out. Duty time. It's a whole thing. But... The boys do get rather intoxicated in the skies, and it's a fantastic thing to watch because I'm normally on planet 55 as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's a nice little trip back, those Friday night trips. But uh, have they been, Has Ty been dumping in there when he's on the plane? No, Ty, like, Ty actually, for what? It's been a couple months, right? Yeah, since you've gone, yeah. Yeah, not since we, uh, Tampa. Tampa. Because it's, I don't want to say it's tiring, but it, it, traveling is yeah. a bit you know what i mean it can wear on you a little bit so we've gotten to the point here like next week we're in san jose so i'll probably have to fly out thursday see thursday night oh, football yeah. for that because it's like a four-hour flight or something like yeah. that mm -hmm. so we kind of got to figure it out you know each week is like a bob and weave but the alcohol is still being hammered if there's only one other human on there and that's fucking foxy's yeah. gullet Jeez. celebration something i want to think about they tell everybody like alcoholism is hereditary <laughs> like remember they, it's in his blood it's in everybody's right that in, that's yeah. a lot. I think of some more, much more than others. You think? I, I mean, from when you, when I hear different doctors try to talk about it, yeah, you can have some kind of genetic makeup that makes you more like, like more apt to becoming an alcoholic. I guess I don't know. Is that is that like in your body or is that like in your mental? Like you you seem to have the mindset of some. Good question. I don't know. Because I wonder why they say that. Because they're always like, oh, it, it runs in your family. It's like I think it's in everybody's family at this point. Like somebody in somebody's family. Probably well, regional. Probably by region. You can see there's certain regions where you feel like everybody is an alcoholic in that thing. Isn't it situational? Bingo. <sighs> Fucking home runs. Mm -hmm. nice job, <laughs> That's just like the your hair will take after your mom's dad thing. Why? Yeah. Yeah. It's Why? like, well, how are me and my brother have two completely different hairs? If we did, like, how would you and your brother have two? That makes no yeah. sense. Like, there's a lot of things I think that are just said to us. Me and my Cabs brother. Me and my brother both very bald. My mom's dad very bald. Uh, see, so there is a situation that it would get brought up, Which including a conversation. You know, well, my dad, very, you know, hey, actually, my dad. But then what about all the other situations that it never gets brought up whenever it's just completely different? I don't know. We don't know shit about anything. We nope. don't know shit about hey, fuck. Man. Nope. Hey, no, we know a lot about COVID, though, at least. We, we know a lot about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't know shit about fuck. No, we don't. All right? <laughs> we, we honestly, <laughs> we, I think that's what we learn more and more every single day, especially going back to your point about Midas watching it, especially when you're just live all day, every day, basically. Yeah. You know, <laughs> as life is going on, we learn a lot, you know? And Head back to the archives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are we talking? That's where this is, right here, too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, Midas, you know what Midas is going to have to do? Because I'm right going to try to be a better dad. You got to read the show before you can watch it, pal. That's right. That's right. Yes. Learn it. <laughs> read, read what we read our history, okay, Midas? <laughs> Don't take your dad's way of doing things. Don't just watch the movie and make it much quicker. Read through what we did before you decide to turn on the little YouTube you, know, you got going on out there, you little punk, you little fucking prick. And also, go put up hundred free throws. Boom! Hell yeah! Go kick some soccer balls against the wall. What? Do not have a cell phone. What? what? Do not have friends. What? Read. What? what? You might learn something. What? what? Not be a fuck off. What? what? Not be an asshole. What? what? Not be a spawn of Satan. What? what? Not be a prick. What? what? Not almost get sent to boarding school for running a full cigarette racket in fifth grade. What? what? Not talking back to everybody that you deem dumb. What? what? Yeah, all these things. These are all things. So that that's Midas. There you go. That's, yeah, what, that's what Midas said. When you get to this, Midas. <laughs> Congratulations. That means you've read this entire thing That's right. and you've gotten to this point. So you're going you're doing good things, kid. You're doing good things. You said earlier when you would tell the tale of how you punch COVID in the math to Midas, and you also referenced his children. Is there any hope for the grandchildren? Oh yeah. Nah. Fuck em. Skips a generation. Nah, fuck them. I mean, I'll, 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 like, I'll spoil them or whatever, you know, when I'm around them. Uh -huh. And then I'll send them back to whatever the kid is and then 
you know, they'll figure it out. They're much more Midas's problem yeah. than my problem. And unfortunately, the world's going to be over by then. Anyway, so. No, Jesus. no, no. It was supposed to end in 2000. It was supposed to end in 2000. Yeah. No, that was just a computer crash. It was supposed to end in 2020. Yeah. That was true. That was the Mayans. I believe they got it right. That was 2012. 2012, yep. That's yeah, 2012. Good the Mayans. Hmm. Who was 2020? So we're good. Midas and his kids are good. What did they say? 40 years or something we got with the way we're doing right now? Yeah, the clock's the, cl the climate and whatnot? No one knows shit. Yeah, you got to plant more hey, trees. Hey, once again, we don't shit about fuck. <laughs> <Nope>. No. <laughs> Somebody does, though, I'm sure. 40 years sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, I'll be fucking 74, maybe? That'd be crazy. There's no way I live that long. <laughs> Modern technology. What's, how are you going to die? Huh? What's going to kill you? Something. It'll be something. It'll be something probably pretty hilarious, I assume. Like... <laughs> I hope there will be some people that will be, like, a little sad, but then they'll go, oh, fuck, it. that is how we expected it. You know what I mean? Like, I think that will probably happen. If you that's get it. bit by one of those raccoons and it gives you rabies, <laughs> yeah. and that's how you go out. Nobody oh, would have, nobody. I yeah, mean, I, I guess mean. after witnessing what is happening at my house and has been continuing to happen for over a year now, you would maybe guess that that would happen, but that would not be a cool way to go. A robot that gained self-awareness and ripped out your spinal column. No, see, I think that robot, through. if it had self-awareness, yeah. would be a friend of mine, maybe, right? If we could have a pretty, yeah. pretty good shot. Sure. Hey, right. Maybe your, all humans your pet chimp you get, you get a pet chimp and he rips your genitals off, stuffs them in your mouth and kills you. They go from Didn't What's that happen to you? the lady in Plum? Yeah, right. The oh, teacher? Yeah. The orangutan? Yeah. We've talked about that Yeah, R.I.P. Miss Brooke. Yeah, Miss Brooke. We miss you, Don't Brooke. you think that would be a funny way to go, though? Like, oh, know. hey. A funny way. I don't know. <laughs> Having an orangutan rip your rib cage out terrible. doesn't seem... How'd he go? How'd he go? He had a, he had a pretty good run there, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> and at the end, we, we all told him the pet chimp was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Ripped his penis off and shoved it right down his throat and he choked on his own dick. That wouldn't I wanted happen. to go. That wouldn't Rest happen in peace. Let's have a moment of silence. I can't wait to read that obituary. That wouldn't happen to you, though, because you've already heard a tale of that caution. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Miss Brooke. Yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Brooke. It was in her class that the carton of cigarettes was found. Mm. Ah. She was a hard nosed teacher, so she had to lay it on thick. Were you no, selling them no, to the no, monkey? No. Is that why he beat the hell out of her and killed her? <laughs> he had a little bit of a nicotine. <laughs> yeah, a more so. That was the only reason why you got busted, because she was running out of her supply at home of cigs yeah. for that thing. Yeah. She, I do believe, she was most upset about the brand of cigarettes I was selling, <laughs> as opposed to. Oh, these aren't even Camel Blues? No, I'm joking. I think I was selling Newports. I uh, think it was nice. only smoking right. Newports, boy. Which one has the uh, green, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was the one. What a move, dude. That was awesome. More Anyways. hundos? Menthol? Uh, longer? To get, make them last it's, a little longer? Connor, what are the American spirits? Do those Are those, like, more healthy? No, they just last longer than all the other ones. How come all the um, hipsters smoke them? Because they last longer. Oh, okay. One cig will last you, like, 15 oh, minutes. Ah. Cigarette. You ever smoke those clove cigarettes with the hippies? Oh, yeah. I'm smoking the cloves. What is that? What are clothes? How is it different? Yeah, what is that? Well, the clothes are a little different because some people don't actually inhale them. They would treat them more so like a uh, mini cigarette or a cigar, excuse me. And the American spirits, like I was just saying, they last a long, long time, whether that's because of the paper or the tobacco in the actual cigarette. So is it discussion. like a cigar situation? The clothes? No, the the, the longer cigarette. No, the American spirits are just cigarettes that will that burn smoke for slower. long. But it's like a that's why the hippies probably the smoke breaks smoke sessions longer, and also they don't have to buy as many. Probably. Yeah, you do, definitely don't have to buy as many, and much, much, much longer. Hey, there's quite a campaign through. against vaping right now. WWE's pushing. They're learning a lot about that shit. I see. Yeah. Huh? Let, corn lung or well, what? With the jewel. Yeah, yeah, it's just not good. The iron. It's huge. I mean, because it's rampant. Like yeah. high schoolers all over the place do it. Grade school. Lower. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say middle high, school. Yeah, junior But they're, high. they're vaping Kinder tobacco, though, though, right? A lot of them. Yeah, yeah it's nicotine. nicotine. It's not tobacco. Yeah. So there's just a, it's a air that has nicotine in it. So it's, it, I guess what the government's leading to is obviously not good to have kids addicted to nicotine or anything, but then that leads to nicotine consumption from other things, which... I would assume Big Tobacco is also has their big lobbyists. So for a long time, they, you know, they were probably against uh, the vaping. I know the cigarette community was very much against the vaping and the tobacco community, but there seems to be a big assault on vaping. I've been out of the vape game for a long time after one stop in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, right, yeah. when they were doing a full town hall on how bad vaping was because that was a tobacco community or whatever, you know. Uh, so I've been out a long time, but I think they're learning more and more and more about it by like, hey, this is not great for you. It's seems yeah. like a problem. Seems like, mm -hmm. And they're not going to stop it, by the way. It's not going to be able to stop no. that, I don't think. I mean, it's pretty new. I guess the, the question is, would you rather have someone 
smoke cigs or like they're trying to get off of cigs and use what don't they use vape pens to try to get off of cigs oh, with yeah. those nicotine yeah i've seen a lot of older gentlemen and i think even maybe younger gentlemen but who have smoked for a long time and ladies as well who smoke for a long time who go to the vape and then they blow through so much vape though <laughs> yeah. but they're being told by people that this is better than the cigarettes so they feel good about it but i think the biggest issue with the vapes is how easily accessible it is oh, for yeah. the young people yeah. that is the and you could do it anywhere too that's the problem like they don't have to like go even hide really they can do it anywhere they want. Yeah, yeah it's a pick your poison situation and They're, the thing with no the, but uh, but I, I don't think it's a pick your poison situation because i think like tobacco like cigarette and chew although i was selling it in like fifth grade i assume plum is a little bit different i don't know if middle schoolers are so amped to get into smoking cigarettes or chewing tobacco but the nicotine is able to get them with the vaping if that fruity makes sense yeah it does so i think like that, that. that's the biggest issue is yeah the fruity flavors yeah, and the, in the blowing there's smoke there's laws that you can't have flavors now right well and then also the clouds are cool i mean yeah. that's like a, the clouds mm -hmm. that you well blow those rigs cool. these kid people have those big yeah. old rigs they're oh, smoking yeah. from blowing those giant clouds so i think that's the it, like if i think if only people that used to smoke or chew where only vaping was okay but i think it's the introduction right of the new generation that is the biggest deal and i i didn't know that was happening because i'm not around any of the young people i just started seeing the wwe started doing commercials against it and i like yeah. asked i'm like is this still a thing and they're like yeah it's even bigger it's even worse now than ever for the younger kids because they made it like easy to do or yeah something. that's why they raised uh, a lot of states have raised um the age you got to be 21 to get tobacco products or vapes right here's mitt uh the yeah uh i started or i was vaping a little bit in high school and it was very cool to aj's point but then they did take yeah. away the uh flavors yeah. and all that other stuff but now i mean 16 year olds still just have them it's Younger. pretty easy to get but nah, you whatever. remember when i did the interviews and it was I your gen the, it was your generation right because we went yeah. and did hey you remember we did that barstool tailgate show over in ohio state yeah. remember that yeah and all we stayed at that frat house or whatever and it was ridiculous that was the first episode i mean it was <laughs> hilarious and insane but all anybody was offering me was this jewel thing yeah. Like, yeah, you want this and i had not heard of it i had no idea what it was i was like well, is that dope and they're like uh no nicotine man and i'm like uh, i mean i guess i have to try it, at least if everybody's doing this so i tried it and i didn't really feel anything i felt like a similar little rush i guess to like when, rush, I had, yeah. when i had dip in or whatever but yeah. it wasn't I was like, oh, my God. And then they slowly learned over the next couple of years. That just took over. Yeah, it was early so, 2017 when I when we came out, all of us for interviews or whatever. That's when I actually like I, I think I presented it to you, Nick Diggs. Like, hey, this is the new thing. These jewels. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah, we didn't know anything. about. They were it. nuts. I felt like a 90 year old man. AJ, I felt like a 90 year old man. I'm like, What are you guys smoking for, uh, I mean, for cigarettes? 20 years ago, it was at 36.4 percent for for high school kids. Now it's at like 8 percent. Mm -hmm. For cigarettes, yeah, well, yeah. and it's just but been substituted for the just put it yes. yeah. So but also, those stats don't tell the truth because there, is everybody okay with saying they do yeah. smoke cigarettes? I think it's when you go to the doctor and they ask you, do you smoke tobacco? Yeah, not Which one person in high school has ever said <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, no. You don't Never go to jail alcohol? if you say the wrong answer. Yeah. You ever drink? No, oh, yeah. oh, no, no, no way. Okay. And, and their mom sitting next to him in the yeah. room, like the doctor is stupid enough to think they're telling the truth. <laughs> Sexually active? No, no. What's that? Marriage, 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 marriage. I don't want to live in a world where blowing oh. vape clouds is cooler than ripping darts. I just don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'd have to agree. Last phone call. Good point. Last, good point. Uh, no, not a good point. All right, just stay away from everything. Wait until you're old enough and you're in a legal state and just smoke dope. Yeah. All right? Can yeah, can smoke dope. Do dope. And can dip. CBD. Yeah, do your can dip CBD and everything like that. Yeah, don't, don't do what he just said. Just give him a try. No, do you not. like him. Do take, not. take a couple of years. Do not. I mean, AJ's blowing through 10 <laughs> cigars a day. Yesterday, it was so foggy over there from the O's you were blowing, pal. We couldn't even see you for about three, four minutes. <laughs> That's not true. When did you start smoking cigars? 12. I'm uh, 37. I think I started when I was like 33, so not that long. So when he was an adult, remember that, kids. AJ's not cool until he's... I didn't even try one. Yeah, I never even tried one until I was that old. I didn't, it wasn't like I messed around when I was young. I've tried to get into the cigar community because of how much I enjoy smoking. You know, like I do enjoy smoking some things whenever it's legal, obviously. And since I've become of age, of course, but I just can't get into the cigar thing for whatever reason. I don't know why. I've no. It seems like a good community. Seems like a cool thing to be a part of. You guys got your own little fucking magazines, and I'll do it whenever I'm like boozed up. But every time I wake up the next morning, I'm like, ah, God, mm. why did That's I? I won't that? do it. That's, everyone smokes cigars when they're drunk. I'm like, I will not touch a cigar if I'm drinking. You got to hammer water when you're smoking cigars. Yeah, you do. 
Oh, uh, like Celsius. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're it's key. That's what I tell people. People are like, oh, I wake up and I feel like I got cobwebs in my throat. I'm like, well, just drink a bunch of water when you're smoking and you wake up, fine, ready to smoke again. Do you go to cigar bars? <laughs> Do you guys uh, cigar bars? I don't, no, I don't really. Smoke. I'm not really into like the whole public group smoke, smoke cigar together situation. Yeah, I'm happy you do believe in the you can't be uh, drunk all day if you don't start in the morning type thing <laughs> with, <laughs> with your cigar smoking butt. I'm just saying wake up. I like I like to feel wake up feeling refreshed and ready to roll. And that way I am. Yeah, I wake and bake with no mistakes. <laughs> what? What? That takes the cake. To be the best way to start the day for me personally. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Whenever I'm in a legal state. It's glorious. Sure. Absolutely. Of Although course. I think you probably would have, you know, a couple slab dick cigars. Now, Greg, you might get lockjaw because they are as thick as a Coke yeah. can and it might get kind of tiresome doing that. But I think those are pretty solid. Yeah. And w- those thick ones, those are the only ones you smoke, right? No, I don't like, I like, I like certain size. I don't like the big old fat Gordos they're called. I do not want any of those. Uh, we have some breaking news, especially for the internet community. It's not that we are smoking cigars, but Sports Business Journal at SBJSBD is reporting uh, that this week the NFL and the NFLPA and Dapper Labs will announce a deal to launch a digital collectibles marketplace resembling the hit NBA Top Shot. This is a good idea by the NFL getting into the game on NFTs. I don't know if it's still the wave, is it? I have uh, no idea. Brady just started the autograph thing with Tiger in them, too. And I think whenever I heard that, I asked, is it still the as hard as it Obviously, it died out. Like, all the line and waiting stuff, I don't hear about it anymore, but... Well, and then there's the... Um, the um, What is Brandon McManus into? The apes. The apes, the apes oh, yeah. community. Yeah. And then there's there's a corgi one. I think somebody oh. tweeted me and asked me to join a corgi one. What is that? So there's... there's dog. It's, a corgi is a dog, but these apes... Yes, I'm aware. It's an NFT, I believe, that you invest in, and there's only a certain amount of these apes. It's just like every other form of, um, you know, digital currency or whatever. There's only so many of them, so if you own one, it becomes more uh, expensive and then more valuable. And then you hope, I guess, at some point that that'll be able to become a form of payment, which is kind of what happened with Bitcoin. I think a lot of people thought it was going to become the payment of the Internet, which I think is still the goal in the Internet and the money of the future and everything like that. Then the NFTs, the cards became the big deal. I mean, that top shot took over. I mean, that was a conversation piece. It was around the same time as the GameStop AMC bust, or boom, the whole thing like that. So I think people were into making money. They're at home for a long time. I can be an entrepreneur here. I can make some cash, invest in things. I, I haven't heard much about the NFT cards, though. That NFT world growing, because I think all those things are considered NFTs, the apes and the corgis and everything else that's potentially out there. But in the sports card, I'm not sure. But I thought this was going to have to be the case because they own all the rights. So, like, people are asking me to, hey, you should put an NFT out of whatever. And I'm like, I guess I should. But who do I have to go to to get the rights to the photos and to the footage and everything like that? How do I go about doing that? The NFL would be the only ones that were able to give that away, I think. So maybe this would be beneficial for a lot of players, a lot of teams, a lot of coaches, because now the NFL is on board, the NFLPA is on board. So I don't know if there will be a resurgence or what the case will be, but I'm excited that they're getting into the modern day. It just might be a little bit late, but at least they're getting into the game, you know? Yeah, at least they're trying. I mean, I don't. I don't sit here and try to pretend to understand NFTs completely. Like I understand what the, when they, when it's explained to me and whatever, but I don't know if it's going to be like hey. as giant as people think. Hey, sell me this pen, all right? You don't have a pen. You need this pen. Supply and demand, okay? That is how some people will sell a pen. That is the NFT game. There's only a certain amount of them. So obviously the value goes up, the demand goes up because the supply is not as high. That's why the Bitcoin thing is such a big deal because the rules that were written, there's only this many Bitcoin forever and ever. And then there was another and then there's a whole controversy, obviously. Same thing with the apes and I think with these cards as well, like a highlight, we got a Zion dunk, like we own that dunk. So if that was to go on to be very expensive at some point, we'd be able to sell that to somebody that wants to own that or has a Zion collection or whatever they're gonna do. Like you're just collecting things you hope that'll one day be valuable and they're non-fungible. That's the NF and the NFT. What's going on, Bailey? Did uh, I hit that right or no? No, that's that's very good. I just wanted to let you know, uh, I don't think we should recap on the Zion dunk. It, it really has gone in the toilet recently. Oh, oh no. fuck. Uh, but you know will. we have it for whenever it explodes. So we'll go down with the the NFT. How do you sell shift. it then? If you want to sell it, how is there an app you have to this, go through? You can see there's a, there's all these different places on the internet you go to, and there's auctions and bids and everything like that. I believe in that one there was a waiting there was a waiting oh, list yeah. for a lot of that at one point. So 
maybe it's so early in the game that it hasn't been completely figured out, but I feel like the sports one has not been talked about much. No, and I think there will be like some demand for this. Like I yeah, just think about like Rogers throwing that first pass to Devontae the other night, like those type of moments, like I, I think people will want to have that kind yeah, of stuff. And if you're Yeah. I mean Tom Brady this weekend. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, there's gonna be a highlight or throwing a, moment, a touchdown you know, and then fist pumping or and they're creating uh you know, they have a bunch of these motion portrait things that you can put on the, in your house. So, like, people, if they own it, they can put it on the thing. It could be a, in your room or whatever, and then you hope Appreciate it adds it. value and you can sell it and everything. I don't – it's just a collector's game, I think. But uh, it, it feels like the sports one died off a little bit and everybody got interested in other shit. But if the NFL gets in and everybody knows it's going to blow up, I just wish it would have been a little bit ago. You know? Yeah, we should just jump. We should remember that we got to jump in immediately, just like with the NBA top shots. Get it, and then once the demand's at its peak, get out. Because oh, that's and we'll know when the demand's going to be at its yeah, peak. Exactly. Because there was a time there with those top shots where we were like, is this fucking serious? Yeah, anybody could have gone. Is this going? And then you could sell that thing, and then here we are moments later, and he said that the Zion dunk is in the toilet. For so now, your best for friend, now. Uh, Gary VH. He has the answers on all the NFTs. He's I mean, there that's what I was going to say. I figured he has it all, right? 10,000 hours, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I got it, but I'll fucking do it, I guess. Let's go to Lee Battle to close out this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Lee, what's going on, pal? Hey, Cuzzy boys, Mr. Hawk. Happy Aaron Rodgers Book Club Tuesday to you down there. Down there. What's going on, Lee? Great to hear you, pal. Hey, Cuzzy, I just want to know, is like, this become like a godfather situation where you're the Don of special teams and Mike Leach is going to have to come apologize to you publicly or the Bulldogs are going to struggle on special teams all year? Yeah, what was that all about? He buried punting. I feel like a failure. I hate it when we punt. It's like, okay, I understand. I love football. I like offense. I fly around. But, you know, it's a calculated turnover. It's part of the game, especially somebody with that big of a brain. You would assume that he would love what a turnover means, especially with his respect and appreciation for war and gaining territory and everything that you – I mean, it, would, it made no sense what he said, Lee. I didn't appreciate that out of Coach Leach, man. Well, then one of the refs who is obviously indebted to one of uh, Tone's cousins that works in sanitation down around Memphis just terrorized the brand where we went from having a punt down inside the 10 to a touchdown, and then we executed the self uh, onside kick perfectly, and then a phantom uh, block came in somewhere. Oh. So, and then we jumped, and then against LSU this weekend, we jumped the barrier, which when did that rule come into play? Yeah, I, nobody knows. And then how about – if you're a Mississippi State fan, which is what we're talking about now currently, obviously everybody knows that. Lee Battle, big, big Bulldog fan you down know, there. Oh, yeah. How do you feel knowing that like Lane Kiffin over there at Ole Miss is generating a lot of buzz, and I know the Egg Bowl is a big fucking deal down there? Yeah. Tone really upset me when he said he wanted Matt Corral to be the quarterback for the Steelers now, and it's just like I can't even get started on that. Why? You know, we hate Ole Miss down here. Why? Because it's the biggest rivalry in the state. Everybody thinks that, like, Alabama and Auburn is the biggest rivalry in the South, and then it's basically the same thing in the state right next to it with Ole Miss and Mississippi State. I was down there for the Egg Bowl. Guy peed on the field, had to kick an extra point, missed that thing, and uh, those ring, those those cowbells were loud. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, they were very passionate down there about their football. Calls are legal. still blows my mind. Yeah, the, well, there's a time they have to stop. Mm-hmm. But they're still loud. So loud. So loud. I don't think. They get like a, Have you ever been to a diving competition, AJ Hawk? Um, like at a pool? Yeah. I mean, I used to be on swim team when I was a kid, so I would I could see the diving competitions going on. Okay, well, here in Indianapolis, I got a chance to go to a uh, Olympic qualifying diving event. Whoa. I actually passed a thing to one of the divers and said, congratulations, you made the fucking Olympics. Oh, okay, so that actually happened. Nice. And to do, to do so, because there's big pool down here, massive in the diving community. I think like a lot of people train here in downtown Indianapolis at IUPUI. It's, it's a thing. It was very cool. But that was my first time ever getting to see it. And I get there, and before the person goes, there's a whistle that's blown, and everybody just shuts up, basically. You know, everybody in the entire pool just stops talking. And then... <sighs> Insane shit happens while celebration. Ah, and then there's a conversations that you potentially want to have with somebody. Then like a whistles or something's acknowledged, and everybody's just quiet. And then it's the full focus up there. You know, it's like golf with the silence type thing. 
and everything like that. They did that with the cowbells at that Egg Bowl game, and it was alarming how much louder it was when that cowbell was going, and then when the cowbell wasn't going, your ears are ringing so loud from the cowbell that you don't even realize that the cowbell is probably not even going at that point. It is loud down there and crazy. I loved it. I absolutely enjoyed the hell out of that Egg Bowl. How, well, I guess, yeah, if somebody was sitting right behind you just clanging that cowbell in your ear, that yeah. Everyone's doing it, though. Everybody, yeah. the, whole, the whole stadium. 90 people Everyone. behind you. That's cool, then. Actually, you know what? I like it. If, it's, if everyone's doing it, I'm good. It's loud. We, uh, we played down there uh, when we were at West Virginia. When I was at West Virginia, we played down there in Rich Rod. You know, give me fucking cowbell. Like, <laughs> it's going to be fucking loud down there. <laughs> and they were just playing it through the speakers. The cow- it was the most annoying sound. Like, you know, that need more cowbell skit. Like, that was actually happening that week of practice. And then we drove down there. We played against them. And we're like, yeah, this is... He was loud. Kidding. They put that on their screen, didn't they? It is loud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Need more yeah. cowbell. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it is loud down there. But Ole Miss is stealing all the headlines, and it's probably because Lane Kiffin, I guess. Yeah. Uh, he gets better. more. Mike Leach, though, legend in his own right, obviously, mm-hmm. great coach. Buried punting the other day, so I gotta hate him. That's a shame. Yep. All right, show's over. Tuck it away. Jeez. Gross. Are his fingers broken from flying through the air and landing on the ground? I've never broken a finger, honestly. It's just bullshit. All right, we can't end the show with a blatant falsehood. It's all ligament stuff. I've never broken a bone in my fingers. All right, well, congratulations. Nice job, man. Your bones are the best, dude. I still think you missed your call on it being like a fighter or a boxer because I feel like your face could probably beat up people's hands because your bones don't break and your jaw is so goddamn big. Mm-hmm. But I want to let you know I appreciate you every single day. I appreciate Aaron Rodgers for joining us. I appreciate Austin Eckler for joining us. I can't thank you all enough for watching this for the last three hours and 48 minutes. Jesus Christ, get me out of here. It's been a long show. 30,000 people watching. What are you doing? All right. <laughs> You all are the best. This life is dumb. From AJ, myself, to Toxic Table, Hammer Down, which begins in 15 minutes at youtube.com forward slash hammer down. All the boys in the back. Thank you so much. You're the best. We'll see you, Mignogna, for Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, dude. Can't yeah. wait. Can't wait. What time's Chuck come on usually? I'm not sure. It works at 1.30. About 125. 125. 125. Can't wait. Can't wait for that. He's probably watching right now. Chuck, what's up? Can't wait to ask you the hard-hitting questions tomorrow like we do every single goddamn day. This place is a, uh, this place knows uh, we got a lot on our shoulders. We're the only ones really that get to speak to one of the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And we hope that we get everybody's questions answered. And we hope we provide content in the football community that is not necessarily ready and available anywhere else. And we hold that honor. We hold that pressure. We hold that duty in high regard right now. Hell yeah. That's right. Hell yes. Ain't that right, AJ? Yeah, big responsibility here. We know that. Every day we wake up and say, hey, this is a real job. We got to do it good. That's right. That's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure. Every morning. And that's what we do. We look in the mirror and we say, hey, this show, it's curing problems, dude. Yeah, best show ever. All right, this show fucking stinks. See you tomorrow. (laughs) Cheers. (laughs) 